I just don't like the guy. The guy's just a douchebag. Wah, wah, wah. Yeah. Uh, Welcome, everybody, to the Pulp Mech Show, presented by Motorsport.com, Fly Racing, and Decal Works. Coming at you! It's Monday, February 5th, 5 p.m. Pacific. Thank you for watching and or listening. Got a great show lined up for you tonight. Lots to talk about. D-Town, great race, tough track, 250 East opener, Forkner wins, Jet Lawrence wins, and Cameron McAdoo had a hell of a night. Uh, looking forward to talking to him on the show tonight. We're going to have Cam on tonight to talk about, yeah, that thing uh, and all of that happened. Did you see that guy's balls? Uh, Ricky Carmichael will join us as well. The, the GOAT will be uh, calling in from Florida to talk about the season uh, and more. Thank you, thanks to uh, Ricky Carmichael for the time tonight. And Steve Westfall, Scuba Steve, he is the team manager over there at uh, Triumph, who made their debut in Detroit. Brand new motorcycle, super exciting. Julie Swole rode pretty well. Evan Ferry uh, won the LCQ and then uh, went into a wall. And uh, so, yeah, lots to talk to Scuba Steve about. JT will join us as well later on. So looking forward to that. We've got all three of my great friends from the industry in studio to break everything down and uh, basically bench race the best we can. Thank you to Motorsport.com, Fly Racing, Decal Works, X-Brand Goggles, Renthal, Michelin, Race Tech, a Chair Beast, Firepower Batteries and Chains, Maxima USA, OGO Power Sports, Renegade Race Fuels, Atlas Neck Brace, ORW, Pro Filter, FMF, Guts Racing, Works Connection, MotorcycleIndustryJobs.com, Get Data, WUSA, Wysco Piston, Lifted Trucks for Sale.com, Factory Chassis Parts, MTX Braking, Ethica, and Troll Training, all on board with us tonight. And you can save with many of those companies by using the codes that you can find on apulpamexshow.com. So if you want to save some money, some codes, if you're going to buy from one of those companies, there might be a code for it then. So please check it out. Thank you to those guys for all of the support. And uh, apulpamexshow.com is your source for all things uh, Pulpamex Show codes and such. We'll tell you more about the LCQ Challenge coming up. You can win a YZ450, support some privateers. We've got some live shows. St. Louis and Indy live show tickets available now on publicmex.com. So we're going to do Friday night shows before St. Louis Supercross and before Indy Supercross. And you can save uh, by going there, buying a ticket, get a, get there early. Thank you to um, you people that have been there in the past. It's always fun to do. 702-586-7857 if you want to talk some Detroit, talk some uh, MXGP, talk some Canadian moto, whatever it is, we can do that. We are also giving away a works connection Pro launch start device tonight in honor of Jet Lawrence A grabbing the whole shot and B winning because he uses the Works Connection uh, Pro launch start device and it is code PulpMX20 is the code to save with those guys as well. Uh, so thanks to the folks at Works Connection for coming on board. All right, in studio with me, like I said, three of my good friends in the industry. First up, uh, this man won a championship with Dean Wilson back in the day. As is Wrench. Uh, now he works for Renthal. And uh, it's Paul Parabinos. What's up, buddy? How are you? Hi, Steve. Thanks for coming in. Yeah, we're in town for work, as you yeah. kind of uh, alluded to. So here yeah. we're two good friends. And yeah, figured we, we stop by. Yeah, th race. thanks for coming in. Appreciate it. The AIM show is going on right tomorrow. Yeah. So it's a big motorcycle show, uh, convention center. It probably won't rival the old indie motocross show days. Did you ever go to those? Or no, no, that was that was before my time. Yeah. I was still in the pits during that time. But right. yeah, I, I would say it's our biggest independent show in yeah. the U.S. It's not very big, yeah. but there's still, yeah. Right. Connection and business to be had, yeah. Uh, so thanks for coming in. Also coming in from Maxima, Maxima USA, of course, uh, big sponsor of ours. Pulp 20 is the code to save with Maxima. Great company, great oil. Trevor Reese, what's up, buddy? How we doing? How, thanks for coming in. Yeah. Now, we didn't get our mountain bike ride in that we normally do. No riding today. You chose to go golfing in the rain. We did go golfing with, with in the rain. Mr. Legendary. <laughs> yeah. The man, the myth, the legend. Yeah, yeah. How was his game? It was good. He said he was back today. He said he was because yeah. I beat him. Yeah, we that, uh, we heard all about that. It, is not so. good. No, so no. I, I mean, he yeah, we yeah. we've been planning on it for a couple of weeks, and right. then of course we come the one time that it's raining mm -hmm. in Vegas. So yeah, um, yeah, no ride today, but right. we did play eighteen holes, right. and um, he's getting over his round with Mister Mathis. Oh, so. he. I mean, look, I'm terrible, I, and he. I, I'm like you golf all the time. Uh, so, I mean, he was. There was yeah. zero hesitation today. Okay. He was there. He was, he's he waiting. Was. It's raining, <laughs> and it was all good news text. Good okay. weather. Weather will yeah, be good. Yeah. All and right. yeah. Well, uh, we got through it. So. Good enough. Uh, from 100% uh, goggles, uh, of course, Jet Lawrence wearing those, Star Racing, many others. Pulp 30 is the code to save with the folks at 100%. Uh, this gentleman has been in a few times as well before. Uh, happy to have him back. Clayton Morello. What's up, Clayton? How are you? Ah, I'm doing well, thanks. Did I say Morello right? Yeah, okay. Morello. That's right. fine. All right. Yeah, uh, just trying to you drive. You are a train. sales manager at 100%? Yes, sir. That's, that's it. Uh, so thanks for coming in. 
appreciate it. We'll yeah. talk. We'll talk a hundred percent later on in the show. Appreciate the support of the Pulp Fantasy and everything else. Yeah. Um, I guess right off the bat, five oh five p.m. We can just get right into this to start. Last week, of course, uh, we had a call from the Shimoda Realist on the show last week. And, uh, you know, this gentleman had some very good points uh, about Joe Shimoda. He is somebody that we have referred to on the shows. First, the Shimoda hater uh, a year or so ago. Then the gentleman asked to be called the Shimoda Realist, which we changed the name because Shimoda hater was probably too harsh on on it. And um, so the Shimoda Realist called in last week. Did a great job uh, talking about Joe Shimoda, the, the, the positives, the, the negatives, all the things that he thinks about. And uh, And Paul? Yep. <laughs> It's me. <laughs> the Shmoda Realist. It's me. You're this, coming this up. Is, this is what comes from bench racing with your friends who happen to be yeah. media media guys in our sport. But, yeah, that's this. You're, you're been, out. It's been my stance. The for, Shmoda Realist, everybody. Yeah, sorry. Um, now, we, now, we probably. Thank you, yeah, thank you for changing it to s- Realist, though, yeah, because no. in all fairness, I don't think I've said anything derogatory about Joe. Yeah, no, in no, my opinion. No. Yeah, yeah. No, no. I, I and, sim- and when you said that, when you asked to be recalled <clears throat> Shimoda Realist, it did make more sense. Yeah. No, I, it's just simply been my stance for a couple years yeah. now that I don't think he's a title contender yet. Yeah. Maybe he'll get there, but yeah. hey, not, and, not yet. And he wins opinion. when the t- pressure's off a little bit. Yeah. Uh, this yeah, is yeah, all yeah. – this is – I mean, it's, it's – if you're, <laughs> you know, like, if you love Joe Shimoda, I think even if you love Joe Shimoda and you think you know, the world of him, I don't think you can look at the points you're making and be like, he's wrong. Right, like yeah. I, I don't think so. So no, I mean, I, right. I, I think it's we're all we. It's a, it's a topic because everyone sees how good he is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, a guy rips. Yeah. Like he looks great on yeah. the bike. But but yeah, there's you can't get bad starts when you have to get the start. And that was in my opinion that the last SMX round, I think he should have been the SMX champion. Yeah. Um. So, so little things like that, yeah, and we, yeah, you can't start the series slow. We we did have <laughs> we had a lot of people guessing. It was Blair. It was Lewis. It was JT. <laughs> But most people guessed it was you. Yeah. Most people were like, because the way, you <laughs> yeah. know. I'm not, I wasn't very good at hiding my voice. I just bought some <laughs> app off the internet like 30, 30 minutes before we did that and called in. Yeah. And I was tuning it up with tits on the phone. Yeah. Because you could select either like high or low or lowest. Okay, or, yeah, and yeah. I just kept on it, hitting buttons and, and talking. And he was like, oh, this is pretty good. <laughs> He's like, try this. And I was, so it was funny. Yeah, I had a joke. I, I mean, I just wanted to have a joke. But yep. you know how yeah, jokes yeah. are. Sometimes no, yeah. someone did, did wants you, to be mad did about you, it. Did you? Why did you want to come clean? Because we were keeping it. We weren't. We weren't um, going to reveal it. But did just you? because, like, okay. yeah, I, I don't have anything to hide. I guess. Right. Okay. So, but the, the the voice thing was. It was great hiding it though, yeah. right? So yeah. all of a sudden became yeah. this big witch hunt, this Pulp Nation witch hunt. <laughs> <laughs> that I just, I don't know, I just didn't want to be a part of anymore. I didn't feel like I needed to hide it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, and oh. I can back you up a little bit, Paul. I mean, obviously, we bench race a lot, and it was never on, you know, hate for Joe himself, yeah. you know? We're just, it, it wasn't we're that. Tracing. It was just bench racing. L- listen, um, he, he did it with Lars, the team Honda manager. Yeah. You laid, I, yeah. you laid out all those points to the team manager. Yeah. yeah. And he disagreed with you. Yeah. But he was like, cool. Like, what, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what, because Lar- well, Lars is my friend. Like, we talk about this yeah. all the time. He asked me yeah. my advice on riders. And, you know, like, we've both been in and around the sport a long time, yeah. around a lot of r- successful people. We've yeah. raced ourselves. So, yeah, I feel like we have opinions that are educated enough to kind of see right. what's in a guy and but, if he can take the next step. And but just to give anybody like uh, who's like, oh, you know, screw Paul or like the, the Honda team manager is like, okay, yeah, I hope we prove you wrong. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, know? that's like, what yeah, I said. Yeah, I, yeah. I said, I said, I hope you prove me wrong. Yeah. But this is my opinion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Shmoda Realist comes out. Wow. Yeah. Uh, working the cameras over there, working the feed, probably stunned at this Shimoda Realist uh, revelation. The Travis Mark. It is Marks? quite the revelation, I must say. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. Know, it, but, it is. Yeah. Uh, what do you do after a long week of chode dick riding my ass and eye racing? It's it's nice to have that come <laughs> what, clean. What? what? <laughs> and just uh, let it be out there. So it's nice. Congrats, Paul. That, what? Can you explain to me what you said? <laughs> chode dick. I, I, I chode don't know. dick's just really been riding my ass and eye racing. That's all He's I can just- say. In my ass. Yep. Wow. Uh, well, Jesus. Oh, not in. Oh, sorry. Uh, okay. Uh, working the phones over there. Seven zero two five eight six. Pulp. We got some lines uh, still open. Talon Taylor, what's up, buddy? How are you? What's up, Steve? What's bring going in, on? Bringing some more energy to this corner today. Yeah, that corner, it's been low energy, but, you know, we, we kind of think that maybe it's just the... Give him a window. So. Open a window over there. Okay, I just turned the air on. I think so. I reset the chair is what Did happened. Did you? When yeah, you were there? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah that sure. possibly could be. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, lots to get into. Um, I mean, first up, like, Cameron McAdoo. Uh, we got to start with that. We're going to yeah. have him in, but... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know about your guys' group text, but I mean, it. Yeah, it was. That nice. was. It was funny. Now so that everything's me, fine, so and he's you two okay, race pro. It was hilarious. You two race pro, and I'm in a group text with a bunch of privateers, like 
20 or 30 of them. Yeah. I don't even know who the fuck's all in there. I'm scared <laughs> to make jokes because I don't know who's in there for sure. Yeah. A bunch of them said, no way are they racing. They are going right back to the truck. Oh, well, that's the wrong answer. You never pull off. Okay, so so what do you, you are go. you racing? Absolutely. You're racing. Yeah. Everything hanging out. For sure. Why not? Trevor? I, at that point, I mean, at that point. Yeah, why are you stopping? Like, go. You got to leave it all out I there. I want to ask him if he got <laughs> roosted. I want to ask him if he got yeah. roosted. Because you know when you've, like, worn some more tight kind of fitting gear that maybe yeah. is, like, summer weather stuff, it's really thin, and you catch a rock right in the tip of the wiener, yeah. it hurts. Yeah. I, yeah. So yeah, You feel bad for the guy just because, I mean, everything's out like, there now at this yeah, point. But no material blockage at all. Oh, How man. does it? And I want to ask him this. Like, he, I was thinking maybe he went commando. But no, he had underwear. It went right through his underwear. Yeah. So like, what was it? He must have. Yeah, he must have just did a, a flying W right through the crotch area over a handlebar and just yeah. Whoop, just just yeah, cut it. And really, he got lucky that he didn't hit himself during that, and it was just his pants that ripped. Yeah. yeah. Could have gotten worse. Yeah. I could've thought it was fake. Could have caught the sack harder. And the dude, first photo, the first photo that that I saw, I thought it was a joke. Like someone photoshopped it in there. Yeah. And then it, yeah, it, it's, it's not it's, fake. So. Look, he got seven points. Yeah. Like, those seven points could come in handy down Absolutely. the road. You know, like, it's a ballsy effort by <laughs> Cameron McIntyre. Yeah. And I think that's but probably... Awesome, though. Awesome. So, and, yeah. he, and, he, and, he, and speaking of ball, like, he's bloody down there. Yeah. He's got blood on him from the gripper seat, I'm guessing, or maybe a rock. I don't I, I know. I would say from the impact. Or maybe when the it impact. Happened. I don't know. Yeah. Something. Yeah, I would say when it happened, So he now he's got bleeding. bloody balls out, the wiener's out, and he's just riding. Bike was fine. The rest of the body was fine. Dude. I love it. Yeah. Finish the race. Seven yeah. points is a lot, man. <clears throat> yeah, and I think that's probably the difference between maybe the privateers who aren't going to be in a championship. Yeah. Huh, yeah. Right? And yeah. then and him then who guy. is, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. seven points could really help him at the end of the season. Yeah. Sure, sure. Uh, that was, I don't know about you guys, but that, I mean, in all my group texts, that, I mean, there's some photos, oh, yeah. there's some videos, you know. Looked like a tall boy can a Red Bull hanging there. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot. I'm surprised it hasn't found its way onto like bar stool or something. Well, it's you early. Know? It's only yeah. Monday. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm surprised <laughs> nobody sent some photos over there or whatever. This could be, this could be the thing that breaks our sport out. I don't <laughs> know could, about this, that. This one. This could be the the break we've been needing to get in mainstream ESPN. This could be it. Not in this country. <laughs> I'm just saying. It wasn't McGrath and Pastrana on the, yeah. the night show or whatever yeah, it was. Show, it's right. it's McAdoo's yeah. It's McAdoo's <laughs> junk hanging out. So looking forward to talk to um, Cam. Later on in the show, uh, Ricky Carmichael as well. Perhaps you gentlemen have heard of him. I know him. Pretty good mm. rider. Did you did you race much against him? No, like, no. I don't know. How he was you're, older. You're, he I was older. Younger. We've yeah. crossed. We crossed paths like my first year on an eighty that, and I was just riding super mini class to ride an extra class. Ricky was super mini. Yeah. And my goal was just not to get lapped. That's how much. That's how good he was. Okay. Yeah. Well, I. Uh, yeah. I that's maybe even saying that I was somewhat good but the dude would would never yeah, lose right, right yeah I, I, so i see him a lot but when you were going to tracks in florida <laughs> and you're a super mini and he's 125 b or no not even it's not even um, he's gone by then yeah like i said i yeah. i only raced him when i got into super mini and he was almost going to big bikes okay. so like because our age yeah, is yeah. that separate right right so but so, i mean he was always a class you know we're yeah. at the same races the same regionals yeah. the same you know yep. uh like scuba that. steve also a, tr a team manager for triumph uh what did we make of the triumph debut trevor i'll start with you uh what you what'd you make um, overall, I think it was pretty good. Yeah. I think um, everybody's excited about it. It got a lot of good coverage. I think the gear, that the setup makes it stand out for yeah. sure. Um, yeah, Renan. They picked Renan yeah. for the team gear, yeah. Yeah, I think and you know, the goal was to ha have two bikes in the main, so they accomplished that. I mean, it wasn't the best main event. It was a little shaky getting them both in there, but they, yeah. they figured it out. And, yeah. I mean. Jalik rode well. He was caught up in that first turn yep. and then came up. Who yeah, got, and, so. I mean, got – got teed up pretty good in the heat race and yeah. still mm. was able to, to ride back into a qualifying spot. So. Yeah, he's not happy about that. Yeah. I think, I think Pierce will be hearing from him down the road a little yeah. bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, so overall it's it, it's good. Yeah, it's I good. thought the bikes looked good. Uh, Clayton, yeah. yeah. I mean, no, they, Evan they pulled awesome. the start from the outside. I mean, he's a good starter anyways, but – that tells me something. That's no, like, and, and I'm I'm definitely a proponent proponent for the engine is not as important as people think it is yeah. to get a start. Evan's a great starter, but that's still something that is a lot of people are going to look at and be like, hey, that's a good yeah. motorcycle. You still have to have a good motorcycle to do that. So yeah, yeah. I for me, I just I haven't got a chance to hear it. I want to hear it like do a it's, three out of the corner. I want to hear it like it's loud. fourth gear down a tilly mm -hmm. tilled up straight. Like that's how I can. It's F loud. I, I don't know. Like, I don't know what's going on. I'm sure they're passing the sound. I'm not saying that. It's just, it's got a different note. Yeah, it's, it's I, I want to hear it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, but it's cool to see <clears throat> Triumph, for sure, uh, coming in. And, and yeah, it, I think, like you said, getting both guys in, you know, even though Evan hit the wall. 
Yeah, but yeah, I, mean, I still think they had a good showing, though. I mean, with absolutely, Jaleek coming yeah. back and then you know Evan whole shotting. Yeah. I mean, looked professional. The whole setup, no mechanicals. Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, awesome. And I think too, like if you were to say, "Hey, Mathis, uh, you're going to be in charge of an OEM. What are you going to do?" I'm not going to spend a bunch of money on like some great guy my first year. No slam to Jaleek and Evan. Jaleek's a top ten guy, right? And Evan's just getting his feet wet. I'm coming in with lower expectations because. If the big guy doesn't win on your bike right off the bat, then it's uh, it everyone, doesn't look good. Everyone yeah. points to the bike, right? Yep. Yep. So right. that's where I'm at. Uh, so I like what they're doing. I like the strategy coming in low key. I think Savachi is underrated he, for outdoors. I agree. Yeah. Right? I think like, he can be better than people probably give yeah, him credit for. Yeah, I think so. So <coughs> I like what they're doing. So Scuba Steve going to join the uh, join the show later on. Um, all right, uh, RC coming up here shortly. So Jet won, and on a review pod, I had this theory. I want to bounce it off you three guys, like. I don't know. Like Sexton's qualified second twice, third once. Uh, we had Mutters in there too. So it's not like Sexton's raw speed has gone away. Uh, this weekend, um, uh, it was uh, – was it Webb? Yeah, Webb this weekend, fastest yeah, qualifier. Yeah, I think so, and then yeah. And then we had um, – Oh, Jet was overall fastest, no, I thought. Jet was fastest? Okay, yeah. so then we had Webb yeah. a couple uh, last weekend. Anyways, my point being, I don't know if anybody can run down Jet. Like what he did – I don't know. We've seen it. Well, Yeah. I mean, if you had said last year, hey, in 2024, Jets rookie year, does Sexton have the speed to run him down? I would have said, yeah. Like, raw speed, Sexton's got it. Like, Jets not going to. For sure. You know, but I don't know, man. We saw Jets' two wins look a lot the same. He's got 58 laps led to the next one's got 15. Like, his blueprint, Clayton, I'll start with you. His blueprint is this. Get the start, and I don't know if anybody can run him down. No, I I don't think so. He's he's going super fast and also I think we're still maybe a little early in the season for maybe Chase to want to risk it as well for like going after him. I mean, yeah. we've had two mud races, you know, it seems like every, you know, four or five different winners now, right? Yeah. So, um maybe he's just kind of playing the long game, right? I don't want to go down the dungeon thing, but <laughs> I think maybe he's just like, yep, I'm in second. I'm going to just put in my laps. If I start catching that, him, I catch him. That is an odd theory for Sexton though, right? Yeah, but I don't see, like yeah. yeah, I don't I'm not in on that, but Right. I just there's no reason to risk it at you know race four yeah. or five or you know whatever it is. So, yeah, I do wonder, um, Trevor, if if race the, five. yeah, I do wonder if the people around Chase are like, hey man, just you got to be in it. Don't make mistakes. Yeah, we'll let him make the mistakes. I think I think which is an odd thing coming from the guy who made mistakes in 2023. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah. Well, I think he. I mean, he's he's maturing, right? And I think he's he's in a place now where. Um, he doesn't feel like he has to necessarily be that guy that needs to override every single mm-hmm. time he's potentially in a position to win or or leading and has to try and you know push yeah. the pace to still to still be up front throughout the race. But going back to to Jet, I think A one was the first race where we were maybe going to see somebody kind of run him down with Webb before mm-hmm. he went down. I mean, Webb was going forward. He was. I mean, yeah. I, I was. I was excited to see the rest of that race play yeah. out, but I mean, watching watching Jet. I mean, everyone's talked about it. If he gets a start, he's going to be difficult to beat. What he does a really good job at is these little areas where he finds a way to carry that much more momentum or this extra little spurt through the whoops or this one lap he'll go through the whoops half, half a second faster than he's gone through the whoops every other single lap, and he picks areas around the track where he's really really good at just again carrying a little bit more speed through this rhythm, finding a little bit more speed here and then he settles back into a pace and then he ramps it up and yeah. you know it's like where he's comfortable yeah. right and yeah. that's it's kind of like what you see with Roxon like when Roxon gets a good start and he starts up front he finds ways to go really really fast through specific sections the beginning of the race and when I watch Jet I just see him do things where I'm like you know 5 minutes in 10 minutes in 15 minutes in where it's like wow like no one's doing that you know and so uh, it's it's going to be interesting that's funny you bring that up come sitting in the stands at Anaheim 1 next yeah. to Andrew Short and Ryan Morris uh-huh. and Andrew and I started to talk about Jet, and he was like, what I see is is basically what you just said. He's like, it's all the free areas is what Andrew called it, right? It's the spots in between the turns, in between the jumps, all the little free areas. Like, he was carrying so much speed into those sand rollers at Anaheim, yeah. way more than anyone else. And that was a lot of, I think, his why his lap time is what it is. So, yeah, he, he cleans up all the little stuff, I think, really, really good. But like I said, Paul, <coughs> if you had said, hey, Sexton's not going to have the raw speed to run him down, at the end of 2023, I would have been pretty. Yeah, that'd at that. be. Yeah, that yeah. that's a hard thing to say for sure. Yeah, and, and I mean, but Chase, as, as, even though I told you guys how he qualified second and third, he hasn't. I haven't been like, oh my god, Chase Sexton this year yet. Yeah, and I still think it's. I honestly, I think it's early. It's still early for that. Yeah, 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 like Chase is. 
done this now, right? He ate Tomac's rear tire for all summer. Then he ate Jet's rear tire for all, all summer. And then he was behind Tomac all winter for the Supercross title and got it. Like, yeah. I I know he can see the the end result. And I think you're just – a lot of ask Ricky when he comes on. A lot of these guys just want to be within 10 or 15 points of the lead yeah. when you leave California, yeah. Yeah. which I would say now we're officially kind of – leaving after glendale it's east for yeah. a while right yeah i mean look uh chase got the red plate back so here we are talking about all that and he's got the red plate yeah I mean, so everything's great back, but yeah. so i would yeah, yeah you're gonna after five rounds you have the red plate you take that no matter yeah. what yeah, yeah. so yeah. why it's, risk it especially exactly. with his off season so it's fine. especially <clears throat> with his off season right where we all know so. it was rocky if you're like hey sexton and Kier, his dad you guys yeah. have the red plate after five rounds they're yeah. stoked <laughs> yeah and they'll i mean yeah. this series is going to evolve each of these you know the, like the pecking order will rise it's we're not going to yeah. have you know, oh, we're talking about seven, eight different guys can win. We won't be talking yeah. about that in a month from now. It's going to be two or three or f maybe four guys that can win. I was going to throw this to you guys uh, before the show, and I forgot because bad host. We were probably talking. We were probably laughing about McAdoo before the, I hit record. But biggest thing of the series so far to 450 class that you were wrong about. Biggest thing you were wrong about. I'll start. I'll give you guys some time to think. Uh, I just thought Webb was going to be a guy. I thought he's near the end. He's going back to where he's comfy. Like, we did see he needed the structure of Alden Baker to do well. Mm -hmm. When he got away from the structure of Alden Baker, he didn't do well. And now he's going with Swanee, who he knows as his buddy from back in the day. And is he really going to train that hard and really push that hard? And wasn't good in SMX. Yeah. Wasn't good at Paris. And I'll tell you what, I, I, I was wrong. He is an absolute title contender, race winner guy and I, I shouldn't have counted him out and that was what I was most wrong about going into this year I knew Kenny would be good I knew Jet would be good all that I discounted Cooper Webb and he was really good in Detroit and I would have loved to see him stay up in that heat I think he's his, his crash in the heat got him the bad gate pick for the main and that cost him for the start uh, so that was what I was wrong mostly about was Cooper Webb but I'll, I'll go does anybody want to start with this I can, I can go. go okay go ahead go. Like, I feel like I was wrong <coughs> about I, if one of you says I was wrong I was, about nothing I'll just, I know what you're about yeah. to say who I think I'm, I'm gonna throw, AP. Oh, throw yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I under you know obviously he's really good but I didn't <coughs> expect him to a carry the red plate and b even win a race right like his starts are, weren't that good he's picked up his starts completely now mm -hmm. he um you know he's even on the broadcast of last year he was averaged an eight point something start and now he's at yeah. two two something right so his starts have really improved but not only that he's fast you know he's he's up there mm -hmm. like he's running really good and i just did not see that happening is that why you let him go no oh, here we go <laughs> i mean I, here we go I, i'm just saying i mean right and early uh <laughs> expert choice yeah. of champions yeah um but uh <laughs> No, okay. Yeah, no, good point. Yep, yeah. absolutely. So, yeah, yep. uh, AP. You know, I just didn't yep. see him winning a race and did, really didn't see him being up front for this long. And sure. I mean, four rounds in, he had the red plate. So okay. Trevor? That would be it. Um, probably Eli for me. I thought it would be better. Mm -hmm. um, and, like, I'm I'm always I'm always on the Eli train. Like, I'm yeah. I'm a fan. Like, yep. and um, so, yeah, I was, I was pretty high on him being better than he has been for yeah. sure. I didn't think it was going to be dominating. I didn't think it yeah. was going to be – the old Eli, but I thought it was there would be more consistency. I guess. Sure. Um, so it's been interesting. Like this, this race this last weekend is like. It, I mean, it's concerning, right? So <laughs> it's very uh, concerning. You know, to go to continue to go backwards. I mean, there's been times where he's lost a couple spots, but he, you know, he ends up in that fifth and sixth and can ride and manage yep. the race and and get through it. And yeah, um, yeah it looks like he's. This I mean, this race reminded me of some of his Cowie rides. He had a few of these on Cowie where yeah. you were like, "What the hell?" But he usually rebounds. Yeah, and, and so and like this this weekend's a good weekend for him to rebound. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, but like in the you know the third main the week before, I mean, it's it's a completely different person. Yep. And I think uh, I think he's motivated by certain scenarios in the race too, mm -hmm. like a whole shot, right? Like yeah, if yeah. he starts up front and I mean, he's a guy too that can put down three, four, five laps that are, I mean, it, lap times that no yeah. one's ran that whole day, you know, and you kind of saw that in that third main. So I, I think he's motivated by being okay. in certain scenarios, but I, that would be my, my biggest, um, sure. I guess thing I was wrong about uh, going into this. Season, Paul, you're, so. you're Shmoda? No, uh, <laughs> no. Um, I guess I'll say, you know, may, I, you know, our answers are based off things that we hear in the off season, right? And yeah. and, and progress we've yeah, heard yeah. from people and how people are, you know, guys are doing. And so maybe I'd guess I'd pick Hunter Lawrence. Um, I, I thought, and and I still think he 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 will, but you know, he always finds a way to figure it out. Mm -hmm. Him, but uh, I did think he would be more inside the top ten than he has been. Obviously, the first turn thing at uh at Anaheim probably took a lot of wind out of his sails. Yeah. I think he probably picked up. I would imagine some, at least some sort of bumps and bruises through there. So he's, I, I, I think his start to the 450 class has been tougher yeah. 
for him than uh, I saw it going because I think he's got a lot of – yeah, I think he can be good. He's very I, gritty. I talked that, to a Honda guy course. about Hunter this weekend, <laughs> and they said, well – you know, it took him a while in 250s to figure it out, but he did get it. He you figures know, just, it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and this guy was saying, I think you figured it out. It just, yeah. you know, it'll come. I mean, look, he's a, he's a, you know, yeah, he's a champion. And, right? and I think er, that's similar to Aaron Plessinger, honestly. It took him a bit to figure out the 250 class, and his last year in it, he won both titles. And yeah. now, here we go. Four years you know, later. Yeah, he's yeah. starting yeah. to figure out the 450 class, sure. too. So uh, It's interesting, <laughs> like, if you had looked at AP, I would have said, well, he's out, there, he's out of there when Prado comes, or... He's out of there when um, somebody else was up, uh, and Marv I was like, or somebody. Yeah. I was just like, oh, he's like he's gonna be the guy they're gonna clip. Yeah, you know what I mean. I'm always like, he hasn't done enough to get that to keep that spot. And you know, you want to talk about his popularity? You that, know, that's, that's a factor. That's, that's too. on the next. That's next level. Yeah, Detroit was off the charts. He was. He was. He was the. People were losing their minds over AP, over everybody else. And the team loves him, too. Yeah. Like, like just yeah. the time I got to spend with him at Des Nations and interacting yeah. with KTM, the team loves him. Yep. And he's a joy to be around. Like, yep. he brings the entire vibe of the team up. So um, there's more to it than when you get – when you don't – aren't a winner every single weekend, right? You're still yeah. paid to be, I guess, you know, yeah. for lack of a better word, he is kind of paid to be the second guy on that team. But um, but he's just a pleasure to have around. He obviously has potential, and when you're easy to work with, that makes yeah. a big difference in getting a job again. Yeah. No, I think uh, so. I was it was Webb, Tomac, um, um, Hunter, and uh, and uh, Eli. AP. A P. Well, and, and and going AP. back to A P. Yeah. at San Diego, that the main event in San Diego. That's I mean we've been to we've all been to too many races, right? Like that was one of the funner main events that I've sat and watched in a yeah. stadium yeah. just because, I mean, the typical 450 main is half the stadium's rushing out of there, half the stadium's staying. Oh, yeah. That last lap when Plessinger was leading, the place was, yeah. I mean, it was, yeah. I mean, I, and I was caught right in the middle of it, screaming and yelling <laughs> and having a good time, you know. And, so. I, and I forgot you left. Me and Clayton were still in Louisville with all of Parts Unlimited, yeah. the yeah. president of the company, oh, yeah. the, the brand manager of Thor, 100%. Yeah. Like, we're all sitting, yeah. and everyone was cheering for yeah, AP. That's cool. And it was cool for him to win such a uh, to win a race for such an important weekend for yeah. so many of his bigger sponsors too yeah. it was good uh, <laughs> speaking of ap uh thank you to the folks at decal works for sponsoring the show pulp mx 24 is a code to save red bull ktm using decal works Husqvarna off-road guys as well great guys at decal mx.com uh, they will dial you in for graphics numbers uh, sponsors all of that stuff so thank you to the folks at decal mx uh, decal works and decal mx.com pulp mx 24 is a code to save with those guys thank you to that uh, for them c for coming on and uh, let's get into um, some calls here we have Tom on three Tom what's up man you want to talk about Tomac yeah I do hey uh, how you doing Steve good <clears throat> listen uh, first thing uh, uh, McAdoo okay I remember a guy back in Manitoba that uh, was squeezing his Kawasaki oh. and uh, the top cap uh, popped yeah. off of the yeah. – uh, this, is, this is my dad. <laughs> my dad's on the line. No. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, uh, I came up short on a Kawasaki and got gas all over my balls and oh. finished the race. And it – you guys ever done that? Mm -hmm. I, yeah. It yeah. hurts so it bad. It burns. I, yes. Yeah, I had to <laughs> pull my pants down on a starting line when I was a kid as my mom was dumping water. <laughs> on my junk. I, mean, I was like yeah. seven or eight, but yeah. I had race gas all down, oh, just burning. Dude. So not quite bad as McAdoo, though. <laughs> no, no, not no, quite as bad. No, so, no. What's up, Pop? But what else, know, Pop? Listen, uh, Steve, because I'm just going through uh, Achilles myself, eh? I tore my Achilles right off the bone. And, right. And, uh, yeah. That's, uh, I'm starting hmm. my sixth month right listen, now. Listen, if you ever race Supercross, Dad, we'll be pulling for you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know. I you know, know you will, yeah. yeah. But here, here's the thing. I've been watching Tomac, okay, uh, all the way through. And uh, there is something wrong with his left uh, ankle. He's babying it, or he's not sure about it, or he's getting a little bit of pain, something. And uh, I could see that in the last race, uh, actually, uh, a few times where, uh, you know, his foot kind of came out, and he dabbed it, but he wasn't quite sure, etc. I think he's still got issues with the, with, uh, the Achilles. Well, you okay, know? caller, but I would come back with <laughs> he, he won the last main at Anaheim, too. He looked great. He pulled away from everybody. Yeah, but but you, you know, know that's that's the thing. I mean, uh, uh, for instance, it could could be good, okay, for a race or two. But then after a couple of races and more practice and everything else, okay, he just overloads it. You know. All right, fair enough. I mean, it's good theory. We have to see what happens. Of course, you know, I'm no expert, right? No, no, I know, no. <laughs> Although 
Although I did, I did train a Manitoba champion and a Canadian four, champion. Four times, you know. four times, Dad. Yeah, yeah. there you go. Uh, <laughs> Anyways, this, all right. I wish, I wish you would call me back sometime. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> this is yeah, this is awkward. Um, you got to call your dad. I should, yeah, I, sh- I should call him more. I think you guys should bug him and, and get him to call his dad because okay. his dad is lonely and he never returns the call. Stop it! The stop business. it! Oh. We talked like two wow. weeks ago. Stop it! Don't make all my listeners think <laughs> okay. of that. Okay, thanks for letting all me right. there, Steve. Thanks, Pop. All right, call, call your dad, dad everybody. Call your dad. You gotta call your dad. Call your dad. Uh, uh, yeah. Thanks, assholes. Um, <laughs> Unbelievable. Two minutes. Says the guy not calling his dad. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is Bailey. What's up, Bailey? Hey. So the new schedule of Detroit this year. Yeah. I got up Daytime. balls early. Yeah. Like five thirty in the morning to drive there, which is cool. Yeah. I liked it. Okay. But talking about heat race time, dude. I'm tired as shit. <laughs> And I'm thinking, you know what sounds nice right now? I don't want a coffee, but mm-hmm. I'd like a Monster Energy. Okay. So I walk everywhere, and you cannot find a Monster Energy anywhere at that place. What color is your Where favorite, real quick? What color is your favorite? OG. Okay. Okay. Compared well, okay, so I was going to say go to the pits, but it was closed pits because there's lots of lots of Monster available in the pits, but nothing in Detroit because the pits were closed. So I know it's lame. Yeah. I mean, we've been in the pits before. You just got to put your head down and act like you know what you're doing. But yeah. I mean, I, can't, I don't know if they have any in there either. But I, I don't know. I thought that was very weird. I don't know, um, man. But so like, I wanted to bring okay. it to your attention. Yeah, thank you for that. I will alert court. the authorities. I'll tell Feld. I, I mean, I don't know, Bailey. Like, I don't know what to say. That sucks. But well, I know not. I yeah. know they're they're horrible for you. But gosh, they taste good. And I mean, it's, it's <laughs> yeah, you got a, What about a Red Bull? I got a friend that over to Red Bull. I got a friend that goes and gets a Monster every morning. I don't know. I really? think yeah. Red Bull is like a more watered down. His name's Randy. Of a Monster. He drinks a Monster every morning. Yep. Instead of coffee, or just every morning he wants the white one too. Yeah. Oh wow. My sales guy drinks one every morning. No sugar. Yeah. You gotta yeah. watch it. Uh, oh, is that what it, yeah. the white one is? Yeah. No sugar. <laughs> All, right. All right, Bailey. So anyway, yep. yeah, I prefer you. Uh, I would like you to hold court okay. and discuss this. Sure. Powers. I will do that. Um, and another question I'll leave you with, and I'll hang up. Uh. Who was Deegan flipping off? I was uh, just curious. Hundred so. percent rider Tom Vial. <laughs> <laughs> oh no shit! Yeah, he he thought Vial caused it, which he didn't. If you watch the replay, Tom was no. Yeah, Tom just, had nothing to do. He was no, on for the ride. Yeah. I would say Absolutely Hammaker yarded. caused it mostly. I guess. But yeah, that's a tough stay one. Stay tuned from a race tech rant on that. <clears throat> but no, uh, Deegan was flipping off Vial because Vial did hit Deegan, but it wasn't Tom's fault. He was, you know. Yeah, so, that first turn looked really sketchy. Looked it was. like a shit show. Stay but. tuned for a race. To All right, well, thanks, right, guys. Thanks, Bailey. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. I, a monster. I even it's watched it's, it back because yeah. it's nice to kind of not watch the race and then watch it back no commercials after yep. all the group tech yep. stuff comes in so you can look back and see and yeah. I didn't see no beef between anybody prior to that yeah. first turn thing. No, yeah. Uh, all right, everybody. Let's get to our first guest <laughs> on the line. We can't keep this man waiting uh, much longer. Brought to you by OGO Power Sports. Pulp 15 is a code to save with OGO. Uh, great company, great bags, whether it's the laptop bag uh, that I carry every weekend with a bunch of pockets on it or if you want the gear bag, uh, 9800. Uh, Big Rig 9800 is my favorite. Uh, they've got a lot of stuff, great stuff for traveling, for carrying your gear around, helmet bags. Pulp 15 is a code to save with OGO Power Sports. Thank you to those guys for bringing us the next guest. This man has won a few dirt bike races in his time. He's now NBC Sports Elite Analyst on the Supercross Series. It's Ricky Carmichael, man. What's up, RC? Dude, what up? What up? <laughs> I uh, I love your insight. I was uh, watching Weege's, uh you know what? What is this? The yeah, and weed show. Is, the weed show. Yeah, yeah, the weed show. And uh, I love what you you were talking about the starts and uh, you know just really how key they are this year. And that dude, I hate it all the time saying like, dude, oh, dude, it's all the about key the to start, the race, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? You're no, just like, yeah. oh man, it, it's it's. But it's the truth. So I feel like this year, you know, you take and you're exactly right. You know, had Coop got the whole shot and Jet had been fifth, would have been really, really tough for him to, to get up to the but my Not saying and, it. Yeah, right. and my thing right. is, is like you and Chad and Stu – could have started backwards and got third. You really yeah. could have. And, and maybe yeah, this is the, you know, happening. now I'm talking that's shit on the great happening. Tim Ferry. But, like, <laughs> like I think that's true. I no, really, you guys true. could have got third. Yeah. No, dude, yeah. I'm going to tell you right yeah. now, my mindset, and, again, no disrespect to the people I was racing, but I knew, at worst, I'm going to be third right. with, with Sue and, yeah. and Chad. And I bet Chad and I bet Stu would tell you the exact same thing. Yeah. And now, and like, that's yeah. not happening. There's nope. no way. Not happening. Uh, it's closer than ever, and everyone, everyone's at riding facilities. Everyone's training right. Everyone's got their bike dialed in with electronics. It's so yep. – but I don't think Starcross is great for our sport either. But 
it is what it is, you know? Yeah, that's right. So, I mean, it just puts more emphasis on the guys to, you know, like just, just uh, they can't slip up. Yeah. You know, they have to be good everywhere. There's no, there's no gimmies like there was back in, back in our day, you know, when, when you were a mechanic and I was racing, it just, yeah. you just can't do it. The guys are too good from, from second on back. That's the part I don't love about the greats. Like, I know yeah. it makes everything so much easier, right? Like, you yep. can load the gate faster, but there's so many little tricks of the trade and conditions that that go stuff. away. Yeah, yeah, the ECU stuff, right? And I think part of why jet starts were bad those last couple weekends was because it was raining. And he's only, you know, he turns his throttle to 10 lights or whatever it is, and yep. he dropped the clutch. Right. right. So uh, I, dude, I, is, that what, is that what they're using? Are they yeah, using it's, a t- it's a it's a tack, basically. So you turn the throttle, and then you fill up the mm-hmm. gauge, basically, or you fill it to, like, eight yeah. lights or seven lights, yeah. whatever you want, and then you just hold the clutch and wait yep. for the Let gate to drop go. and drop it. Yeah. yeah, they tell you, here's your RPM that we like. Here's the RPM where the bike has great traction. Here's the RPM that is, is what we prefer. Keep your light on. Don't move your hand. Yep. Dump your dump your dump your clutch. You know. Right. Uh, Do no. you let me ask you this? Do you think the greats or the 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 metal greats had anything to do or has anything to do with First everyone coming off the lane, <laughs> and, and, uh, everyone coming off the gate and being so close, getting into the first corner? I do, and I I I said this last year as a rant of mine a few times. And uh, the Fell guys told me that they have no evidence of that. They, they you know, they don't mm-hmm. see that in the bearing out. Look, uh, I can remember plenty of crashes in your day, RC, with starts mm-hmm. that go the width of the stadium, right, with a ninety yeah. degree. I mean, that's yep. that's a classic thing. So, yeah. but uh, to me, it just, I mean, how can they not stay be closer? How can they not be? Yeah, for it, sure. It's just it, everything makes sense when you add the greats <laughs> in with the electronics and the skills, and how can they not be closer? And then therefore have more contact, and yeah. therefore have more crashes. The Feld guys say no, but. I don't know, you know. So. Yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely so. We uh, we broke it down uh, today, and uh, we had some pretty good angles. It definitely separates going halfway through, mm-hmm. De- and it, but you are a hundred percent right as far as those ninety degree corners when it go. Yeah. it's just a recipe for disaster. If you you got one guy, <laughs> and you were exactly on point, that caller that was uh, that was talking just before I got on um, Hammaker, I, I think it was. Uh, uh, Miller was maybe next next, next to Hamaker, okay. and they he he was on Hamaker's left, and I think Hamaker just he he held it on for due to split second too long, mm-hmm. and when he did that, yeah he he I think Miller just barely kissed him a little bit and it put him over to the right and then he went into uh he went into the and then it was game over from that point on and uh you know obviously i'm not trying to blame hammock yeah, but that's no. just what happened what i i saw exactly what what you saw and it just it's unfortunate those guys are fighting for you know every inch and dude one little miscalculation he he probably thought if if i hold it on just this one more foot i'll be good and of course he wasn't and it, that was melee dude that we, was melee we covered this on our review pod too but the old 450 class no crashes no problems everybody in the 450 a little like <laughs> More mature, a little bit smarter, let's say, you know, like, uh, yep. you know, yep. a little bit like, hey, man. It wasn't their round one either, right? That's th- true, That too. was their round yeah, five. There was a point. lot of round one stuff that good. is everyone on that gate thinks they're going to win tonight. Yeah, good stuff, point. You know? No, you're right about that, too. Uh, how's the Title 2-4 pod coming along? I got to say, I mean, I'm not worried about your dedication, but your partner there, he seems like he's showing up. <laughs> it's, he seems like he's doing this. He, he, hey, he's doing oh, all shit, the heavy asshole. lifting. He's doing all the, <laughs> he's doing all the hev- heavy lifting, he, w- without a doubt, as far as all the analysis. Listen, dude, on most of the stuff, I love hearing him weigh in mm-hmm. on it, just yep. because I've already said my piece, you know, yep. uh, on uh, throughout throughout the weekend. And then there's some things that I like about it that I can elaborate on that I don't always, or I may not always have the the chance to on uh, during the, during the broadcast. So it's been fun and and, t- and some conversations that you and I have had, Steve. I mean, he seems like he's into it. It's been really fun to uh, to grow our relationship together. Yeah. And we hope that uh, everyone enjoys it. Yeah, it's been it's, it's been a lot of fun. He's been bringing it. I That's can't. Yeah, sure. I can't believe he's showing up. He told me it's the best podcast <laughs> in the sport. He told me it's the number one <laughs> podcast, and I said, "I said, what what measurement do you have of that? Like to say that I you're number know. one?" And he goes, "He goes, what everybody tells me." And I'm okay, man. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> he's great. Yeah, he, he's a, he's, he's a, a beauty. Head. Yeah, it's uh, it's a lot of fun, and uh, yeah, man. So so uh, that that's been fun, and it just uh, 
you know, with with the uh, with the TV stuff. I love love that. It's great to have Weege in there as well, your oh, buddy. It's, please, uh, it's been please, good. Don't don't say too much about Weege, but. We just doing a great job. So he he is, but this week. I spo- I had to sponsor him this weekend, so he comes in, dude. He's, and I almost text you. He's popping tags, right? Oh. Got a brand new. Oh, hey, brand new sports coat, brand new pants. I don't know if the shirt under the sport coat yeah. is new, but dude, the guy is absolutely kidded. But he forgot his pocket square, so I brought him. An, I brought him an extra. I brought. I, I happened to bring an extra one this week, and I'm like, "Come here, dude. Let's fresh. Let's take it did, to the next level." Did here. you notice if the tags were like secondhand stores or anything, like or like winners <laughs> no. or anything like that, or like you know, did you happen to notice if no. like where he purchased said clothing at? Because <laughs> You know, no. as, he, as he tried to he give you any, co- as he tried to give you any coupons or anything or anything like that. No, okay. no he, he, well, he, he told me how. Uh, well, I asked him like, where'd you get that coffee this morning? He's like, oh, I got it from Fran. Fran's our stage manager, and uh, he does all of our. He, yeah, he makes sure we got okay. coffee or whatever, drinks, whatever we all need. And he's like, oh, you know me. If I, if I gotta wait, you know, an extra ten minutes to get to the stadium and have free coffee, I'm gonna do that. I'm not gonna go to Starbucks <laughs> and pay for something. No. I'm like, this no. is. No, he doesn't, he doesn't believe in that. Um, what do you make of this McAdoo thing? We're going to have him on the night. Like, is this ever – and I'm, I doubt this has ever happened to you, but have you ever, you know, had your ass showing? Have you ever, like, had pants – your shirt ripped off in a ra- – like, not, not, not on accident. I mean, <laughs> maybe, maybe, like, having fun and playing. You know, yeah. Like, mess, messing with the Japanese engineers back in the day. Okay. Like, you know, just, just trying to make it lighthearted and, and play with those guys. But, dude – you know what? You, you just have to say the guy is taking it like an absolute champion. Yep. I mean, yep. he hasn't shied away from it. And, you know, with, with all the fun stuff that everyone is saying and just poking and, 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 and having fun on, on, on his <laughs> fortune and behalf, yeah. it's crazy. I've never seen anything like it. I, uh, I, I expect there to be more, more stuff to come out probably from other sports. I yeah. Mean, as it starts to catch more traction, but uh, it's crazy. It's crazy. I hate that, like, for, for a guy like him, you know what I mean? It's like the whole Atlanta stuff and the memes mm-hmm. and the YMCA yeah. stuff, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> like he's going over, and then, and then now this. I hate it for him, but he's taking it like a damn champ. Yeah, he said in his Instagram post, it was cold in Detroit, everyone. <laughs> like, that's great. Mm-hmm. That's, that's great. <laughs> that's good. I mean, dude, and I'm sure, like, you guys uh, have talked, and, and everyone has, just – Little sayings of 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 you know throwing it th- you know putting the sentences together. <laughs> <laughs> Ask Ricky the question you asked us. That that yeah. you, that was in the privateer text. I bet he ain't pulling off. Oh yeah, oh. no, we know that. I mean, we already know <laughs> that. We know he's not pulling off. No, uh, I was. We were saying like, listen, that's seven points, and and Ricky, you know all about winning titles. That's seven <clears> points that you know could help him. And I'm in a group text with a bunch of privateers, and like a bunch of them are like, I'm pulling it straight back to the truck. I'm going right back to the truck. <laughs> And I'm. I think we know your answer. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. I mean, dude, you're you're a championship. He he thinks he's a championship guy. Yeah. I mean, listen, he has all the capabilities to do it. He certainly has the speed. He has the grit. He has the determination. So if you look at it from his standpoint, dude, he ain't got time to pull over. He's just like, <laughs> screw it, bro. I'm going for yeah. it. I'm letting it all hang out. <laughs> yeah. You know great. what I mean? I'm going for it. So, yeah, it was uh, it was nuts. For sure, crazy. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just a crazy, a crazy race. There's no doubt. And I, I feel bad for him. I really do. But, he, hey, like I said, he is, uh, he's doing a great job having fun with it. And I think really, you know, I mean, better him than me, but I think that's really the only way you could do it. You yeah. know, mm-hmm. yeah. just, just have fun with it, embrace it, and it is what it is, and move on. Yep. Hey, Ricky, uh, kind of switching gears a little bit. Uh, uh-huh. You know, Triumph made their debut, and just curious to get your thoughts yeah. on, on on what you thought. Yeah, so uh, I thought it was a fantastic weekend um, as a group. Uh, bummed, bummed for for Little Red. Uh, it was a, it was a rocky start for him. I mean, he's he's missed a lot of riding in the last couple of years, I would say. But uh, but what I was really excited for him, I'm proud of him. Uh, he did a great job in that last chance qualifier. He was a, like a completely different rider than he was all three practices uh, in the heat and his uh, first heat race. And then, like, you could just tell that he started putting things together. Like, he wasn't pausing in his corners. It seems like he was pretty consistent through the whoops. And uh, so I was happy for him. I knew, like, him starting on the outside, 
especially in the 90 degree corners it's basically all or nothing and you got to give it to the guy mm-hmm. he went for it so super bummed on him uh jalik uh was really proud of him and the grit he had to fight for it he got he got punted in the um heat race which was really weird like after the race i went over to the team and uh went down to the truck i'm like dude were they beefing like did tv did we miss something (laughs) to where why he because pierce was i mean listen i like pierce but i don't like he cut over he went over the rut and just I mean, he just cleaned them straight. Yeah, up. you called it. You called it like it was. I thought. Yeah, exactly. I mean, right? I like, mean, dude, he didn't even attempt to fall uh, to fall into a line like a rut through the corner. I'm like, he just yeah. he just went. He went for it. So I don't know if they were beefing before. There's an underlying issue, uh, but anyhow, uh, so he got back up and uh, made it to the main. And you know, all things considered, to get six. He did uh, great after falling down. Yeah, some of the guys went out. Probably be a little bit harder um, next week or uh, two weeks in, in, in Arlington. But I was happy. Uh, I, I thought that the starts, I was a little worried about the starts. Wasn't sure how we were going to stack up. Uh, but the bike, I know for a fact, handles well. Um, I was more involved on the, on the handling and, and things of, uh, in, the, in the chassis de- design development and parts and pieces and all that stuff more than I was with the engine. Um, Ivan has done a lot of the work. Uh, Tedesco and, and Yvonne Cervantes has done a lot of work on the, on, the, on the engine stuff as far as that goes. So I was happy. I think it, yeah. I think it went great outside of uh, Little Red, like I said, getting, uh, getting slammed there in the main event but i mean i don't know what i mean i don't know what else i could have asked for i mean we always want to do better of course mm-hmm. but uh you also have to be realistic and uh yeah i th- i thought that the the bike looked good and i think that the fan reaction was was what went well too and i just go back to all the people who were, were hating and listen yes we had to keep the secret it wasn't fun and uh, we were sworn to secrecy but uh, at the end of the day, the damn thing is real, and I think it performed really well. So I'm yeah. happy for the team and everyone involved. I, I swear I didn't set this up with RC beforehand, but I asked Evan on track walk. By the way, mm-hmm. seeing Evan race really makes me fuck. It was a little depressing. Honestly, it was a little depressing for me. I'll, I'll be honest. Why? Because, <laughs> dude, that, I saw him when he was a baby. I held him when he was a baby. And I'm still. Well, these, I mean, why is that depressing? Because I'm still at these stupid motocross races, and he's now racing them, and I'm still in the stands. You know, mm-hmm. I, I, yeah, it's just it's depressing. I don't know. Dude, I, I feel like I so should I do more with my I'm life. I'm trying to think of who I was talking to this weekend. It's somebody that races. Oh, dude. No, it was Sexton. I was in the KTM rig, mm-hmm. and um, uh, we, we were having a conversation. I'm like, when were you born? Yep. And he's like, yeah, I was born. Such a, I'm like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was talking about um, my first year was 97, 97 yeah. pro. And, and like, he's like, when were you? I'm like, when were you born? He's like, yeah, like 2000 or something like that. <laughs> and yeah. I'm like, oh, my gosh. It's, it's not good. <laughs> That's crazy. Not good. <laughs> but anyway, so I asked Evan on track walk, and I asked Jalik after, like, what do you like about the bike? What, where do you feel like this thing's really good? And they both told me the handling. Like, Jalik's like, dude, it turns great. It handles well. So, yeah, good job. I swear I didn't set this up. But both riders, mm-hmm. with, you know, prompted. They said the handling of the bike is really good. Um, so yeah. So they're happy about that. Yeah, it does. Yep. It, uh, I'm, I'm really happy about that. And, you know, it took a while. Everything takes mm-hmm. longer than, than what, you, what, what you think it's going to take. But, uh, you, you know, stuff like that. Is, and, Steve, you know, you know this, especially about production. And, I mean, you ain't just changing the, the chassis, and you're not just doing stuff, like, on a whim. So when you're, when you're doing that stuff and you're doing your due diligence and crossing your T's and, and, and dotting your I's, it, it's got to be right. And sometimes things take time to make sure because there's no go there's no do-overs yeah, right yep. so we knew we had to be right on that and uh so yeah it was good man ogio, i'm glad they like it ogio power sports bringing you ricky carmichael on the show uh pulp 15 is a code to save with ogio uh we got some phone calls for you rc as usual uh let's yep. go into logan on five logan uh, what's your question for ricky hey guys uh ricky you know you've had such a, an amazing career coming up as a kawasaki kid and your battles with McGrath, Reedy, and Stu, riding for Honda, then switching to Suzuki, that you're in the booth, and a brand ambassador for Triumph, and a mm-hmm. million things in between all of that. Have you ever considered or been approached about a book? McGrath, Pastrana, and even Bob Hanna all have one. 
We would all love to hear more stories about the redheaded kid from Florida. Now I'm going to hang up because I have a baby in my arms. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Thanks, <laughs> oh, man. dude, thanks. Thanks for the kind words. I have. I have been approached a couple times uh, to do a book. We're, um, we're filming, Steve, you know about this. Uh, Sam, Sam Jones is making a documentary that uh, should be should be done here pretty soon so obviously it's not a book but uh yeah. a really really cool project that should uh should be done here shortly did you but see uh, maybe some of that? one day did, i feel what that did you see some of sam's stuff he played me a little bit uh, uh i haven't seen any of it oh well then uh, never mind i'm probably no. gonna get in trouble for saying that then don't get mad no about. you're not gonna he showed gonna me in trouble he showed me like a 14 minute clip uh yeah and it's so good it, is it good. it's it he showed me oh one anaheim uh, where mm-hmm. you and Jeremy battled Anaheim two, right? Whatever that was, that Anaheim mm-hmm. two, where you guys just went at it. Yep, yep. And yep. and and it, I was blown away. I was like, it was you two talking lap per lap as the race footage is going on, and you're like, I knew he would check up here, and I went inside here, and then mm-hmm. I saw him get tired, and you were like, I knew I had him, and Jeremy right. Jeremy was was filling in with his I, I, dude. It was. It was awesome. It was great. It was amazing. That's cool. That's yeah. cool. Yeah, I know you guys have uh, built a pretty good relationship. That that's good. You know, yeah. I, I trust the guy. I mean, have you had a chance to watch his uh his his Tony Tony yeah. Hawk movie? Yeah, I saw the Tony Hawk one. I watched the Smart List doc he did and stuff. Yeah, Sam's mm-hmm. great. Super talented. Yeah, so. he does he does a good job. So looking looking forward to that. And, yeah, uh, hopefully. And I think I think he hopes to sell it to HBO. He's looked at HBO, Apple. It'll be on one of those. It'll be yeah, yeah something. Yeah. I mean that that'd be the goal to to be that uh, to do something like that yeah. and get it out there uh, amongst the masses and reach a new audience would be great. And too, one more thing about that. I love how like. There's some hard moments in there from what I've heard. Oh, yeah. Like it ain't oh, all no. like the the shine of Ricky Carmichael, you know, and just the, the mm-hmm. good stuff. It, it's not. Yep. It's not. No, yep. no. I mean, it, it's it's real. Is yeah. there any real? Destin That's footage, real. though? No, there's no Destin. <laughs> yeah. no, I wish there was. Straight up, I wish there was. But it's more about more about the racing and uh you know it talks about uh, the the uh the ups and downs of yeah. friendships and myself with red and, and and ezra and all that what that looked like and and honestly i'm looking forward to uh he hasn't told me what anyone has said you know and so and and i've told him i've told sam also like don't tell me because i want to see i want to see it when when yeah. it's done you know i don't want to know now because i don't want to have to adjust or <laughs> my story yeah, or yeah, whatever yeah, i yeah. want to tell you the way that i saw it and and how how i felt at the time and uh yeah he hasn't told me anything what anyone else has said so uh i'm looking forward to it yeah it's gonna be great i hope i can't wait to see it, the whole thing yeah it is, it, it's yeah, like i said yeah. it's real too it doesn't you know, it doesn't just always shine a light on you on how awesome everything was all the time. You know what I mean? Oh, it no, gets into it. it. So uh, no, I mean, you, yep. I mean, you was around like when when you would come with Red and stuff. I mean, yep. hey, listen, we all had yep. some debt motivation, and there was, you know, there was a couple. It could have gone either way, you know. And I think we all we've all done well, and we're we're fortunate where we're at. Yeah. Sure. Hey, uh, Ricky, going back to. Yep kind of some of the development stuff and, and talking mm-hmm. about chassis setup and things like that. Um, mm-hmm. Walk us through, like, I, I, I'm more so curious on, I guess, the process and, and how that starts and, and how it, it develops to, you know, a finished product. And, and working with Triumph, uh-huh. was it like, you know, here's, you know, are they coming to you with, let's say, different platforms or things to start with? Yep. Are you guys developing mm-hmm. it ground up? Have you ridden yep. XYZ brand and you're taking – positives, negatives, things from four different bikes and trying to put those together into one. So I, I guess, mm-hmm. how does that process start and, and get you to where, you know, you have yeah. that finished product that's on the racetrack? Yeah, I'm glad you asked me that question. So yeah, we started from a baseline and, you know, like, okay, what direction do we want to go? And we had all the bikes there. So, you know, we like, okay, well, on the 450, it'd be awesome if we had an engine like this and a chassis like this and you know, you, you, the base, the baseline and, and the benchmark, I should say, is always the best one out there, right? So whether it's 250, then at the time when this project started was uh, early 2000 and 20. So, uh, you know, the Yamaha YZ uh, 250 was hands down uh, the best uh, production bike out there, and especially from an engine side of, of things. So from an engine standpoint, you know, that would be the benchmark. How do we get something as close to that? Um, as far as chassis goes, um, you know, materials, do, are we going to go steel? Are we going to go aluminum? Are we going to do perimeter? Are we going to do spine frame? You know, all we, we, we test those things. You know, I have my ideas of why I think aluminum is better. 
and they they have their reasonings and and ideas of why maybe steel might be the right route to go or perimeter or spine from whatever mm-hmm. you know whatever design whatever material that is and and we test them we we're thorough about it and we do benchmark testing so um yeah so you, you narrow it down there and then that goes that goes from okay now what kind of components do you put on it and what 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 you know what's what size triple clamps you're going to use what angle in the in the steering races are you going to use uh what what um what kind of linkage are you going to use like ratios and and design of swing arm what's that look like uh what do engine hangers look like i mean there's just uh, you you run through the it's a whole it's a whole process and 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 just weeding out everything and uh but yeah it's 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 also one step at a time i mean Steve, you know how it is. I mean, you just go through there and you go through every part and piece and, again, be as thorough thorough as you can. Um, At the same time, um, you know, I'm I'm also thinking about the the consumer, not just what what I would like if I was racing because what I would like uh, for racing wouldn't uh, necessarily will will not work (laughs) for the general consumer. So uh, I have that I have that in mind as well. So that's how it goes. It's just uh, you know you start from a base. Where do you want to go with material? Okay, boom. Then you go forward on that. And uh, you know engineering and, and CAD CAD has certainly sped up the process uh, for stuff like that and um, 3D scanning and like like you guys saw on that Cowie Science of Supercross. Mm-hmm. It's really uh, it's really uh, inf- informative. Because uh, yeah, you can take the uh, you know the guessing game out of it when you can scan all that stuff. So uh, certainly helpful, you know. And uh, so that's that that's how the process was, and getting the uh, you know getting the, um, the the chassis right. I remember just before we confirmed that we were going with the chassis that we have now and put it in production. It had this one feel to it, and uh, I'm like, damn, I know like I know what I'm feeling. And I don't think it's from the the actual frame, you know. So we went and we changed some other components, and boom, found that it you know wasn't the mm-hmm. chassis or the actual frame itself. And we were able to change a component on that, and uh, do the 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 bike felt exactly how I thought it needed to feel. And this is a great direction. And all the other four four guys that were there at the same test, they wrote it. They're like, yep, absolutely. Uh, no, I feel exactly what you're feeling. So imagine had we had not, you know, identified that particular piece mm-hmm. and, and thought that it was the frame, then you got to go back and redesign the frame and massage where you think that that area might be better or, or where, where the problem might be. Um, so just stuff like that, just being super thorough and making sure, sure it's right, especially before it goes to production. Did they take everything that Kiefer said and do the opposite? It's kind of what I would do. Yeah. I mean, that's what, I mean, this is me. I mean, you know, if he says it pushes a little bit, then rake that thing out more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's just me. But no, Kiefer, Kiefer's good. Kiefer was good. They, they, uh, they love, they love having him on there and give him a hard time. But, uh, I think he's valuable. Yeah. You know, I you know, think he's, yeah. I mean, he's he's super valuable, and you know, he's he's just one of those guys, kind of like Tedesco. I mean, listen, Tedesco yeah. is uh, he's been he's been around the block. Mm-hmm. Um, he's worked with some great uh, race teams, and he has knowledge. You know, kind of like what you're seeing uh, uh, Brock Tickle is doing right yeah. now. I mean, I yeah. think he's valuable. You just some things you can't replace, and that's time and and uh you know all these these things that these riders have been exposed to they know what works they they know what don't work and they have most of them have good feel did you have any experience working with dave arnold before in the honda days I, he was gone but maybe he was maybe he jumped in every now and then dave's dave's a smart guy oh dude it's oh he's he's unbelievable yeah. i have loved I'm like a kid in a candy store with him, Steve. Yep. I just love asking like questions. Unfortunately, yeah, he wasn't at Honda. I feel like the, when I was at Honda, Steve, he he was kind of like I think he was like like retired or semi-retired. Yeah, maybe yeah. He's, <laughs> he's popped what, in and what? out, right? Yeah, right. Like he never he never was really he was he wasn't there, and I never got the opportunity to work with him. So as uh, soon as um, uh, Bobby Hewitt uh, scooped him up, man, it's been it's been awesome, and it, it it's so comforting to listen to a guy that uh, is old school but has mm-hmm. ha, it can adapt to the new style of 
what works and, and, and what probably doesn't work. I've, I've really enjoyed my conversations with him and, and bouncing ideas off of, off of each other. You know, yeah. it's, it's dude, it's so fun. Yeah. It's, it's, he's great. All right. Another call for you from Austin on two about the TV production. Austin, go ahead. What do you want to talk to RC about? Austin, you there? Okay. All right, moving on from Austin. Oh, uh, we lost him. Oh, we had, no, that was Nick. Ah, oh, damn it. <laughs> Nick had a good question. Um, sorry, Nick. I'm going to ask your question too, Ricky. My bad. Um, yeah. I did want to ask this to you. So, I, and th- it's already over. Jet won. A lot of people liked yeah. him, and everyone cheered for him, and it was yeah. awesome. But we all saw it at Anaheim, uh, the booze mm-hmm. and the cheers yeah. when he went down. And I, I mean, I mm-hmm. look, I said it on my show, all my shows, like, hey, man, I saw RC get booed. It turned out okay. Um, yeah. You know what I mean? So you, you yeah. were there. Uh, it happens. Mm-hmm. It, it, you you oh, went yeah. on to you went on to get a lot of cheers later on. But uh, certainly, yeah. if there was anybody that could relate to that, it would be you. Yeah, yeah. I I will take. I will take. It's not something that I'm proud of. <laughs> I will take the cake for. Uh, uh, Jet's got a long way to go to the whole stadium booing him. But, uh, you know what I mean? Hey, yeah. if the, if fifty percent of the stadium is booing him and fifty others uh, of the of the percent of the stadium is cheering for him, he's got a hundred percent of the audience. So he's got that going for yeah. him. But here's the thing, and I feel I mean, you spent time time around Jet. You know, uh, you know his inner circle well. Listen, the kid's young. I think that. Um, you know, intellectually, he's he doesn't even seem like he's 20 years old. I feel like he's younger when I talk to him. Um, I think he's a good kid. I mm-hmm. think he's genuine. Some people think he's cocky. I don't. I've never gotten that experience around him. Um, and I think that he would, if he was like me, like, it really bothered me uh, why people, why I got the reaction that I did. And Cliff White at Honda used to always tell me, ah, oh, don't worry about it. It's just because of Honda. And I'm like, yeah, I know you're saying that. And I appreciate that, but <laughs> I, I didn't take it as that. And what, what was, what really made me sad inside was like, I felt like I was the same person. I'm like, dude, you guys loved me in 2001 when MC and I were battling mm-hmm. it out. And then now I, I go, I go to a different team and you, now all of a sudden you guys hate me. I haven't changed one bit. Mm-hmm. You liked me six months ago. What like? <laughs> and so it, it's frustrating. It's a mind bender. It's hurtful in a way. It really is. I think you know. I mean, we all have hearts. Yeah. You know mm-hmm. what I mean. And, and certainly for me, I, I can have soft moments without a doubt. And especially when you're judging my character, that's when I kind of take offense to it. You know, I can handle. I can handle. You know shit talking and Mm -hmm. and and but but when you when you start judging people's character that's what and you don't even know people that's what that's what really bothers me and and Mm -hmm. it can be hurtful so maybe uh that's what he is experiencing um i'm sure may because i feel like he's genuine so he's probably he's probably bummed about it and and there's no rhyme or reason so i think once he gets over that um, and learns to deal with that because I think that'll be harder to deal with than the stuff that's that's on the track. I think he'll he'll be you know he'll uh, he'll get over it and 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 move on down the road. And let's be honest, you know, Danger Boy's out there now, so yeah. these people are like piranhas waiting to <laughs> jump on either Jet or <laughs> oh, yeah. or uh, or Danger Boy. So. Um, I know it's a long-winded yeah. uh, answer, but that's that's kind of what what my thinking is, and what I think his his struggles could possibly be. Mm-hmm. I feel like you know he's like, dude, what what have I done that is so wrong? Wow, well, <laughs> and, and, and well, and well, Ricky's been through this exactly, right? Like Ricky, who's yeah. who's I can ask you this now, but whose idea was the crown at U.S. Open? No, it wasn't Ricky's. Yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> like that that to me was a big thing, and that's why I think Anaheim let him have it is because they saw that. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, yeah. So it wasn't. Um, I don't want to name name, but it was some, <laughs> some, someone. Uh, no, and, I wrote a story about this. We can name names. He came clean. He came clean. Oh, was it Eric? Yeah. No, Todd Gendro. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was Gendro. <laughs> so at the time, he's like, "Dude, do it. You're the you're the freaking king, man. This is gonna be awesome." And I'm like, I'm like sitting there, I'm like, man, I don't know. Like he's still the king, and dude, I've only won one championship. Like, yeah. I don't know. He's like, "Dude, do it, do it." And at the time, now I'm only 21 at the time. If I was yeah. 25, I would have told him, "Stick it. There ain't yep. no way, dude." Uh, so yeah, that's what happened, and uh, and that to this day, I have fun. With with it, and I, I blame him for it, and we can laugh Rightfully about it. Rightfully so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. You yeah. know, I just, I should have, I should have grown, grown, you know, I should have grown some guts, and that's hard no, at 21, I'm not though. doing yeah. this. Yeah. So yeah. That's, 
and Todd Todd mine. laughs about it too. And Todd's like, I just thought it would be really like a neat passing of uh, yeah, terrible. <laughs> well, yeah, it was terrible. Yeah. Like, and I'm like, I, I don't even think you know. A lot of people ask me before the series, you know, like, uh, you know, what what do you think Eli's mindset is? Like, it's a changing of the guard, and I'm like. I guarantee if you asked MC and in going into the 2002 uh, uh, Supercross Championship, I bet he wasn't saying there was no changing of the guard. He was probably mm-hmm. ready to get back his championship. Yeah. Same with Eli. I mean, if I'm Eli coming into the season, I'm like, what are you guys talking about? Why are you yeah. discarding me like a two of clubs? Dude, no, there ain't no guard being changed yet. I'm not ready. He had this know? thing one round from the end. It was still his. Yeah. 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 So, um, I don't know. I uh, I don't know. Like I don't know whose idea it was to have um, have the opening ceremony stuff that that uh, they got for Jet. But uh, anyhow, and we and I will say this: I think that our fans are tough, man. Mm-hmm. I feel like we got some tough critics in our sport. Uh, not that every sport doesn't. Um, I I will say that I wish our fans were a bit more respectful to the to the older guys. I feel like, you know, when, when you go to other um, um, sports, whether it's NFL, MLB, you name it, I don't know how hockey is, but, dude, when you see older riders or older, older athletes, you're like, oh, my gosh, that guy's an absolute legend. Mm-hmm. And I don't know that our sport really – appreciates that as much maybe it's the generation and we mm-hmm. have a younger fan base i that's that's how i feel like if yeah. i saw richard petty in nascar driving around i'd be like dude that's freaking cool as shit right, <laughs> right, there, right. Man. Uh, right so, yeah no you, you're, you're right uh rc here on the show brought to you by ogo power sports pulp 15 is a code to save with uh with those guys uh last question for me uh ricky mm-hmm. is I think this is a big weekend for Tomac. You know, we all saw what happened last weekend, and, you know, he wasn't comfortable on the bike. I think he maybe got arm pump or just wasn't comfortable. Yeah. Didn't push it, went backwards. Uh, this is a big weekend for him. Now, in the past, he's had these rides at Kawasaki. He's gone backwards, and then he's responded. Uh, this will be a big one to me. Do you think he's got it in him? Oh, you put me on the spot. Yeah, that's what we do. Honestly, I wanted to text him, but I, I didn't want it to come off. Like, what do you say to a guy like that that's been, <laughs> yeah, I don't been know. Going there forever? You know what I mean? Right, like, yeah. I'm not going to – so, listen, it's part of my job. I probably should have done it. But I don't want to be disrespectful to the guy. Like, you know, if he got pumped up, you know, mm-hmm. and, and he went backwards, I will say this. is like, man, getting pumped up is one thing. But getting pumped up and then losing a lap and going all the way back to 10th, I mean, is mm-hmm. – that's 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 substantial, you know, and uh, so I don't know if there's an underlying. I want to give him the benefit of the doubt. Yep. Like maybe something was wrong that we didn't know about, but that's a pretty pretty decent fade with with arm pump. So yes, to your point, it is a uh, it's a big it's a big weekend for him. He did the same kind of ride last year at Tampa. Mm-hmm. Uh, remember when it was kind of raining intermittently. So uh, we'll see. I mean, that's what I love about uh, this year and this season, and not not only this season but all the time, guys, is I love the reaction. I want to see what the reaction is the next weekend, or, the, or I want to see how these guys respond. Yep. I, 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 I think that he will respond. But uh, we just have to let it. We have to let it play out. And the same with Sexton. As I sit here and watch Sexton, like, what's he going to do? He keeps talking about he's testing, testing, testing. Okay, well, you know, you know, is, is it going to get better this week? I, it's just the reaction is so much fun. So, yeah. uh, I hope that he does. We're going to find out. What? Let's see here. So he normally does pretty well on fast tracks in Glendale. Yep. Yep. Uh, I don't know what his uh, record is or stats at uh, at Glendale is, but I do feel like uh, this is one of those years stats are going to be uh, tough to follow. I think. Yeah, yeah, in it'll. My opinion. Yeah, I, I agree, man. Uh, well, hey, great to have you on once again. Always thanks. appreciate it. Uh, no, good. thanks, thanks for asking me, dude. I mean that. I, I yeah. love coming on. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Who who knew that you'd be coming on my show after uh, you know? Hey, you know what? So we, we all we all uh, <laughs> we all we all move on, and we're we doing do. good. And like I said, dude, I'm I'm pumped for you. You do a great job. You are. Don't listen to RV. Okay, all right. I listen, won't. Okay. I'm happy. I'm happy. <laughs> like I I think I, we're we're doing okay. But uh, I think I think you got everyone covered. So uh, keep up. Right. The good take, work. take that RV. Uh, fantastic. <laughs> Thanks, Ricky. Appreciate the time, man. Thank you. Yeah, bud. You bet. Bye. Right, see you. That's Ricky Carmichael. Dude, Ricky everybody. Carmichael is the winningest rider ever. I-
Uh, brought to you by OGO Power Sports. Thank you to Ricky for coming on. Always good stuff to have him on. Um, awesome. You know, and, and I, I don't know if you guys know him at all. Like, you must know him. I mean, I, he, yeah, not he's great, got some good but, opinions for sure, you yeah. know. Um, so it's nice to talk to him a little bit about it. And uh, I think he's doing a good job in the booth. So, and Wygant's probably bringing him down a little bit. I don't know. Weech does a pretty damn good job. Ah, here you go. I honestly, he, he does. does. I just, He's I, so I don't want him to go too far to the dumb and down stuff. I think we can still call it a rhythm lane, not a series of jumps. Yeah, well, that He's was NBC him, stuff, right? Oh, yeah, because he's calling them jumps. Like, yeah, so yeah. if they make him say that, I get it. But like, just don't take us too far, Weech. He he did that because it's NBC, <laughs> and he he is trying to dumb it down a little bit. You know what I mean? So, yeah. uh, let's go to some phone calls here. Choppy's on five. What's up, Choppy? Hey, Steve. How are you now? Good, man. How are you? Oh, not so bad. Hey, I got a question about, uh, as we're a couple races away from the mutters now, but, yeah. uh, you can't see the number plates, uh, and you just see the, the buildup and the caking all over the place. Mm -hmm. And I, I was wondering if I know that uh, back in the day they had Scotch guard or whatever, back when you were holding Evan as a baby, uh, but have you ever seen the uh, demos and YouTube videos of stuff like Ever Dry or whatever, where the hydrophobic two-part paints that mm. uh, I, I they have like put it. on glue? I have it. Oh no. my God, it's it's dramatic. Uh, and uh, it they run like garden gloves that have like the chamois kind of rough leather. Yep. And they'll treat one and they won't treat the other. They're like cinder block and yeah. oh, I know is. what he's talking. We've tested all this stuff at Pro Circuit. Okay. All of it. You all did. this stuff we've okay. done. It yeah. didn't, didn't work. Nope. No. It doesn't a work. SC one under the fender is the best move, yeah. or foam is the best move. I mean, dude, we would put an electrical connector and ten different soaps and stick them on the wall in the bathroom to see what the soap did to the electrical con connector. Right, right. Like yeah. They think of everything over there. Yeah. So yeah, they've but seen I mean, the like commercial this like of this part. stuff of the two part application system and the one really? side that's muddy and the one side that's perfectly clean. Well, it's the yeah. same. It's the same. The wh who's the guy with the boat? Where he goes sailing with the with the with, with the screen the, door the bottom. Screen door. Is that guy? <laughs> the flex seal guy. Yeah, flex seal <laughs> guy. I feel like this is the same thing as the flex seal guy. <laughs> uh, but no, SC one. A lot of teams use SC one Maxima on there. They put pantyhose on the radiator louvers. Foam like everywhere. Foam, oil, foam is yeah. the best. Yeah. Yeah. So all right. Thanks for the call, man. Thanks, Choppy. Sure, man. Whatever. There, uh, there was a photo. Cho I think Choppy was mad. Yeah, yeah. Choppy really yeah. wanted to get through yeah. it. Yeah. There was a, a photo from, um, <coughs> from San Francisco. They got sent around. Not to, I mean, SC one. I think we all know works works pretty yeah. well. But yep. of Anderson's bike and like K Factory Cowie, the race team sent it over to us like in a text. Okay. And him next to two other guys and his his number plate. You can, I mean, completely yeah. see the numbers like right. perfectly. And everybody else is caked. And it was like a little. Tip of the hat to SC1. Cho Choppy so. worked for the Flex Seal guys, I guess. Or Maybe. <laughs> Sham oh, Choppy was yeah. upset with us. <laughs> um, he was not stoked. I mean, I don't know. You said you tested it. I mean, I, I knew where he was going with it all. I feel like I just uh, sh helped shorten it a little bit. Grayson's on one, yes. What's up, Grayson? <clears throat> hey, I was wondering uh, about Beta getting less coverage because maybe they weren't as prepared coming in to their debut or whatever. And uh, what you thought about Colt Nichols' chances versus uh, Honda? I'm interested to see Nichols when he gets riding there. I mean, nothing against Benny. I think Colt's a little bit better rider uh, than Benny. Fair. Benny can go fast for a lap, but can Benny string 20 minutes together? Not always. Um, yeah, I don't know about la lack of coverage. I don't. I feel like it's been okay. I don't know. Like, I mean, they didn't they do as good as trying. Yeah, they're they not going to get as good coverage. Right? They I mean, didn't do as good. They so. didn't put anybody in the main event in the first two rounds. Yeah. And so. And Beta's also been here. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. It's yeah. not, it's not that's brand true. new. That's right? true. It's a good yeah. point. It's yeah, not they've made off-road bikes before. Yeah, 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 and they, you know they've done a good job in in aligning with the right people, like Ricky being yeah. one of them. I mean, yeah. these people that have a big following. Yeah. So. They do have the deal with Feld that Beta doesn't, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, right. I mean, they, no knock on Beta, but that's yeah. I mean, that's if you want to compare the two, yeah, that's yeah. all part of it. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Grace. <laughs> thanks, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, Joe. Yeah, good points. Um, hey, thanks to the folks at Firepower, by the way, FirepowerParts.com. Dean Wilson, you heard of Dean Wilson? I know him. Yeah, Firepower Honda, running the Firepower chains, batteries, and more, firepowerparts.com. Get at your local dealer. Uh, Max Yancey, hype. I mean, look, he was probably helped out a little bit by that crash, but he was really fast all yeah. day. Like, it's real. The Hensley hype was real. Yeah, and I, I think it's important to draw a result to hype because, I mean, it, it – it would, I guess, depend if you consider me uh, uh, on board with the hype or not. But, like, I was the somewhere. Wilson realist? Yeah, 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 whatever you want to okay. call me. But, <laughs> but I mean, if, if we think the hype is that he's going to win the title, no, I don't think he's going to win the title. Do I think he wins a dry race this year? Yeah. yeah yes. Yeah. So I'm somewhere in there. Yeah. But so it sounds like everybody was saying championship. 
See, I, that's the part and I don't know. I, yeah. I didn't hear that, so I don't want to say anyone. Yeah, I don't. I, I feel like everyone was just saying like he's going to win a whole bunch of races, and I'm not even on board with that. No, like I said, yeah, I think yeah. he'll win a dry yeah, race. Sure, sure. I, but yeah, I, I, that's he. Uh, does he, that mean I'm with the hype or not with the hype? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, Chance is on four. What's up, Chance? What's up, Chance? Yeah. Hey, man. I got a an idea about your. Uh, Pulp race, yeah, in Denver. Let me hear it. So I know you had a little, you had a little debacle with the, uh, I don't know, start gate. How you, how you picked your riders for gate pick? Yep. And I also know we all love the handlebar race. Oh. So what are the odds you get the privateers to line up and do a handlebar race amazing. down the start straight and back for gate pick? Okay, uh, I will sponsor it. This is amazing. I don't think <laughs> Feld, Feld, Feld is very concerned about time of this race and oh uh, yeah, how much time you need, no, okay. what time. So I don't know if they'll like that part of it. Um, who would yeah. you know? Who's in the best shape of these privateers? Oh, I don't know who wants it the most. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> who wants it? The most? Um, but yeah. Paul, you will supply everybody with handlebars Absolutely. to run to run this. Absolutely, run this track? as long as we're getting pictures and photos yeah, and yeah. videos. Yeah, yeah, for okay. sure. All right, Chance, I'll look into it. I don't know if Feld's going to agree to this, but. All right, sounds good. All Thanks. Right. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Yeah. Um, I do want to have – I haven't talked to Feld yet about this, but I do want to have a 10-minute race, throw the checkers, line them up. Ten minutes? Yeah, yeah. line them up. Uh, uh, like long staggered. race. That's whoever like longer wins, than a heat race. Whoever wins the 10 minutes okay. gets goes to the back. Okay. 20 seconds starts first, then a staggered start. 20 seconds up front. Then people first are going to be back. sandbagging the 10-minute race. What? But how are they going? If they, oh, two unless they pay points, race. unless they pay points yeah, in that I'm race, going yeah, two separate, oh, okay. two separate races. I'm going off two motos. Yeah, yeah two yeah. separate Understood. races. Okay. Right. Oh, you're talking about a new format. Yeah. Instead of triple crown and traditional, you yeah. have a Mathis format. A Mathis format. Let's hear it and again. Then, so ten minute race, maybe okay. seven. I don't know. Whatever number you want. Sure. Throw the checkers. The last place guy in the first moto Starts. goes up front. Okay. And we stagger them. We throw the we throw the start. Oh, again. staggered start. Staggered so start. not two gate. Not just a stagger start. They start in reverse order. So the order. First, the guy who wins is twenty second. Wow. And then we're gonna see and then combine the two motos. Yeah, for sure. If I'm running like fifteenth, I sandbag it to get twenty second. For sure. But then you may be out of the points. If yeah, you, but I can go like I can get a twenty two and a one or something really and really bring my overall score down. But then the guy get that gets four four is gonna beat you. Yeah. Well, I wasn't up there in the top five though. I'm I'm you know I'm trying to salvage my shit race back here in fifteenth okay. in yeah. moto one. <laughs> way, to, way to shit on yeah. my on my thing. Just trying okay. to pull coals. All right. By the way, if you want to get SE one for your mud coverage, Pulp Twenty is code to save with Maxima and Pro, Fil and, uh, Pro Filter as well. All right, okay, uh, let's get to our next guest, shall we? Uh, Wiseco Pistons, Honda HRC uh, partnered with Wiseco for uh, a couple of years ago, and they're doing great work. A lot of championships over there. Two-stroke, four-stroke pistons. Pulp Twenty Four is the code to save. Full range of performance components for dirt bikes, UTVs, ATVs, and more. Two-stroke and four-stroke pistons. Big Wiseco sticker on the fork guard. Who didn't run that thing back in the day? Contingency. Yeah. Uh, whether you ride a two-stroke or four-stroke, use the code with Wiseco. Pulp 24, uh, bringing you our next guest of the show. He's the Triumph team manager. A lot of Triumph talk tonight, but look, they made their debut in Detroit, so they're mm -hmm. worthy of it. Uh, Scuba Steve, a.k.a. Steve Westfall. What's up, Steve? How are you, man? Good. How are you? I'm How's good. How's it going, guys? Good. Thanks What's for coming on. Scuba? The last time yeah. you were on, you had quit Rockstar Energy Husqvarna for yeah. something else. You said it was the yeah. worst. At that time, did you know you were going to Triumph, and were you lying to us, Scuba? No. So at that time, I did not know I was going. Okay. All right. Yeah. Cause, in fact. Okay. Because yeah, it was, I was either going to, like I did, after I got off the phone with you, I received a phone call from Triumph. Really? And Yes. <laughs> Jeez. Like, um, which led into other things, but yeah, you know, yeah. at the time, the group wanted me to go to Eldon's and oversee that and work with that. And then that fell through and. Uh-huh. Here I am. Okay. Awesome, man. Well, hey, congrats on the debut. Uh, Thank you. A long time coming, huh? <laughs> like, this is. Hey, yeah. 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 I mean, you just see all the, you know, the naysayers on the internet, you know, all the internet trolls. They did a great job over the last two years or so. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when I first sent you guys sprockets, Scuba. This was a yeah, long I time know. ago, man. I, and what hub did pattern did you use? I, I sent them KTM and Yamaha out, okay. output shaft. Yeah, yeah. Because, like, as Ricky yeah. just went, talked about, they, they were. The, obviously, that was a strong engine that they were yeah. trying to yeah compete with. Sure, yeah. sure. Yeah, um, <clears throat> yeah. It's it's been a long road. I congratulations. It's got to be like I don't know. You're Thank not. You. you don't strike me as a, like a super emotional dude or anything. But were you? Was it? Did it mean something to you? Um, it was overwhelming. Okay. Yeah. 
couple, you know, haven't been around for a couple of years. Yeah. So, you know, seeing everybody and everybody coming by the rig and stopping by and saying hi and, you know, that, that, that was overwhelming. So apparently I was missed for some reason, not sure why, but <laughs> hey, whatever. Right. Um, <laughs> but, uh, I mean, it, it was a lot to take in, you know, for that, mm-hmm. you know, that day. Um, obviously it'll just be a little bit easier as you go on, but I mean, it was kind of, you know, from where they started, you know, five, six years ago, I think it was to where, you know, we line up at the gate on Saturday. It's, you yeah. know, they, they, that, that group has put a lot of R and D into that thing. A lot. Like yeah. People don't yeah. realize how much that has gone into it. And, you know, it's been, it's been a lot. And, um, it, it's kind of sunk in a little bit to say, you know, mm-hmm. um, more now. Yeah. But, you know, got a six. You know, she probably was an ace, but got a sixth and um, take it and move on from here and back to work tomorrow. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, absolutely. I think it was a good debut. Like you said, Jalik came from that crash. Evan, you know, went down, but he won the LCQ, which always yeah. is a good I mean, that thing. that was great for him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I sure. mean, he rode like, you know, rookies, you know, and yeah. he was, you know, it's like trying to drill it into him like, hey, look, just we need you to race every race, get your feet wet, mm-hmm. make all 30, you know, however many rounds it is, to 9 and 11 plus 3, and just make every single one of those. When next year comes, it, you'll be a whole new person. And, you know, there's no expectations. Just, you know, mm-hmm. please try to make every race. And, you know, it was unfortunate he went down in the first turn. Um, but his LCQ was the best he had rode all day. Yeah. Yeah, I think mm-hmm. so. Yeah. Which is good. Like it was, yep. yeah, it was really good for him. And I think that was a good confidence booster for him as well. Um, so I guess let's talk about the bike a little bit. You've been around a lot of factory bikes. You work, you know, with the KTM group and all of that. I talked to yep. Jalik and Ev- Evan, and they both said they love the way the bike handled. They specifically yep. brought that out. Uh, where are you happy with the bike? Where do you still need to make some improvements? I mean, this thing's brand new for people who want to know this. This isn't like the KTM yeah. group throwing on a pair of rare sh- red shrouds and calling it, you know, <laughs> a gas gas. This thing was Correct. all new. So where do you th- where do you like where you're at, and where do you want to get better at? Um, man. I had a long, I've got, I mean, I already had a laundry list today going, <laughs> okay, all right. uh, just from watching the race and stuff. Uh, we still need to work on the chassis a little more in my mm-hmm. opinion. Okay. Um, just, it works good here, but then when we got there, like we made changes, like quite a bit of changes over yeah. the course of the day. Yeah. Um, and we got better every time we did it. And you know, it's hard cause it, you know, when you haven't put the bike through a race conditions, you can practice all day long. Yeah. You know, we've had Phil and Jeremy come over, ride with them, you know, we've gone down to MTF and, you know, but it's not the same when you put it under race conditions. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they, you know, try harder, I guess yeah. not that they're not trying hard practicing, but you're, it's yep. a different situation. Um, I just, you know, need to work on chassis a little bit. Still, I feel we need to work on the motor some. Um, <laughs> chassis motor you sound like a team manager <laughs> <laughs> i mean yeah. it, it it's just uh, you know they have done a great job you know um my you know the group my my group the uk group i mean everybody involved in this whole program has done an excellent job to get to where we are today um so you know but we still want to you know we want to be better yeah that's, what's you know like, what's it like for uh and maybe this is a dumb question i don't know but uh probably is coming from me but what's it like uh so obviously triumph massive motorcycle manufacturer big success all of that if 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 you if you guys develop a linkage or dave develops a linkage or um a, a clamp you need or, or a special part what's a turnaround time uh, does that, that does that go to england and get made over there and shipped over here like what's a turnaround time for making parts for the triumph to test is is it quick can you do it fast um yeah i mean I, in the beginning it was a little uh ah, we're not sure now it's like you know usually a 10-day turnaround okay two weeks tops sure um i actually have a guy in the u.s that does that stuff for me okay um so i use him a lot lately and you know we have tried different linkages and yeah different stuff you know all that stuff that we can have, you know, made here and mm-hmm. the turnaround's pretty quick, you know, with Dave and John and 
those guys over there, you know, if there's a linkage thing, they draw it up and they send me the cat. I send the cat over and 10 to 14 days later, I got a new one. Okay. Interesting. So, yeah. That, 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 that yeah. to me is always uh, neat to see. So, and we just talked to Ricky, by the way, on the phone as well. And mm-hmm. so Dave Arnold, Kiefer, Tedesco, Ricky, developing production bike, working on production bike, you know, yourself yep. and, and everybody on the race team working hard on there. Two different departments, it sounds like. I mean, obviously there's communication, but you're on this track and they're on this track. Is that kind of how it's been going, or is there more crossover than I think? Uh, there's more crossover. We have a lot of Zoom meetings. Okay. Um, even though we're in all over. To, I mean, I have more Zoom meetings than you even want to know about. <laughs> <laughs> Early morning, I, too, with the English. I know oh, what that's like. Yeah, <laughs> man. Yeah, exactly. Paul P. knows for sure. So, yeah. I mean, and it, it – I'm Zoom meeting out, to be honest with you. So, um, <laughs> but, you know, that's how the communication works so well, honestly. Yeah. Even though they're over there, but they, they do have – they have spent a lot of time over here lately. Uh, we had a, one guy, Connor, he was over here for – I bet you damn near almost six weeks, mm-hmm. you know. And then the head engineer, John, he's been over. And Will, the engine guy's been over. I mean, it's – you know, they, they, they send people over here sporadic, sporadically, yep. you know, to make sure that, you know, we have what we need. And, um, you know, it's, it's a pretty weld oil machine. May not look like it at times. But <laughs> uh, I think the bike looks cool. I, I like the way the bike looks. I like the Renin gear. I, I sort of yeah, like Yeah, the every... branding, the, the, yeah. The, the, the presentation yeah. Yeah. was official. Yeah. Their was whole nice. setup looks really good. Yeah, yeah, I liked all of it, yeah. for yeah. sure. Clean. Good no, brands, right? That. Like high-end brands. Yeah everywhere yep. so yeah and the bike just doesn't look like yeah. it just clean it doesn't look crazy busy yep. it just right no mechanical it looked like not a one not a prop like you know so that's i think both bikes in the main you should be proud scuba that's a big effort i think thanks <laughs> we lost a brake well i shouldn't say we lost a brake pedal evan I, I don't know if it was in the heat race we got into it with somebody or i don't something i yep. forget exactly what it was but you know Mm. Brake pedal was gone. Don't know if he hit somebody, went down, whatever. <laughs> yeah. so that was a mad scramble before the LCQ, and then the the format this weekend. Was oh just yeah, you didn't fantastic. Get much time. Let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Nine min- nine minutes oh, from uh, the LCQ to the drop of the game. Yeah, Evan went through I that. Yeah, that was tough. I'm like, we're filling the thing up, yeah. trimming it, <laughs> and we ain't going back to the pit. Like, we we'll yeah. put the tires on. That's it. We're we're just yeah. turning around, give him water, and off he goes. It's, like, the, it's the exact words I put in a group text. I said, yeah. "Brim it and just stay down there." Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> yeah, like you, there's, I mean, you, there's nothing you can do. I, don't, I, I mean, I get they did it for TV, but they, I don't know. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> Steve Westfall here on the Pulp MX Show, brought to you by Weisco. Yeah. Pulp 24 is a code to save with Weisco. Thank you to those guys, two-stroke, four-stroke pistons. Uh, use the code, get the Garage Buddy rebuild kits and all of that. Um, uh, thanks to the folks at uh, at Weisco. Scuba, we're, we're talking a lot about racing and, and moto and things yep. like that, but how's the fishing down there? I have to ask. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's Mathis, get oh, all. No, you know when it's I good talk in about Georgia. It. God. Nah, he <laughs> loves when I talk this about fishing. This is great. It, yeah. it, it's like uh, the mecca yeah. for fishing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's unreal. I mean, I'm two and a half hours from Gunnersville, and uh, when it's uh, August, September, and October, I'm d- there once a week, yeah. and it's <laughs> flipping mats like crazy. And then I, you know, Fletcher usually meets me down there or yeah. whatnot. And so, yeah, no, it's uh, I love it here. Honestly, <laughs> you don't got to wait in line uh, and get your boat inspected and fill out paperwork. Dude, you and... literally, <laughs> I went Thursday. <laughs> Drove over to West Point, which is like 45 minutes from my house. You just roll up. This is great radio, guys. Yep. Yeah. Off you go. Yep. This is great radio. <laughs> he's all excited. Yeah. Yeah. He is. Yeah, he totally <laughs> changed. No, yeah, he did. See, yeah. Scuba's got more passion now than he had at the beginning of the call, that's for sure. <laughs> we lost Check out break. my boat, dude. <laughs> he's in the Mecca Moto and the Mecca okay. Bass. All right, moving on. Yeah. Uh, I just want to hit a motocross yeah. stuff. <laughs> moving on, uh, Scuba. So yeah. how, off, how big of a pain in the ass is Phil? Like, Phil loves all the gossip. Phil loves all the news. So, just like, how, how big of a pain in the ass has he been? He's a pain in the ass. I mean, he, we're doing motos one day, and then they Are were like jumping the whoops. Yeah. And and then next thing you know, uh, Jalik was blitzing him, and I think Jeremy and Evan were jumping this one set. And then Phil comes back, this mother F, and you guys are a bunch of pussies what are you doing you gotta blitz these things and i mean he looked like a fish out of water hitting him but i'll tell you what he had balls and he was just pounding them every lap 
Yeah. You know, all of a sudden, he's Kevin Windham or somebody. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Like, oh, he, he, JB, I mean, JB told us one time he was telling JB how to ride Supercross, and we're like, hold on, Phil. You, you've, <laughs> you've never, you know, like, yeah, you've never beaten JB. And, he, and JB's like, no, uh, dude, he was giving me some tips. So, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Just, I mean, to, Phil is he's funnier than hell. He, I give him that. We gave him the night off this week because he's been coming on the show last week. He was complaining about the track and dirt works, and he got in trouble. The week before, he was complaining about Yamaha. Tra- <laughs> the week before was Yamaha transmissions, and he got in, he got in trouble for that. We're we're just keeping him out of trouble here. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, so. well, I mean, well, he didn't race this past weekend, so maybe you should have had him on. Then he might not have gotten in trouble. Yeah, maybe I don't. I, he would still have to say something for sure. There'd be something. There'd be no, something. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, that doesn't matter. I, I mean, I don't know. How- yeah, it's Phil. What's it like, Scuba, just being around the, the 97-125 Supercross champion all the time and soaking in, <laughs> soaking in all that knowledge? I mean, I, I envy you. I mean, you know, what's that uh, like? I mean, I'll have to start sending you pictures now again just so you just maybe, you know. Yeah. Remember? Yeah, just, yeah, just, yeah. You know. yeah I mean, just the, 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 the days, the memories. Oh, and what a guy. Timmy's, what a, Timmy's awesome. We get along great, so. Does he is it's he good. is he a typical is he like a crazy where is he on the he ain't is he crazy, crazy mini dad is he Tony Alessi or is he like uh, Seely's <laughs> dad Tony <laughs> or Seely's dad who no. like literally just hung out in the hospitality and said everything was great where, where is he at no no Timmy I mean he he expresses his opinion on stuff which okay is valid, yeah, you know yeah. What I'm saying yeah. I mean he's he's trying to do what's best for his kid at the end of the day and sure. I and I respect that yeah. you know. Okay, so and, he's somewhere um, in the middle, right? He's not crazy. He's in the middle. No, he's not yeah. crazy, and he's not in the middle. But you know, he wants and he sees things. And mm-hmm. I mean, he, Timmy's been around a long time. I mean, it's the yeah. end of the day, so yeah. You know, I mean, you respect the guy's opinions. Man, not always agree with it. He sure. may not always agree with me. Yeah, you yeah. Know? Yep. Um, but I mean, that's that's how it goes sometimes. But, uh, I mean, Mike, Mike Brown too. You guys got Mike Brown there. Uh, and yeah. what's that been like? He's been working with guys. Uh, you know, how, how's he been? How's Brownie been? Uh, he's been awesome too. I mean, Brownie, you know, he's real quiet. Yeah. You know, he doesn't, you know, he doesn't really talk really loud. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, but man, when you piss him off, he'll tell you. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, no, nah, but Brownie's, he's awesome too. He's very helpful with everything and, you know, always there to help. And yeah, I mean, good. I, we got a great group of guys, honestly. Yeah. I mean, it it is a great group. It seems like a uh, yeah, a good good group of people around there working hard. Like you know, and Ivan is around, and Ricky, you know, and all yeah. of that stuff. So yeah, there's a lot of a lot of positives to the Triumph program. You know. Yeah. Um, no, for sure. Seven zero two five eight six seven eight five seven. Got a question for Steve Westfall from Triumph? I, uh, give us a call. I do Go think on. that's where Triumph went correct, right? And and I'm not saying they went incorrect in some ways, but the people that they hired on the on in the U.S. and then also the people that they hired in Europe are smart, smart, smart people. Like yeah. I've I've worked with Vince in the past. I haven't worked directly with Scuba, but I have indirectly through you know yeah. different brands or whatnot. But um, yeah. that was the thing I've always voiced. You know, because obviously we spoke to rent to um, Triumph on different yeah. situations also, right? And, right? and I've always stressed that I was like, hey, you guys have really smart people. Continue to listen to the people that you hired because they they've been around before and they know what they're doing. Yeah. I did, I did, uh, I did see, uh, you know, Monster branded Triumph in Europe, in uh, Europe, and, yeah. but not mm-hmm. over here. Uh, is that something that's nope. still working on Scuba? Could that happen? Or was it as much as you know, or can take us behind that one a little bit? Uh, could happen, might not. I okay. mean, <laughs> it's yeah. They said they were going racing regardless, and here we are. So. Okay, all right, yeah, fair enough. We'll I see. mean, it. it uh, I feel sometimes somebody's got to think outside the box personally, mm-hmm. you know, outside of an energy drink. Yeah. You know, like, you know, cause that, you know, sooner or later I have a feeling that that well is going to run dry, but maybe not. Yeah. I mean, everybody drinks them, but I just, it would, you know, something, it'd be nice to have something different. Yeah, yeah. I agree. No, I, I agree. It's, 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 yeah. You see this, the claws everywhere and Red Bull and yeah, mm-hmm. you know, I'm, I'm kind of with you on that yeah. a little bit. So, um, yeah. It is interesting to to see the debut of a new bike. It it, it was pretty cool to see that, and I, I think too. Like, uh, well, correct, first of all, Scuba, is the bike loud? Yeah. Is it louder than like it seems loud? I'm not saying you guys are no. you're meeting the the criteria, but the exhaust note or something. No, I mean, okay, we got sound check this weekend. Well, even be, you know because they had random sound, and I was yeah. like, I told my guys, I'm like, look, we have to go, just go anyways. I'll tell them you're coming in over. 
because I, I I just want to make sure that we're in regulations, you know, with mm-hmm. what they say, and we're fine. Okay, honestly. no, I don't mean I don't mean that. I just the the note or I don't know. It sounds different. The Triumph sounds different to me. Well, it should. Okay, mm-hmm. it's all different. I don't know. Yeah, I want to I want to I want to hear it too. I haven't heard it up close, and I want to yeah. just I want to go to race and just look at it and uh, talk to scuba about it and because i'm sure there's some different things just looking at it on how you arrived at this idea and how, how come you went the japanese way here or the austrian way here right i'm sure they right i'd love to hear the story behind some of them i'm supposed to ride it uh, at the end of the month so i'll let you guys know where the bike's at oh you'll tell <laughs> us yeah you'll yeah. tell us yeah i'll tell you guys you'll right. put it to the test <laughs> yeah 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 i mean i'm the ideal weight for a 250f rider right yeah. sure <laughs> right like I, sure it's gonna rip yeah yeah absolutely <laughs> i'll come back too slow sad you know that, that, that'll be my comeback to that but i know i'm looking uh, forward to that I, I hope i can make it happen so yeah and they were two three in the sand race in spain this weekend i believe right yeah, no, Vince yep. guys did great. Yep. Yeah, no, that was good. Yeah, good was, debut all all, all around. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. For so the company. tighten up the program a little bit. Come back out at at uh, Dallas, and uh, you know that'll be great. You'll probably learn. You probably learn some few things, right? Scoop about data and things like that. Yeah, you know. Oh yeah, 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 one hundred percent. Like you said, yeah. nothing like racing, right? No, mm-hmm. no matter what, just nothing. Yeah, like you racing. can't substitute that at the end of the day. No, that sure. and gate drops. Uh, all right. Anything else for Scuba Steve? I don't think so. Uh, thank you, man. Thanks for coming on. And, and no, thanks, you guys. Know, Appreciate it. Yeah, congrats on the success. It's really cool. That thank everything you. looks good. Both guys in the main event. Uh, Timmy Ferry around the races more. This is all great. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 <laughs> you had to throw the last one in there. Yeah, of course he yeah. did, yeah. And please, please <laughs> yeah. text me like all the things that Phil texts you and complains about or, or asks about. Please tell me. Yeah. I don't think your phone could handle that. Dude. Uh, I, yeah, probably <laughs> not. Uh, thanks, Scuba. Appreciate the time, man. Okay. We'll see you in Dallas. Thanks, guys. Yeah, Appreciate thank it. you. See you. Right. See you. Steve Westfall, everybody, from uh, from Triumph. And, uh, yeah, brought to you by the folks at Weisco. So, yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see. And then Ducati's coming. Yeah. Ducati is yeah. – is, you got anything going on with Ducati? I don't know. I can't, probably couldn't tell you if I did. It's did too didn't? early. Okay. <laughs> That's interesting to see that. Uh, I did a podcast with Davey Coombs. It's up on the Steve Mathis Network about he went over to Italy to, yeah. to, to, for the intro and everything else. And they were telling him, Hey, this is a prototype. This, this, you know, we're going to use this Desmo valve system, but yeah. that's about it right now. Right. Because that's their proprietary yeah. kind of. Yeah. yeah. So there's a lot. They were, you know, everyone was looking at the bikes and they're like, just don't look too closely. I, honestly, yeah. I worry. And these guys know, given the current state of the motorcycle industry a high high price point motorcycle is not going to do well in my yeah. opinion it and, will not do well from what davy was saying <clears throat> they're they're coming out and saying well that. that's what they well that's yeah, what they are right. that, that's their brand yep, yep, right yep, they're right. the most expensive street bike too yeah it, but um I, maybe not the most but that's that's yeah that's their angle high end i don't know I that just, i wonder how high end you know is it i mean if it's if it's is it if we're talking over 15 20? grand that ain't gonna yeah. work in my opinion that's too much it'll be tough i mean there's definitely gonna still be the guys that you know just want sure. to you know to have it and say that they have the new one right yeah, yeah. i mean so, that's like i think that that's like the it. stark people too right yeah the same, same thing like yeah but 200 too. units isn't a business yeah no it's just uh, start. <laughs> but yeah triumph is, is gonna be is gonna be good i'm interested to see if triumph uh, when they come up with a 450 do we have the do they have any announced yeah plans they have plans that? for a 450 yeah I do, oh. but do they have announced like when when or? no idea yeah, yeah. i don't know i'm glad that he talked about um that was one of the things that i wanted to ask him was how different their setup was from just at their facility practicing every day to like yeah. actually race day so i'm glad he got yeah. into that and was just yeah, right. it was super open about it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, again, Paul's been there too. You can test all day and be like, "This is our setup." Yeah. And you show up at the race and they're like, "Ah, exactly." Right? I hate yeah. this setup. It's, it's every A yeah. one. It's <laughs> right. every Hangtown and right or, or every East. Every I always yeah. notice an East. The first East Coast National. Yeah, everything we liked in California, no good. Ruts and dirt and everything yeah. else. Right. So there's all of that going on. Uh, but thanks to Scuba Steve and RC uh, Cameron McAdoo is still coming up here as well. I want to talk 250 East when we come back to Forkner with the win. Um, that was great. He was great all day. Um, and so there's lots to get into with Forkner, I think, and Rhino and changing his program and how good he was. You, have Paul, have always been sort of on the Forkner like he's coming in. Yeah. And I was like, eh, like I need to see more. But, dude, he looked good all day long. Yeah. First turn crash or not, he, he might have won. You know, he was going to win anyways or would have been a favorite. He, he looked great. So uh, MotorcycleNewsJobs.com, job of the week. Yeah, it looks like uh, Maxima needs a – Brand manager. Oh, I heard. Yeah. yeah. News They're to looking. me. Yeah, big. <laughs> They're looking. They're looking deep. Uh, no, MotorcycleIndustryJobs.com. Job of the week is a, a job from Honda. It is uh, in Timmonsville, South Carolina. It is a field technical manager. The salary is 69300 to 104 That's the range. It's a big awesome. range. 
Nice. Uh, so this is a what makes a Honda is who makes a Honda. Honda has a clear vision for the future, and it's a joyful one. They're looking for individuals with skills, courage, persistence, and dreams that will help them reach their future-focused goals. So this is a uh, a dealer development position with Honda. Field technical manager supports the Power Sports Dealer Network to establish Honda brand value. MotorcycleIndustryJobs.com. Upload job uh, if you're looking for up if you're an industry in the industry looking for a person. Upload your job on the site. You'll find some of the best people out there. Uh, field technical manager. MotorcycleIndustryJobs.com. Job of the week. Please check it out. The first and only job board built specifically for the motorcycle industry. Thank you to those guys for coming on board with us. As well, before we go to commercial break, thank you to the folks at Michelin. Uh, whether it's uh, street bikes. Whether it's cruisers, whether it's dirt bikes, Michelin's got you covered. Mountain bike tires are great as well. Uh, please check out Michelin. Uh, ch- check out michelinman.com forward slash motorcycle to learn more from those guys. Starcross 6s are great. I've almost, I've ridden so much. No, I have. Don't laugh, Clayton. <laughs> I've ridden you, you, enough to almost need a new rear tire, which in my years past didn't always need a new tire. You know, I get my bike, I put on Michelin's. Mm. I'm good to go. Well, okay. This one's showing some wear. I've ridden so much. Even rode in the rain last week. Yeah. No, no. <clears throat> You're I, on I, it. I'm, 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 I'm back on. And then so Kiefer and I, I'm getting ready for this video Kiefer and I are doing. He's going to ride He's gonna ride a modern 125. He's going to ride my 1990 125. Oh, you just reminded me of something. And he's going <laughs> to ride. Right? And he's going to ride a super mini. He's going to ride a super mini? And what, what bikes will I beat him on? Me and a 450. None. No, you, think, you, you beat him on the Super. You think he what beats track? Yeah. Wow, well, we're thinking Mesquite, maybe Glen Helen. I don't know Glen enough Helen. about Mesquite. Glen Helen, you will beat him. On what? A four fifty. If he's on no, a Super but, Mini, you beat him. But what yeah. about the other bikes? No, mm. he's got me covered. Probably, yeah. It's fucking sad that you think he's that, that much better. That's than right. You. What do you think? <laughs> I would agree. He cracks under pressure. Fuck you, Trevor. you got yeah. it. I got him on what? Yeah, on all of them. All of them. He's gonna crack. You know. That's my guy, Clayton. Uh... <laughs> He's he's got me on the modern one twenty five. You have been riding. I've been riding more. Okay. What I've lost a little bit of weight. I, what's your I, what's what's your what's the criteria here? Like certain amount of laps? One yeah, lap? Yeah, what's the what's yeah, how long is the race? Work? We're thinking gate drops three laps. So f- three laps fitness will come involved, I would say, in three laps. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it, we're thinking three laps. Uh we don't want to do lap times because we want to just yeah. race. Yeah, you gotta yeah, race. And how much if it's Glen Helen, like are we talking all the way up the hill, all the way whatever down the hill? Whatever layout they have. Right. Whatever whatever the layout they have yeah, that's a big part of it. He's gonna lose so much time going up hills on a super mini. Yeah. I think I got him on the ninety and the super mini. Mm. Okay. I don't know. All right. Well, stay tuned. Know. Stay tuned. This will be our Maybe new video. Maybe the 90. I don't know. I, I guess I don't know enough about what suspension is like and the brakes are like. Like, yeah. how hard can he charge down that hill? Exactly. I don't know. It's an old bike. Yeah, yeah. They're yeah, not good. good point. They're not great. Can I just suggest one thing? Maybe yeah. don't start by him. I don't want him getting out of the gate and cutting over on you. Yeah, no, yeah. no, no. no. We're Let gonna, him have yeah, first gate yeah. base. He's and you cutting go over else. on a 450 on his 86, 125? Did you yeah, see Yeah, light up next to each other. Listen, back to Michelin. Starcross sixes are great. <laughs> They're gonna give me the traction I need to beat Chris Kiefer on all three bikes. You're not gonna oh, race yeah. at the same time, are you? Yes. Oh well, that's unfair to him because you're if you, especially if it's at Glen Helen, your 450 will easily get to the first turn before his slow bike, and now he's gonna have to pass you. Yeah. You can just keep yeah. doing. You could do this up the hills. You can J- Jason Anderson on Jet Lawrence. Whatever it takes. <laughs> okay. It's a race. Right. You so now you're win, back, right? Now you're back on my side. Well, this is different. Yeah, if you're taking off from the same. Yeah. Start and it's at Glen that's called, Helen. That's what races are. Yes, generally. then I think you will win uh, two of the three. Two of three. Yeah. Thank you. I, w- I, I do, do too. I did a Twitter poll and the 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 majority thought that I wouldn't beat them on anything. Yeah, I mean, I don't. I kind of look. I'm the don't only think one, they're that wrong. I'm. Though. I'm. It's gonna be close. I'm putting myself up to be mocked. Who's look, super I, mini? Yamaha's giving us one. Stock super mini. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I don't like I don't like Chris's chances I mean, at Glen Helen. I think he needs to choose a new track. He wants to do Mesquite. I think it needs to be technical, and ruddy. Tighter, yes. Yes, tighter, and then he smokes you. Yeah. All right. Well, stay tuned for this video, everybody. Uh, thanks to the folks at Michelin for coming on board with us. Uh, they don't make Goldwing tires. I said that last week. I was mistaken. I do not know Michelin's line of tires Street enough. Line. Yes. <laughs> cruisers, they got it. They got cruisers. They got sport bikes. They're yeah. all good on that. But the Goldwings, they don't. So just for the people who are wondering. Thanks hey, to Michelin. Are you sure you got that correct? Yeah. If they would have cruisers and all kinds of stuff, why wouldn't they cruisers have a Goldwing tire? Just, it's a whole thing. Tire. Really? It's a whole different. thing. <laughs> it's different. <laughs> um, it's different. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks <laughs> to the folks at Michelin for I'm coming on board. Sus.
Uh, no, no. Uh, <laughs> I will get a one, Mr. Richardson, to yeah, call you tomorrow. I need him to call like, me. Yeah, okay. I, w- I would love for him to call me. Okay. They don't have a tire for a Honda Goldwing. No. That's what you're telling me. No. Okay. All right. That's I'm enough s- about Michelin. We're coming back. <laughs> I'm uh, coming Google back it. after I'm this. Suspect. Trevor Clayton, <laughs> Paul Parabinos. We'll be right back after this, everybody. Thanks Ti- for listening. Tire company. Let's not make a tire for a I very see. popular McAdoo. motorcycle. Let's just not do it. I seen McAdoo. Torn. What? You seen his impaler? His Bobby Dangler. Well. You seen his PhD? His WMD. Oh, look, fellas. You seen his friendly weapon? His sticky grenade. His ground squirrel? Yeah, I seen his ground squirrel. You seen McAdoo? Middle stump? You've seen his custard slinger. At motorsport.com, our ride started in 1999 with a commitment to making your next ride your best ride. We take pride in having a huge selection of gear, accessories, and OEM parts for moto, street, off-road, ATV, and UTV. Riding is what connects us and makes us a family. From the track to the trail, tarmac to open roads, we're all connected because we ride. And that's what motorsport.com is all about. We've got your back. Our unrivaled and dedicated team of gearheads are willing to go that extra mile. No gimmicks. Just high quality parts, the best customer service in the industry, and free shipping on all orders over $79. Our passion at motorsport.com is to ensure your next ride is your best ride. This is our invitation to you from riders for riders. Visit us at motorsport.com. You likely know Racetech as the suspension and engine tuner of choice for the world's fastest privateers. But what you may not know is behind the scenes, Racetech is the trusted source for many OEMs and factory teams throughout the motorcycle industry. For nearly 40 years, Racetech has been producing high performance suspension and engine components and services right here in the USA. Racetech doesn't just specialize in motocross, in fact, they have many off road, hill climb, flat track, road racing, and supermoto championships on the mantle as well. Not a racer but want to smooth out the ride on the street or add some performance to your Harley? Racetech offers a full line of suspension solutions including industry leading, built to order, G3S custom shops. All Racetech products are 100% guaranteed to exceed your highest expectations. Don't wait. Experience the gold valve advantage today by logging on to Racetech.com. Don't forget to mention Pulp MX when ordering for a discount. Established in 1989, Eric Phipps had the idea to manufacture factory-styled products for the everyday rider. Working out of his garage, Eric quickly gained a reputation for producing quality products and having great customer service. In just a few short years, the factory team started calling, looking for products as well. And as the saying goes, the rest is history. History. Fast forward to 2024, and they are on their 35th year of producing high-quality products while still providing exceptional customer service. While they are no longer working out of a small garage, they are still producing the finest products available. Teams like HRC HRC Honda, Honda, Star Star Racing Racing Yamaha, 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 HEP Suzuki, Suzuki, Phoenix Honda, Honda, Barrick Suzuki, 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 AJE Motorsports, Motorsports, Solitaire Solitaire Yamaha, 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 and countless privateers still rely on the same quality products that are available to you too. Products like their Pro Launch Star Device, Radiator Braces, Skid Plates, Clutch Perches, and tons more continue to be a staple in the Pro Pits and Amateur scene as well. Check all they have to offer for your ride at worksconnection.com. Use the code PULPMX20 to save 20% off your order. With over 80 years experience manufacturing power sports pistons right here in the USA, WiseCo has evolved into a full range of performance components for dirt bikes and other power sports machines. Whether you ride a two-stroke or a four-stroke, WiseCo has a variety of pistons from reliable forged replacements to the performance-focused Racer Elite Series. WiseCo offers race-proven components for the rest of your engine, too. 
From garage body engine rebuild kits, clutch and valve train components, USA made racer elite connecting rods, and their CB4 thermal protection line. Wiseco is proud to be a technical partner with Factory Honda HRC for the 2023 Supercross and Motocross. Driving professional level product development that gets passed down to you. Visit your favorite online or local dealer or wiseco.com to find products for your machine. It's time to elevate your life. At LiftedTrucksForSale.com, we put you in the driver's seat of your dream truck today. LiftedTrucksForSale.com is your one-stop shop for brand new custom trucks from every major manufacturer. Full factory warranty, available financing, and a hassle-free ownership experience. What are you waiting for? Visit LiftedTrucksForSale.com today. Factory Chassis Parts, established in 2018, is the home of the original high-performance FCP racing engine mount kit, designed to improve traction, handling, cornering, and feel. Used by top-level racers and race teams worldwide, including Phoenix Honda, Justin Starling, the FNH MXGP Kawasaki team, Rock River Yamaha, and many more. CNC machine parts out of high-quality aluminum and titanium. They are easy to install and bring drastic improvements right away. Stop by fcpracing.com to learn more and order today. Maxima Racing Oils was created for world-class racers who challenge the limits of possibility. Their demands on equipment drive us to look beyond conventional ideas and to exceed industry standards. It's in our DNA to identify problems, formulate solutions, and execute at the highest levels of competition. Case in point, the championship-winning Factory Kawasaki Race Team, longtime Maxima partners who extensively use Maxima throughout the bike. Maxima's USA-made products exceed JSO requirements and can be used in all motorcycle brands. Kawasaki, Honda, Yamaha, Suzuki, KTM, Husqvarna, and more. Maxima Racing Oils. Experience the difference. Visit MaximaUSA.com for more information. I'm Cooper Webb, and I choose OGO. I'm Christian Craig. I'm Dean Wilson. I'm Aaron Plessinger. I'm Darren Martin. I'm Nate Thrasher. I'm Shane McElrath. I'm Hunter Lawrence. My name's Jet Lawrence. I'm Jordan Smith. I'm Talon Hawkins. Stargate Hampshire. I'm Hayden Deegan. I'm Colt Nichols. And I choose OGO. And I choose OGO. And I choose OGO. I'm Tom Dial, I choose OGO. And I choose OGO. And I choose OGO. I'm Jiren Ferrangi. And I choose OGO. In 1990, my dad, Jamie Gregg, started Guts Racing. Guts stands for Gregg's Ultra Trick Seats, because I was just a little kid that wanted a trick seat. And if you're out there looking for a trick seat, go to GutsRacing.com, your local dealer, or Motosport, and place your order. Support the people that support Pulp MX. You can use Pulp 2024 for 20% off at GutsRacing.com. FMF Racing is proud to celebrate over 45 years of fun, building every FMF exhaust right here in the USA. Owner and founder Don Emler may have started FMF Racing in his garage 45 years ago, but Don is still hands-on in our 100,000 square foot state-of-the-art manufacturing facility in Southern California. FMF's goal? Design and manufacture the world's best performance exhaust, 100% in the USA under one roof. FMF is a proud sponsor of the Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship for over 25 years. Hi, it's Tomax Superfan Dylan here. The only thing I love more than seeing Eli win... Whoa, wait, Dylan. Sorry to cut you off like Steve does his callers and guests, but a lot has changed. Similar to your favorite rider being on a new team, the new Michelin Starcross 6 tire range provides significantly improved performance and durability. Designed to win. The new Michelin Starcross 6 tire range offers up to 16% more traction when new and up to 19% more traction when worn in comparison to the previous generation. This means consumers will not only benefit from improved performance on their first few rides, but that this performance increase will continue throughout the extended life of the tire. 
Michelin is a legendary innovator in motorcycle tire technology, and thanks to Michelin Silica technology, the Michelin Starcross 6 tire range provides up to 11% more durability than the previous generation. This means consumers will enjoy the significantly improved performance throughout the increased life of the tire. Take it from me as I too have to buy my own tires, this added value is great news. The new Michelin Starcross 6 tire range is available in six versions, specifically sand, mud, medium soft, medium hard, and hard versions, with the naming designation corresponding to the type of terrains and conditions where the tires were designed to win. Another innovation is the Michelin adaptive design, with specific positioning of the tread blocks in three zones, central, intermediate, and lateral zones, with the single goal to offer exceptional grip for the front tire and exceptional grip, traction, and longevity for the rear. To learn more about the new Michelin Starcross 6 tire line, and all the quality products that Michelin offers for motorcycle segments that Steve cares nothing about, visit michelinman.com slash motorcycle. And then visit your local dealer or online retailer to choose Michelin product to maximize your riding experiences. Also, too, make sure to follow at Michelin Motorcycle on Instagram and Facebook. Attention riders, welcome aboard the all-new Atlas Vision. We hope you enjoy the added mobility, quicker flight time, and additional views. Please follow along as we outline the safety features of this revolutionary device. The first thing you will notice is the added headroom. The fore and aft positions no longer come with annoying restrictions, so feel free to move about the cabin. Quicker flight times can be achieved by unmatched comforts and unencumbered movements. Yes, we're built for speed and comfort. And now available to all customers is a 360 panoramic view. Go ahead and look around the cabin. These new angles are available at no additional charge. Located on the underside of the frame is the gold standard of impact absorption, D3O. In the event we accidentally take a trip to Indonesia, we suggest that you remain with your neck in the underextended position and allow this proven material to do its job by reducing the forces over 50% better than ever before. Although the Atlas Vision will not be noticeable, it will be there when you need it. If you are riding with a child or someone who requires assistance, secure your vision first and then assist the other person with a prodigy, type, or brawl. We ask that you keep your brace on until your moto is finished. We remind you that Atlas makes flexible neck protection. Tampering with, disabling, or destroying the product is prohibited by the limited lifetime warranty. You will find this and all other safety information in the user manual located online at atlasbrace.com. At this time, we ask that you remain standing with throttles in the wide open position with your elbows up and hips fully unlocked. Whatever that means. On behalf of the captain and entire crew, thank you for flying Atlas Vision. Enjoy the views. From beginners to seasoned vets, race teams, project builds, and magazine tests, Decal Works' mission is to cater to those who love to ride, upholding the true definition of quality, service, and knowledge. Visit decalmx.com and use promo code PULPMX23 to get 20% off your custom graphics. Decal Works, number one for many reasons. At motorsport.com, our ride started in 1999 with a commitment to making your next ride your best ride. We take pride in having a huge selection of gear, accessories, and OEM parts for moto, street, off-road, ATV, and UTV. Riding is what connects us and makes us a family. From the track to the trail, tarmac to open roads, we're all connected because we ride. And that's what motorsport.com is all about. We've got your back. Our unrivaled and dedicated team of gearheads are willing to go that extra mile. No gimmicks, just high quality parts, the best customer service in the industry, and free shipping on all orders over $79. Our passion at motorsport.com is to ensure your next ride is your best ride. This is our invitation to you, from riders for riders. Visit us at motorsport.com. Maxima Racing Oils was created for world-class racers who challenge the limits of possibility. Their demands on equipment drive us to look beyond conventional ideas and to exceed industry standards. It's in our DNA to identify problems, formulate solutions, and execute at the highest levels of competition. Case in point, the championship-winning factory Kawasaki race team 
longtime Maxima partners who extensively use Maxima throughout the bike. Maxima's USA-made products exceed JSO requirements and can be used in all motorcycle brands. Kawasaki, Honda, Yamaha, Suzuki, KTM, Husqvarna, and more. Maxima Racing Oils. Experience the difference. Visit MaximaUSA.com for more information. It's time to elevate your life. At LiftedTrucksForSale.com, we put you in the driver's seat of your dream truck today. LiftedTrucksForSale.com is your one-stop shop for brand new custom trucks from every major manufacturer. Full factory warranty, available financing, and a hassle-free ownership experience. What are you waiting for? Visit LiftedTrucksForSale.com today. Hi, it's Tomax Superfan Dylan here. The only thing I love more than seeing Eli win... Whoa, wait, Dylan. Sorry to cut you off like Steve does his callers and guests, but a lot has changed. Similar to your favorite rider being on a new team, the new Michelin Starcross 6 tire range provides significantly improved performance and durability. Designed to win. The new Michelin Starcross 6 tire range offers up to 16% more traction when new and up to 19% more traction when worn in comparison to the previous generation. This means consumers will not only benefit from improved performance on their first few rides, but that this performance increase will continue throughout the extended life of the tire. Michelin is a legendary innovator in motorcycle tire technology, and thanks to Michelin Silica technology, the Michelin Starcross 6 tire range provides up to 11% more durability than the previous generation. This means consumers will enjoy the significantly improved performance throughout the increased life of the tire. Take it from me as I too have to buy my own tires, this added value is great news. The new Michelin Starcross 6 tire range is available in six versions, specifically sand, mud, medium soft, medium hard, and hard versions, with the naming designation corresponding to the type of terrains and conditions where the tires were designed to win. Another innovation is the Michelin adaptive design, with specific positioning of the tread blocks in three zones, central, intermediate, and lateral zones, with the single goal to offer exceptional grip for the front tire and exceptional grip, traction, and longevity for the rear. To learn more about the new Michelin Starcross 6 tire line and all the quality products that Michelin offers for motorcycle segments that Steve cares nothing about, visit michelinman.com slash motorcycle. And then visit your local dealer or online retailer to choose Michelin product to maximize your riding experiences. Also, too, make sure to follow at Michelin Motorcycle on Instagram and Facebook. Established in 1989, Eric Phipps had the idea to manufacture factory-styled products for the everyday rider. Working out of his garage, Eric quickly gained a reputation for producing quality products and having great customer service. In just a few short years, the factory team started calling looking for products as well. And as the saying goes, the rest is history. history. Fast forward to 2024 and they are on their 35th year of producing high quality products while still providing exceptional customer service. While they are no longer working out of a small garage, they are still producing the finest products available. Teams like HRC, HRC Honda, Honda, Star Racing Star Yamaha, Racing Yamaha HEP, HEP Suzuki, Suzuki, Phoenix Honda, Honda Barx Suzuki, Suzuki, AJE Motorsports, Motorsports Solitaire, Solitaire Yamaha, Yamaha, and countless privateers still rely on the same quality products that are available to you too. Products like their Pro Launch Star device, radiator braces, skid plates, clutch perches, and tons more continue to be a staple in the pro pits and amateur scene as well. Check all they have to offer for your ride at worksconnection.com. Use the code PULPMX20 to save 20% off your order. FMF Racing is proud to celebrate over 45 years of fun. Building every FMF exhaust right here in the USA. Owner and founder Don Emler may have started FMF Racing in his garage 45 years ago, but Don is still hands-on in our 100,000 square foot state-of-the-art manufacturing facility in Southern California. FMF's goal? Design and manufacture the world's best performance exhausts, 100% in the USA under one roof. FMF is a proud sponsor of the Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship for over 25 years. I'm 
Cooper Webb, and I choose OGO. I'm Christian Craig. I'm Dean Wilson. I'm Aaron Plessinger. I'm Derry Martin. I'm Nate Thrasher. I'm Shane McElrath. I'm Hunter Lawrence. My name's Jet Lawrence. I'm Jordan Smith. I'm Talon Hawkins. Stargate Hampshire. I'm Hayden Deegan. I'm Colt Nichols, and I choose OGO. And I choose OGO. And I choose OGO. I'm Tom Diallo, I choose OGO. And I choose OGO. And I choose OGO. I'm Jen Ferrangi, and I choose OGO. You likely know Racetech as the suspension and engine tuner of choice for the world's fastest privateers. But what you may not know is behind the scenes, Racetech is the trusted source for many OEMs and factory teams throughout the motorcycle industry. For nearly 40 years, Racetech has been producing high performance suspension and engine components and services right here in the USA. Racetech doesn't just specialize in motocross, in fact, they have many off road, hill climb, flat track, road racing, and supermoto championships on the mantle as well. Not a racer but want to smooth out the ride on the street or add some performance to your Harley? Racetech offers a full line of suspension solutions including industry leading, built to order, G3S custom shops. All Racetech products are 100% guaranteed to exceed your highest expectations. Don't wait. Experience the gold valve advantage today by logging on to Racetech.com. Don't forget to mention Pulp MX when ordering for a discount. Factory Chassis Parts, established in 2018, is the home of the original high-performance FCP racing engine mount kit, designed to improve traction, handling, cornering, and feel. Used by top-level racers and race teams worldwide, including Phoenix Honda, Justin Starling, the FNH MXGP Kawasaki team, Rock River Yamaha, and many more. CNC machined parts out of high-quality aluminum and titanium. They are easy to install and bring drastic improvements right away. Stop by FCPRacing.com to learn more and order today. With over 80 years experience manufacturing power sports pistons right here in the USA, WiseCo has evolved into a full range of performance components for dirt bikes and other power sports machines. Whether you ride a two-stroke or a four-stroke, WiseCo has a variety of pistons from reliable forged replacements to the performance-focused Racer Elite Series. WiseCo offers race-proven components for the rest of your engine, too. From garage buddy engine rebuild kits, clutch and valve train components, USA made Racer Elite connecting rods, and their CB4 thermal protection line. WiseCo is proud to be a technical partner with Factory Honda HRC for the 2023 Supercross and Motocross. Driving professional level product development that gets passed down to you. Visit your favorite online or local dealer or wiseco.com to find products for your machine. From beginners to seasoned vets, race teams, project builds, and magazine tests, Decal Works' mission is to cater to those who love to ride, upholding the true definition of quality, service, and knowledge. Visit decalmx.com and use promo code PULPMX23 to get 20% off your custom graphics. Decal Works, number one for many reasons. In 1990, my dad, Jamie Gregg, started Guts Racing. Guts stands for Gregg's Ultra Trick Seats because I was just a little kid that wanted a trick seat. And if you're out there looking for a trick seat, Go to GutsRacing.com, your local dealer, or Motosport and place your order. Support the people that support Pulp MX. You can use Pulp 2024 for 20% off at GutsRacing.com. Attention riders, welcome aboard the all-new Atlas Vision. We hope you enjoy the added mobility, quicker flight time, and additional views. Please follow along as we outline the safety features of this revolutionary device. The first thing you will notice is the added headroom. The fore and aft positions no longer come with annoying restrictions, so feel free to move about the cabin. Quicker flight times can be achieved by unmatched comforts and unencumbered movements. Yes, we're built for speed and comfort. 
and now available to all customers is a 360 panoramic view. Go ahead and look around the cabin. These new angles are available at no additional charge. Located on the underside of the frame is the gold standard of impact absorption, D3O. In the event we accidentally take a trip to Indonesia, we suggest that you remain with your neck in the underextended position and allow this proven material to do its job by reducing the forces over 50% better than ever before. Although the Atlas Vision will not be noticeable, it will be there when you need it. If you are riding with a child or someone who requires assistance, secure your vision first and then assist the other person with a prodigy, type, or brawl. We ask that you keep your brace on until your moto is finished. We remind you that Atlas makes flexible neck protection. Tampering with, disabling, or destroying the product is prohibited by the limited lifetime warranty. You will find this and all other safety information in the user manual located online at atlasbrace.com. At this time, we ask that you remain standing with throttles in a wide open position with your elbows up and hips fully unlocked. Whatever that means. On behalf of the captain and entire crew, thank you for flying Atlas Vision. Enjoy the views. Welcome back, everybody. Paul Mitchell, presented by Motorsport.com. Decal Works, Fly Racing. Thank you for uh, listening and watching. Thanks to Ricky Carmichael and uh, Steve Westfall so far on the show. Cameron McAdoo coming up here in a little bit. Lots to get into, including the X-Brand <coughs> Goggle Terra. So we've got Paul Parabinos, Trevor Reese, and Clayton Morello in studio. Uh, 7 o'clock hour brought to you by Off-Road Warehouse. The code is Pulpamex to save. Get your bike to the track with style and performance from Off-Road Warehouse. Please check out the latest in Jeep truck overland utv and racing products and they install everything they sell from suspension kits tires and wheels to steps bed accessories and more orw's got stores all across america and it's offroadwarehouse.com and use the code pulpamex to save thank you to those guys this is the uh orw butt patch that you see on uh phil's butt and jmar by the way jmar whoo glad he's okay Did that was smack. nasty dude yeah and if there's one guy that didn't need that i mean nobody needs that but if there's one guy coming off the arm injury at hangtown is J Mark. Uh, mm -hmm. So I feel I feel bad for the yeah, guy for sure. Guy. Yeah, absolutely. So seven o'clock mm -hmm. hour brought to you by ORW.com. Uh, all right, everybody, it's time for the X Brand Goggle Tariffs. Let's do this. It's time for the X Brand Goggle Tariffs. Let's do this. It's the X Brand Tariff segment. 15 second rapid fire QA. X Brand Goggles, the choice of champions everywhere, Clayton. <laughs> champions everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Freddie Norin, <laughs> Kyle Chisholm, yep. Josh Strang, yep. Ricky Russell, yep. all of them. All of them. Champions. Champions. Yeah. Uh, EKSPan.com. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Use the code PULPSHOW24. Speaking of Freddie Norin, how's that? Oh, LCQ. Oh, my Bro. God. <laughs> I, I texted you. I said we should invite Freddie's wife on the show just to see how she – Dealt, you, dealt with that last lap. I mean, I feel like that's normal Freddy. I don't know, man. He scared the shit out of me. Yeah, that's Fred. That's yeah. what he does. That's how I he lives. Oof, that's I wouldn't I don't want him to live like that. <laughs> I don't even know him very well and I don't but want him to live like that. How about like doing all that and then Jerry just goes ah off the track. I I I, know. I, I, I I love that he got in because he gave us so much effort and yeah. putting his life on the line. Well, to you get know, in. he saw clearly through the X brand. He saw God <laughs> right through the X brand. He goggles. definitely saw God. How much God. effort do you clear? Get? Yeah, the, oh, he the, saw God <laughs> clear as day. Lucid goggle, uh, really great goggle, fantastic. Quick, quick lens change system, yeah. Clayton. I mean, it just pops right off. Yeah, it's like fantastic colors. Yeah, I mean, a whole assortment of colors. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 Brand and brands. <laughs> yeah, it looks and a brand. lot like the A star. No, it and was, brands and and the FX star factory ride yeah. goggle. I mean, it's phenomenal. <laughs> so uh, please check that out. Uh, Xbrandgoggles.com. So Clayton, I didn't know you were sitting in. No, it's okay. So I didn't get questions for Don't you. Don't worry about it. These are questions submitted by Corey Moser. Are you familiar with him at all? Huh? No. All right, let's do this, Marks. We so, gave him another chance. Uh oh. Hmm. Okay. Yep. Yeah, we'll I thought he wasn't this, doing the questions. We'll yeah. see how this goes. Why? Who, we gave him another chance. Uh, yeah, why? Where'd he go? We, we, we weren't happy with some of the questions, so Roto's been doing them, and this makes Moser very upset yeah. and angry. And it's Moser's we, thing, huh? Yeah, and then we gave him another chance, but then he came through with a question that didn't have even – the question <laughs> he sent in was, as a former factory mechanic, Okay. And he forgot the rest of it. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a rough – Open for interpretation, yeah, that one. Yeah. Okay, let's do this one. All Marks. time. Steven, what butt patch should McAdoo run at the next race? I'm not taking credit for this, but I've seen it a bunch. Sackadoo. Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> it's good, right? It's pretty good. Yeah. I, I didn't make it up, but yeah, I saw it out there for sure. Well, okay. Oh. That's it's the over. end of it. It's <laughs> over. That's it. No more questions. Yeah. Mosier, you, he, he is blowing it. Pulled he the whole stack. Wow. <laughs> All right, Paul. 
Would you recommend running a crossbar or fat bar when putting your balls on the handlebars? <laughs> oh, wow. That's a great question. But I would imagine the fat bar would be more comfortable. More of a broader pad, softer. More nice. surface area. More yeah. surface area for yeah. your sack, yeah. Speaking of the fat bar, have you talked to the guy in the chair about the PC fat bar and all that? Like, is he coming around and been like, I've been wrong? <laughs> no. Uh -uh. Has, has, he, has he ever said, like, I, I made a mistake? Like, no. It's yeah. more like, these fucking kids, they all want the fucking fat bar. It's kind of like, that's kind of how it was. So no, <laughs> no admittance of, like, maybe they flex uh -uh. a bit better and they provide better comfort? No. Nope. None of that? No, no. Okay. All right. <laughs> all right. Trevor. A Manscaped sponsorship seems inevitable for McAdoo, but what other sponsorship might be coming after going balls out? <coughs> balls <coughs> out. OnlyFans? <sighs> Pete Mitch one. would never let him. Ha I think you get one logo on your visor at PC, so he's got to choose wisely here. Choose wisely. Yeah, OnlyFans has been done. We got to be. We can do something else. You're right. Uh. He should be on. Man, they should that's put him a good on that question. They actually, have you guys seen Naked Attraction? Do you know what Naked Attraction is? No. You've never seen that game show in Europe? You've what? never seen Naked Attraction? What Where they Naked and Afraid. The bottom low. No, head, it's not head, Naked and Afraid. Yes. Head below. Bottom up. Right, bottom so, up. So yeah. they put four, you know, either females or males, bachelors, whatever, okay. bachelorette, whatever, and they lift up the curtain, and it's just, <laughs> it's just berries and <laughs> sausages, or it's yeah. kitties, right? And you eliminate one based solely on that, and then you get down to three or whatever, and you keep, they keep raising the curtain until finally... One's completely naked, or two completely naked, and you pick one, and then the contestant has to get naked, and then they go on a date. Okay. Yeah, this is... This Europe. Is, yeah. 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 This I, is the TV you watch. I got is what it These is. are the you things that you find late I night mean, on TV in Europe. What about SC1 to shine the balls up? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there are. I mean, it's a maxima team. I mean, it would he, make him smell got, nice. He's got access to that already. Yeah. Yeah. So Give him some lube. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Steve. Can you think of a more revealing or embarrassing racing incident? If not, what takes second place? Uh, Davy's ass at yeah, Vegas. Davey's yeah, Davy's ass uh, was a big one. Uh, Scott Gear right broke on him, I think. Um, it was no fear. Was, was it, it no fear? Oh wait, Scott. no, maybe it was Scott. Scott. I'm sorry, no fear was gone. I think it was then. Scott because we bugged Knowles a lot about that one. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna guess, yeah, Knowles. Do you guys have any? Or most up, sorry. Do you guys have anything else? Well, I the most it. embarrassing thing you said? Yeah, revealing. Revealing or embarrassing? So, uh. Smash Cut 1992 Canadian National at Austin, Manitoba. It was my pro debut uh, in a national scene, and I fell in the first turn and ripped my jersey wide open from okay. the handlebar. So I, the rest of the moto, I just had the jersey flapping with my chest open, uh, and then I got lapped by rollerball. Mm. Um, but, um, I mean, that was just my chest showing, so I had red marks everything. It's not embarrassing. But, no, no, not really. But that, that happened to me mm. back in the day. I can't think of anything more embarrassing off the top of my head. Yep. But I will continue to think. Right. Okay. Paul, have you seen a rider <clears throat> finish a race with more jacked up handlebars than Deegan? That, yeah. That takes balls. Yeah. Have you ever seen Roman Fevra at that? What was that? Oh, uh, yeah. Majora, maybe? I don't know where it was. God dang it. What was that? It was like a mud race. It was the year he won the title, but he got up and finished with a bar that was bent worse than that. It was gnarly. Wow. Yeah. Trevor, if you had to pick another rider to have a balls out experience, <laughs> who would you pick and why? I don't know, man. Why that's that's a tough full. question. This, this is. Whose uh, dick it, and balls do you want to yeah, see? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. yeah. Mike yeah. sounds gay. <laughs> Phil Lawrence. Phil Ron, Lawrence. Ronnie Lachine. Okay. <laughs> Steve. Yep. Oh. As a I'm former factory cotton. mechanic. Yes, he did it again. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, Would you recommend uh, sticking with stock bearings or going aftermarket like all balls? <laughs> uh, yeah, all balls are great. Uh, I like where he's trying to go with this. It's funny. Paul. Yeah. Do you think the Shimoda hater rebranding has worked? Uh, you mean rebranded to, to, to realist? Real, yeah. I hope so. Yeah. I don't want him to think I hate him. It's not cool. Just because I disagree with a bunch of fucking people in a group text. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, Trevor, last one. A lot of debate amongst the wives of my buddies. Is McAdoo a grower or a shower? This is unbelievable. Man, what? you're act asking I to know. critique this Wiener tonight. <laughs> Looked like a fucking policeman's flashlight from the 1980s. I've got I'm no there. comment. Okay. Yeah. All right. Eight seconds. Good yeah. job on that. Thanks, Mark, I'm thanks sure, Mosier. I'm Appreciate sure Courtney's it. seen the picture. 
Yeah, yeah, she didn't really say anything. As someone who used to work in that field, did she? She never. She didn't do guys though. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So. What? Well, explain the know. field here, because we're. The she, hair removal she, she field. Yeah, yeah. yeah but people, there's confusion over here, maybe with our listeners too. Yeah. 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 I, have, I just have confusion at Mosier. That's the yeah, only confusion yeah, I have. Yeah, right no, I, I get it. We uh, do too a lot. Trust me. Appreciate there's it. There's such a thing as too much horn talk, and a fellow ought to be fucking aware of it. Uh, right. Actually, X Brand goggle tear uh, Great goggles. Uh, if you wear X Brand, you will win. Uh, fantastic. So, um, X Brand goggles, Clayton. Choice of champions. Thank you. Love that. Clayton's buying in. <laughs> Clayton's he's a good, buying he's in. A good he's, sport. He's a good sport. <laughs> but I should say 100% the official goggle of Pulp Mex Fantasy, the official goggle of uh, Moto, Moto 60 show as well. Pulp 30 code saves it 100%. So yeah, I'll throw that you. out there as well. Thank you. Uh, and I do want to talk about Renthal 100% and Maxima later in the show. We are going to get okay. to that about how business is, how things are going. So we'll, we sure. will get into that. We like uh, business. Cameron McAdoo coming right up here. Uh, by the way, speaking of OGO Power Sports, uh, I'm, I'm doing a limited sale. I got a limited run of... Carry-on bags embroidered with Pulp MX. We sold a few last week. I'm going to sell a few more. Uh, mm. Free T-shirt and free um, pair of socks when you order the bag online. So uh, I'm going to do that for the next couple of weeks. So go to shop on tab on pulpamex.com. We'll throw in socks. We'll throw in uh, a free T-shirt as well. So uh, Also, LCQ Challenge, Denver again. Uh, Josh Cartwright leads right now in the LCQ Challenge, and we're selling tickets. I believe we have a maximum prize to give away. Paul shut down our Renthal prize this year. Uh, <laughs> I, I did? Yes, you did. When, uh, we got. <laughs> when did I? When did I do? I that? don't know. You just said no. Oh, you probably got me at a. Yeah. If it's really all I said was no. Yeah, you said just no in a text. Yeah. Yeah, you probably got me at the wrong time. Yeah. Uh, so, but we are giving away prizes uh, <laughs> away as well as a twenty twenty four. Sometimes that happens. Yeah, it happens. <laughs> what are you gonna do? I should have tried the next day. I guess you probably should have. Yeah. Uh, twenty twenty four YZ four fifty giveaway. Uh, so thirty bucks. All the money goes to the privateers, man. So look on pulpamex dot com to do that. We're doing it again. What did we get last year, Marks? 160? 140? Yeah, it was uh, 150, <clears throat> and then 140 was uh, after fees and stuff. Yeah. So. I've yeah. been meaning to pick so pick your brain about that. We've been talking about doing something similar for Desnations. Yeah, they are going to do it, and they want you to do it. Yeah. I've yeah. already talked to everybody. Yeah, we need to raise money. They want you to do it on the website. Yeah, on the Raise It for you. Are you going to do that? Yeah, yeah, we're going to. Oh, we're, okay. Uh, Christina was meeting with Yamaha about yeah. it. We're and trying to I, get a bike. I, I committed Marks. Yeah, to, I was going to talk to Marks about right. the Come, randomizer and all the kind no, of legality. I already, legality told, them, I already told them that Marks will do it. Come again? Oh. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, I'll, make, gonna, it, I'll uh, make it easy for you, Marks. You're mm. going to volunteer for Team USA for the website. Okay. You, you can come to England with me. Congratulations, Is that Marks. what I get out of this? What? I get to go to England? Oh, do you, do you, what, do you hate your country? <laughs> uh, that, what does that have to do with going to England? Well, if you don't do this work, you hate your country. That's not true at all. I That's mean, what clearly. they say about the writers. I don't yep. Know. <laughs> yeah, if you, if you decline If you don't go, you hate your country. Yep. So, yeah, Marks, Team USA needs uh, your you. back end. Weird. Needs your back end. Yeah, that's what a lot of people say. And, uh, <laughs> and, and so there will be a more of a, a push for Team USA. We hope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's think. that's yeah. kind of the plan. Yeah. I, I I still think we'll do the golf tournament, and maybe I'm actually looking at doing it after Ironman in Indiana this time because it didn't work. Well, I should, it obviously didn't work, but the SMX thing threw a whole nother yeah. wrench into things. People are obviously very focused about that. That's the most money you can win all year. So I don't know. We'll adjust. Right. Uh, well, I'm happy to help Team USA. Add a boy. There he is. I already told him you would. Uh, yeah, but this time it came from me. So. Okay. <laughs> Racers who win, pour Renegade in, Pop MX24, RenegadeRaceFuels.com. Some guy named Will Hahn. You guys heard of Will Hahn? I, I know Will. Oh, great friend of mine. Oh. Great dude. Well, he won a Short, but great dude. Yeah, he won a championship with Renegade Race Fuels, as did Justin Brayton, the Firepower Honda team, using Renegade Race Fuels now as well. Uh, they engineer the best products for bet racers because they are racers also. They provide you with a variety of world-class products at a fair price. Renegade is excited to be the race gas company to ship directly to your door. Go to RenegadeRaceFuel.com, select the products you want, enter the Pulpamex code, Pulpamex24, and they'll ship right to your door. Uh, Kiefer recommends SX4 or MX4. Either one works really well. So thanks to the folks at Renegade Race Fuel. Use that code, Pulpamex24, to get some great fuel uh, shipped right to you. So that's great. 702-586-7857. Give us a call. We still have some lines open. Paul Parabinos and uh, Trevor Reese and uh, Clayton Marilla all here talking Detroit and more. Um... McAdoo's coming on in eight minutes. I don't seven minutes. Now. What are we gonna talk about? I don't feel like we can <laughs> fill in seven minutes of two fifty East talk like I want to. Okay, so, so what we, should we talk? So we gotta about? wait. So we will uh, get to this call and then. Um, What's the? What? Oh, go ahead. Okay, no. No, you go taking on. the call? Yeah. What's up, Cody? <laughs> hey. What up? Uh, love you, show. Um, Thank you. Calling about your what was it? Two shows ago that um, you brought up. You don't like being called the big guy. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't like it. I don't. I like thought it. I was the only one. Oh, so, so you're with me on I, that? 
I am 100% with you. Um, Thank you. Pisses me off to no end. Yeah. So. Yeah, I feel like, you know, like... Uh, kind of like when somebody calls you Bud. I don't... Yeah. I'm not yeah, with you on that so much, but, I mean... I am. Thank you. I don't I don't like it, but it's not insulting, at least. Eh, big guy's just as insulting yeah. to Bud to me. It's like... No. Just call me, call me a guy, you know? Yeah, like, just, hey, hey, guy, hey, 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 man, hey, like anything like that, like... Hey, Steve. But, 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 yeah. but no, we're talking Sometimes about... Sometimes you don't like, know the guy's name. No, no, though. yeah, we're talking about when you don't know the guy's <clears> name. Like, yeah. Like, like yeah, somebody don't. squeezes by you in the press box, they're like, watch out, big guy! Like you get that? Oh yeah, oh, yeah I don't that, was, that was my what rant. Yeah. Like, right. What if he's dealing with like mental stuff and you just set him off? Exactly. And so then Donnie Roto was in here, and I said, you know, if if you have a big nose, you don't get called big nose. Hey, coming through, big nose. You don't get that, right? Big ears. But Donnie's like, literally the day before, Roto was like, I got called small fry, from a stranger. Mm -hmm. What? You know what's up, small fry? Mm -hmm. So like big and small, it's a it's a thing. Mm -hmm. So, uh, thanks, Cody. Thank you. I'm glad you're with me. Okay, see ya. All right, see ya. Yeah, just, you know. All right, next call. Uh, Aiden, what's up, man? Hey, how are you? Good, how are you? Yeah, not too bad. Hey, um, what's Osborne doing this year? He seems to be motoring down a fair bit. Oh, uh, are we going to see him at some nationals? Or? Uh, Zach oh. uh, he is so weird. Um, I think he's going to come back to the nationals for club, MX. I don't know if it's done. I'm not saying it's done. Uh, what Do you, you guys know anything? Mm -mm. You know anything? Nope. So you do know something? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like he's, <laughs> he he talked to a team in Canada. Uh, he was gonna talk to MX101 up there. I knew about that. Yeah, they 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 couldn't come to a deal. I think uh, he's been talking about going to Loretta's on his social media. That's bullshit. Um, I think he's coming back for the nationals. Yeah, for somebody. He um he did drop the little thinking emoji face underneath uh, one of the Australian national posts. Yeah. So I'm wondering. No, he's talked to Dak about riding for Dak for World Supercross and stuff, but I don't know if that's where he's going. I would lean Club MX Nationals America. On a 250 or 450? Right. That I don't know. And and listen, Zach's a good friend of mine. I have him on the Moto 60 show every Thursday. Yeah. The fucking guy just won't say it. He just won't, won't talk about it. He's so, great on there. Yeah, he is. Yeah. He's really good. So, uh, yeah, I think we see him, Aiden, but I don't have any... Like, I'm not confirming that. I just think we'd, we we would see him. No worries. Thank you. Nope, no problem. Thanks. Paul, am, am I in the general direction? Uh, yep, you yep. were warm. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Very warm. So it'll be nice <coughs> to see him back. I, I, and I don't know 250 or 450. Like, what? I almost think 250. What do you think? Pretty warm. Getting yeah. really, really warm. Very warm. Yeah. Because um, I could see 450. I mean, the guy's a 450 motocross champion, yeah. right? But, yeah. but, but then again... It's a serious class. So, Very serious. So, you know, there is, there is some of that. I'd like to see Zach go back. I think his back is better, right? Um, when he had a little back issue and stuff. So, uh, I don't know. He's riding too much to just yeah not be doing nothing. Right. He's riding with Joey a lot, right? They're working together. So, there's something going Both on. Both of them on a 250 outdoors? That'd be kind of cool. Yeah. It would be cool. It'd be yeah. rad. Yeah. 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 That'd, be That'd make that class yeah. more interesting for sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Uh, as we talked about earlier, I think Joey is a sneaky, sneaky underdog pick for this. Uh, we have a fantasy question for Clayton. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, boy. oh, boy. I was really high on Cade. Uh, what's yeah. up, BJ? Oh, yeah. What's up, BJ? Yo, um, yeah, I was just reaching out. I wanted. It seems like Clayton's really killing the fantasy <laughs> league this year. I was wondering what he's standing overall right now. Are you Are you doing well? Um, no, I, I usually well, try hit, to play hit like... Us, hit us with your overall points. Come on. Uh, I don't know what it is off the top of my head. I just scored yeah, 240. Get, access the site, pulpamexfantasy.com. Um, I know, but I don't... We always <laughs> get yelled at if we're on your phone. What's your so. username? Yep. Clayton99. <laughs> I, I don't think so. I haven't had a really good start to the season. I'm usually pretty like steady Eddie is okay. how I try to do it. Right. I never really win the, weekly the, the stuff. The bigger but. question I have for you, BJ, is like how are you know that... Because I couldn't tell you like how any of my friends are doing in fantasy, you know? Well, I thought I heard him say he scored 270 on the last show, but the I guess it was show. 240. Oh. No, yeah. it was, no, it was 217 and then 240. Oh, 270. Yeah, oh, I okay. used too much logic, I think. You're 20, <laughs> you're, Got it. You're 2108, 2108 overall. Yeah, I don't think that's that great. Oh, not bad. Yeah. I, actually, I'm beating you then. Oh, <laughs> hell yeah. <laughs> nice. Where are you at? Hey. Clayton, this is BJ Hart. I actually, I'm oh, not sure you remember me. Yeah, I, of course but, I do, BJ. Yeah, dude, it's been well, forever. I so uh, yeah, I bought your your old LEM when I was about four years old. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Uh, I hope you didn't take his K Clayson 100% uh, lead pipe lock. Yeah, I hope not. From last week. I did not, but my dad did. Oh. Uh. Tell Brian I'm sorry. 
Yeah, he only got, yeah. He no, no, he's me. not sorry. Cade should be sorry. Cade should be sorry, actually. Yeah. Fuck Cade. He's faster than those guys. What are we he doing? He, Cade's been riding well. He's better. What are we doing? <laughs> I don't know. Thanks, <laughs> thanks, BJ. Yeah. Hey, thanks, awesome hearing from you, Beach. Yeah, Thank you. yeah, you're killing it, Clayton. <laughs> thanks, bud. Oh, I called Bud. Clayton fan. I said oh, Bud. Oh, yeah, you uh, called him a Bud. Oh, I did Bud. There's nothing well, wrong with like, Bud. There's nothing wrong yeah. with Bud. Bullshit. Quiet, Paul. <laughs> I think you're the only one that is, like, upset nope. with that. Like, no. Yeah. I'm Team Paul. I'm Dino's the same. Dino hates it, too. Yeah, Trevor don't like it. Um. Oh, Works Connection. We're going to give away a poor launch start device. These are great. These are the best start launch devices in the uh, in the industry. Fantastic, guys. Works Connection. Pulp MX 20s. Code to save. Um, let's do an email. Mm-hmm. Contest, right? Instead of live. Contest at PulpamexShow.com. Contest at PulpamexShow.com. Uh, what email number, Clayton, gets this Pro Launch Start device? Because I know he'll say 125. I don't know what he'll say. But. One, he'll say 103. Yeah. Um, <laughs> 103, your number? No. Uh, amateur. Well, you, yeah. It was? Yeah. yeah. You got down to... 80, um, 82? Yeah, 80, like 84? 82. 82? Um, yeah. Wasn't your amateur number a three-digit two? Or you had a two-digit number? No, just, I was a 99. Can we just I was a big 99. This? Can we just work through this? That'd be cool. Quicker. Uh, well, pick get, a number. Yeah, pick yeah, a yeah. number. Yeah, let's go uh, 47. There we go. That's still not very good. Because I don't know. It'll be, be 47 in, in, in 20 minutes, but that's fine. Okay. No, is that no, bad or fine. good? That's fine. Pulp MX20 <laughs> is the code to save with the worst <laughs> connection. If you don't win this ProLaunch Start device that Factory Honda uses, I think they had at Anaheim, too, I think Eric told me 18 to 22. Was using a works connection. Wow! Starting device, so they're, they're crushing it. In one of the main yeah. events. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Almost like rental. Yeah, almost like rental. You guys swept the top three yeah. this week. Yes. In four uh, fifties. Yes. Yeah. Good job. Yeah, that was cool. Uh, so pro launch. I didn't start do th- anything, but yes. Pro launch start device. <coughs> uh, check it out. Code is uh the the code to save is, X twenty, but the email is forty seven. At contest at pulpamexshow.com. All right, next guest of the night, Cherbies, a world leader in accessory dirt bike plastics. Whether you're simply needing a new fender or whether you just want to personalize your bike, a Cherbies is there for you. At a Cherbiesusa.com, bringing you our guest of the night. I mean, this guy, he's dominated the Ricky conversation. He dominated the top of the show as well. Monster Energy Pro Circuits, Cameron McAdoo. What's up, buddy? How are you? I'm great. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> what are you Sounds laughing like at? I've been talking. I've been talked about on your guys' show by like by the goat for starters. You just said with Ricky. Yeah, yeah. Ricky was talking about me. Yeah, so I'm yeah. Better now. Uh, how many <laughs> like DMs? Two, how many two, DMs and messages did you have? Um, I don't know. I mean, obviously, as a supercross racer, just in general, like I, you have people reach out day to day. You know, like people want jerseys or whatever, and that those I get those and mm-hmm. whatnot. But you know, okay. So yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, is everything okay down there? Are we good? The guy was bleeding. Oh, I know. That's why I'm asking. Is everything okay? Um. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you guys saw I got in a first turn crash, and that was kind of not ideal. Like, no. I got stuck on the bike, and that got tweaked. But yeah, yeah, I'm pretty dialed. Okay. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> so we're just doing that. Great. Oh uh, no, I'm uh, just kidding. I know, I know. No. Yeah. I. Um. Yeah, I've had. Uh, my fair share of messages, um, dude. Some of the wildest, uh, I guess, content and photos <laughs> that, <laughs> that you know some dude from Europe has, and you know, asked for more of, and <laughs> just just because he wanted to make a meme out of it. You know, that was that was the reason why. So, you're, you're gonna be tr- in- you're gonna interesting. Be- interesting stuff. Dude, you're going to be trending on barstool sports or something, I predict, on like an outside the industry uh, sport. They're going to be like, look at this guy. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to get and it. I guess like my, my thing with the situation is like I I hope to be and I, I think that I'm like, you know, more of a kind of a straight edge guy. I, I don't, you know, I just say my deal and, you know, mm-hmm. I, I guess I don't really do a lot of choking around and like. You know, why couldn't have happened to, like, someone, I don't know, maybe even Dino. Like, <laughs> you know, like, he's yeah. he's all, he'd have so much fun with that. He's and, already shown his asshole, Cameron. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. But that's, I mean, he didn't even, this doesn't even scratch the surface. <laughs> Dude, it, it, so, but okay. I had no option but to embrace it. I have no option. No. You're absolutely right. And I'm, you've done a good job with that. You've done a great job with this, leaning into this, and, and you're right. That's it. The, you can't get mad about it. Listen, we talked about you 
grabbing seven points that could matter down the road, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so it would have been awesome if my our bikes weren't locked together. Yeah. Because that was, um, I'm not sure, on the broadcast you couldn't really see a whole lot of what's going on, but my bike was, like, locked in the Seth Hammaker's bike. Yeah. And um, we couldn't get them detached for over, I was completely lapped. I was at the back of the field with one lap down when I got back going. And it would have been, I think, pretty rad if I would have been able to pick my bike up. I, I probably would have been right around, like, fifth, sixth place is what I would have ended up on the night. Yeah. You know, considering yep. if I wasn't a lap down. Sure. Um, yeah. Which would have been a pretty pretty ballsy place. <laughs> <laughs> are, but, okay, so are you, are you okay down there? Because we saw blood. So are you, are you everything yeah. checks out? You're, you're, you're good? No, yeah, I'm, I'm good. I, I got a little scuff and whatnot but you know yeah um maddie takes good care of me (laughs) i was wondering like does he go commando under his pants like initially and then we saw your social post that underwear got ripped too yeah what do we did did, was it a handlebar in the right position and just as you flew through the air paul kind of thought it would catch your pants yeah yeah it was a handlebar so like when my bike got taken out from underneath me i went across the top of my bike yeah my handlebar is what caught it yeah. Damn. So that's what rental that's grips what are dangerous, it. man. And so immediately <laughs> you knew what was going on because you were standing up, kind of covering yourself, and you're like, I mean, was immediately. there? Yeah, was there a thought of like, I got to pull in and cha- get taped up, or I'm quitting, or anything, or just no, like just I got to go. Wait, what did you just say? Like, were you like, I got to thank you, I got to, I got to like uh, <laughs> uh, fit, the, fix the pants, or I got to go in the mechanics area, or anything like that. Or what at the end? <laughs> or quit? <laughs> no, man, he ain't I, thinking about that. He I, wants I'm points. Just, I'm, see, I'm see, the media. I'm asking. See, yeah. See, you know me, right? Yeah. No, you're right. Yeah. No, those. I. I. I never thought that it was a big decision. Obviously. Yeah. As we all know, but <laughs> big decision. Um, and I, you know, like I was in disbelief when I looked down and I knew what I was working with, and I was like, wow. I could, this can be like tucked back away. So I tried that. <laughs> yeah, didn't work, and I'm like, well, carry on. I got a job to do. Yeah, <laughs> let's figure out how to get this, get this ball rolling. I got a question. I got a question. I got a question. Did you get roosted like directly at any point? Like, imagine uh, if there was a I wall didn't. jump on no. this track. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't. Um, the three five three before the mechanics area was a tricky one uh, to navigate. I kind of had a double single back quite often because that wasn't ideal for me but um yeah, yeah. i i got my knee stuck in, in between our bikes and that was that was worse than, yeah yeah how's the knee do, uh, do, have you got any results on that yeah, are, we, are we good it's yeah we're good okay yeah i'll i'll be good right um, pretty banged up but i'll be okay so jaleek jaleek said after the main event you like rode by him and you're like hey Look at this, because he he didn't know. <laughs> Jalik said he didn't know you were a lap down. He thought you guys were battling for position. Yeah. He wasn't quite so, sure what was going on. Yeah. So I actually I almost messaged him, but I didn't. I've never we don't I've never really talked to him. Uh huh. But I'm sure someone will let him know. So I almost messaged him and was like, "Hey, dude, I'm sorry because I thought he was a lap down with me because when we crashed, I looked over and saw that he was down. Yeah, yeah. So I thought he was a lap down with me. And we were kind of, like, battling. Yeah. You know, he, like, ran, ran it in on me a couple of times. So I was like, uh-uh. So then, like, I passed him back, and I ended up finishing in front of him. But if I would have known he was in sixth place, like, I wouldn't have been battling him like that. Like, mm-hmm. You know, I would have definitely been more respectful of the leaders. I just thought he was a lot down with me. Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah, good to know. I think I think afterwards he wasn't – yeah, he wasn't saying, like, I don't know what the hell McAdoo was doing, but he was yeah, like – Yeah, no, he, totally. he was like, I think McAdoo was a lap down. I mm-hmm. wasn't quite sure, but we were battling. So, yeah. Um, yeah. When, when you're out there, like, it's cold. You can feel this. You know what's going on. Like, was it hard to focus on the race, or was it like you just forgot about it and just – because you were so caught up in the race? Um, I, I was pretty, like – involved in the race and honestly i knew kind of where i was at in my situation like i knew that the only people i was going to beat was who i could pass on myself and relapse again and just where i was at and how things were and what i was capable of doing was like you know 
Paul Mania, for a little bit and whatnot. Yep. Uh, I wasn't as locked in to the, you know, races as sometimes when you're, you know, I yep. guess charging forward at your full potential. But uh, I did, there was a couple times where I, like, hit the triple and I just looked down and I'm like, wait, what? Like, this, <laughs> like, I can't, I kind of can't believe this, you know, like, what? How did this turn into this? Mm. So and I, yeah, go ahead. Once, well, so when it first happened and I realized what was going on, and then I started trying to get my bike up, and our bikes were locked together, uh, Vial's bike was laying there, Ferry was, I think, laying under a couple bikes in the corner, <laughs> yeah. and we were, like, coming up on three quarters of the lap down. I was already thinking, okay, like, for sure they're going to have tape or something for me, because I was very sure they were red biking it. Like, mm-hmm. we... We couldn't even get our bikes up. They were just well, laying in the middle of the track, locked together. What was, was locked together? All over. What was locked together? Uh, what was the problem? I, I still don't know because <sighs> okay. What? How we got it unlocked was I grabbed the seat. I think the amateur grabbed the back wheel, and the fighter guy grabbed the front wheel, and then they just came apart. So. <laughs> oh, he, they needed to pull it up straight. Yeah. The hook foot peg was straight, hooked into something probably. I was like. Because I got right back up, and I'm just yanking on bikes. Just I'm like, we got to get going. Yeah. And I was yanking on bikes for probably 30 seconds before anyone else touched it. And, like, then I think we just needed to pick it up straight, you know? Wow. Um, <clears throat> Did it feel good at any point? Like, man, this is, like, some awesome vented gear. I'm so much cooler <laughs> down there. I'm not swampy. Yeah. Was there any positives uh, to it? Or was it just an inconvenience, like, seat jumping no. and stuff? Um, it was it was a significant to me. JT yeah. was saying on and you know there's a lot of custom gear out there. A lot of these companies do custom stuff for riders like Cam, and JT was like, I don't think that happens to a, a, a you know a customer pair of, of Fox pan, or Fox pants because these things Maybe. are such stretchy. They're so lightweight, hmm. you know, for all the right reasons for what a supercross racer needs. Um, and he's like, I don't think that happens to like a normal pair of pants. I don't know, Cam. I don't know if you know much about yeah what you're wearing. I, I mean, where our material's pretty close, I think, to a customer spec pant. Okay. But Fox does do extremely good at making our gear yeah. very, you know, fitted, very, very ventilated, mm-hmm. and um, like with extreme comfort in mind. And that's like it's very close to the customer spec gear too. And that's they do so well at that, you know. Yeah. So it is. Um, there's not a lot of extra material on a, on it, and you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but what are the chances something like that, I guess, really happens? You know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Hey, Cameron, I got a question for you. Uh, coming into this series, were you were you a hundred percent prepared, like ready to go? Um, no, I wasn't. I wasn't at all. Um, I I think kind of some people think I tried to bury it or something, but uh, I never really posted about it socially. But I I had a crash in beginning of December um, and I separated my collarbone off my sternum hmm. and oh. I had some pretty good bone bleeding on my scapula and um, just had some you know pretty good trauma in my shoulder so mm-hmm. I was off the bike for right around six weeks um, and then I got I got back on the bike like two and a half ish weeks before before coming to Detroit so so you can really to. use these next couple weeks then. You're you're probably glad to have a little bit of a break. These next few weeks are good for me for sure. Yeah. It was definitely, I was just going to say, like, it was encouraging to get a heat win. You know, yeah. that was, um, and usually, I guess, in my position and where I'm at in my career and, um, you know, my expectation in the class, I'm not like, yeah, for a heat win. It always mm-hmm. feels good. It's nice. It's great for a gate pick. And... It's good, but um, that one felt better than normal just because I was, you know, somewhat behind the eight ball coming in a bit, and I struggled in practice, um, like, just with myself, to be honest. I was struggling to gel, and um, I, I qualified really, really bad. I couldn't even put a lap together. So to go win the heat race, and kind of the way I did it was just a little bit straight up, you know? Yeah, it was nice. Sure. And, um, so yeah, like I was, I was kind of, I was pumped going into the main because I was like, wow, I felt fairly good in the heat race. Mm -hmm. I think we could do something good with this. And then, yeah, my main kind of 
went uh, went a different direction. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, um, at Cherubies USA, bringing you Cameron McAdoo on the show. Check out the latest styles and colors at acherbiesusa.com. Um, did you rewatch the start tonight at Pro Circuit? I mean, we were kind of breaking it down a little bit here. Look, it's a 90 turn. I get it. It's not, it's not it's, you know, it's kind of involves itself. It does look like Seth, your teammate, kind of kind of caused it a little bit. What's your take on that on that first turn me- melee? Um, well, I guess... For starters, the reason I was involved in it was because I think Hymas had like a handlebar on me, mm-hmm. at, like at most. And as soon as he got out of the rut, he went to, um, I guess, to guard the inside for sure. Yep. He he went left pretty quick, and um, you know, to just make sure that yeah, yeah he. So I, I I hooked into the back, like the side of his bike, and I. On my bars, and I kind of got squirrely, and I had to check up and slow up. Yep. So I was next to the whole thing, and um, it looked like just what happened was everyone's fighting for so much position coming into, like you said, that 90 first turn. Those are always, um, they're not the best. No, they're sketchy. <laughs> I think yeah. that they could definitely be, um, I don't know, eliminated or changed up a little bit. I don't know. But. I don't also don't like to be the guy who's like all has all the reasons why everything's terrible, but has no real answers. So, <laughs> yep, yep. Um, so there's a lot of that. So yeah. Anyway, I just think that Vial and uh, Seth and all those guys kind of just got a little bit bunched up. And what it looked like happened was that Seth handlebar got caught on the top of Vial's seat, which if you ride dirt bikes and you've ever had your handlebar like that, it just yanks you that way mm-hmm. like immediately. So Seth just went straight right, like right into the bike like, because it pulls his handlebar pretty much out of his hand. Um, yeah, and then out of the corner of my eye, here it came. Yeah, Dude. four bikes and bodies, <laughs> and that was it was wild. But I think the luckily the thing was that it was a fairly slow first. Like it, we didn't have much speed. The start mm-hmm. straight was pretty short, so um, it was. It felt like a slower crash, I guess, in my in my position or, or the portion of it that I was involved in. Right. Um, it was just like I kind of just got slammed down, and I, you know. But um, I would say if you ask Bial or maybe Ferry, they would say completely different because yeah, they flew a lot longer than I did. So yeah, yeah, it was nasty yeah, one think, for sure. You know. Yeah, those are those are hard to like, you know, say. Oh, it was this guy's fault or. I think it was very incidental. I don't think. Yeah. Yep. No. It, it's so. a, it's a, it is a it is a sense of that uh, start design, the width of the stadium into a ninety. Definitely. I mean, I've seen enough supercrosses yeah. in my life, and so has Nick Way and everybody else that that uh, you're out there. We got a question from an FMIP. There was a lot of talk about the tacky, tacky conditions and challenging ruts in Detroit, and I'm sure that you, like many others, made adjustments to your bike setup throughout the day. Having said that, were you happy with your sag? during the main event <laughs> <laughs> oh wow we got some good ones C- coming in um funny because i actually um made a change to my set oh, okay. <laughs> actually going into the night show and okay. I, I made a i made a we made a big bike change going into the night show from practice and it was kind of i kind of put it in the team's hands i was like i i you know i was a little bit searching all day and mm-hmm. i told them hey like obviously where I'm at physically right now. Um, I just, i whatever you guys see, I want you guys to make a decision and, um, mm-hmm. make kind of a game time decision. And so we made a, a big bike change. And w- one of the part, parts of it was a uh, different sag number. So I was okay. actually oh. very happy with it because my heat race was the best I rode. So yeah, there we go. My sag was dialed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Chris is on one here. Chris, uh, what's your question for Cameron McAdoo? Cam, hey, um, are you are you cool talking about this with fans? Like, you, you're not like it's cool for me to ask you a question about uh, your race, or the situation. About the I mean, race. yeah, I mean, ideally about like actually the race, you know, like um, <laughs> or, or racing in general. <laughs> this is a lot, the only thing I've talked about for I guess the last couple of days is um, the incident on on uh, on the night, but. Ask whatever. 
Uh, well, first, I want to say I never thought I'd be on hold for uh, 30 minutes waiting to talk to an, to another man about his balls. But uh, I I just wanted to relate a little bit to you and just give you give you kudos. Steve kind of answered one of my other questions, but some of us aren't blessed with a uh, a sponsorship or whatever, you know. So some of us are rocking some old underwear at work, and there's situations, you know, where I'm at work, and I might have a you know similar problem where. They drop out of a hole, not not a Gary Bailey situation where they're completely exposed, but, you know, out of a hole in the underwear within the pants. And it freezes me in my track. I'm like, absolutely, absolutely not. I'm stopping in my track. So I just want to say I can't even imagine Hold on. So riding uh, a I'm right sorry, I want to interrupt event. you quick. Hold on. I interrupt you. So you, you have that happen to you at work often? <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying, man, when, not all, you know, like, sometimes you got to rock some underwear with, with a hole in it. And okay. And you do, and you, yeah. if you bend oh, over, yeah. you know, it's going to, it's going to yeah. happen. So. Jeez. But not, like I said, not fully exposed, you know, like kind of in the, in the pants. But. Yeah. Um, but I'm freezing in my tracks when it comes to that. It's like, I'm not even moving and I'm not on a, I'm not on a dirt bike. I'm, you know, like, you know, so I can't even imagine. So. Um, I guess my uh, my question though is uh, what was uh, what was Mitch's reaction? What did, how did Mitch handle it? Uh, Mitch won the race. He wasn't stressed about my what I had going on with my balls. <laughs> exactly. and, uh, to be honest, he he uh, he's there to win. So that was he had a great night, and the team had a great night. So that was the uh, was the focal point there. They were they were stoked, and I'm I'm stoked for them for winning. So Th- thanks, Chris. So, yeah, thanks, man. Was, yeah, yeah, thank you. Uh, hey, hey you know, there is there is an opportunity to turn this into a positive, uh, Cam. Um, it is a positive, anyways. You you got seven points, all that. Do you still have the pants? You could like auction them off, <laughs> donate the money to charity. I ha- I think I think Fox has them. Oh. I don't really take my gear home. Okay, but yep, yep. someone someone actually DM me, and I was like, that's kind of a good idea. Is the, like you should auction those pants off, 100%. and then give give like the proceeds or some of the proceeds to. Um, like testicular cancer research, and I was like, I'm all about stuff like that. Yeah. But I'm like, I'm almost. I, I don't want to beat a dead horse with it. Kind of. Um, I think it's funny. Like it, it is funny what happened. Um, you guys would. I'm sure you guys have sat, you know, in the show and thrown around pictures because you guys all have access to photographers who probably have sent pictures of yep. what the public hasn't seen. Mm-hmm. Um, but. If you guys have been able to sit with Maddie and I for the last couple of days and see how many times we have just like almost crying, laughing about some of the photos so, that photographers have sent us and yeah, yeah. Vid- videos that are just right. the most bizarre thing that you never imagined would ever happen to you. So it, it, we've we've gotten we've gotten a kick out of it, and honestly, it's probably the best thing because I've never been able to like laugh about a race that i got 15 in uh-huh well i'm able to we were talking afterwards and we were like what's funny is this is crazy and insane it might not even make cameron mcadoo's top five craziest <laughs> moments on the racetrack like you've had some highlights uh you know battling guys yeah. crashing we're like this may be not even be in mcadoo's top five this you know which is says a lot about the things you've done in your career like there's been some memorable moments that was that's another thing that my wife maddie and i have been like we've talked about a couple times like geez like why why does all the things that i'm you know have kind of gone viral for or (laughs) gotten i mean i'm not gonna say gotten famous for but you know um yeah gained a lot more recognition for like all these things you know that atlanta 2021 that's that's obviously probably the main one. Mm-hmm. Um, and then this now, like, gosh, it's, I just, like, I want to just go win, like, races and, and people will be stoked <laughs> just, on that. Yeah. Or, or you know, like, stoke up some kids that, you know, came and hung out at the truck and I'm, I'm, I made them feel good. Yeah. You know, that's, that's what I want. <laughs> or even, like, ba- or the, the battles with Jet, you know, that got you, his fans all upset, that stuff, right? Like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, all that yeah. stuff. Uh, there, 
It's a lot of stuff with Cameron McAdoo for sure <laughs> over the yeah, years. Yeah, I had I had I had the fair share of um, Jets fans upset with me for yeah, which for understandable. Just like, I mean, they're, they're they they love their guy and and I I race I race hard and I want to win. Yeah, no matter who you are. No, absolutely. And like we said too, these seven points could really you know, come uh, uh, in your favor at the end of the year, which is it's, it's the main thing, is racing hard as you did the lap down and getting seven points. So that's Totally, positive. especially in our, yep. our, in our, you know, regional championship, we have, yep. I think, eight, nine, race, nine races, yep. or, you know. Um, so it's like, it sounds cliche, but every point counts. Yeah. It really does. No, absolutely. Um, well, I'm glad you're all right. Like, I was wondering about that, like the roost or the blood and, and all of that. Like, I was, yeah, I'm glad you're all right down there. Everything's good. Yep. So, all's good. That part's good. Uh, thanks for your time tonight, Cam. A uh, good job. Nice comeback. It's, it's just, <laughs> it's something we're going to be talking about for a while. We really are. It's, yeah. It's, 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 yeah. Uh, and, until Seattle next weekend when, like, someone takes someone out and then, like, that's the next thing. So yeah. that's all I got to do is deal with it for seven days. <laughs> Glendale, you mean, not that's Seattle, fine. Glendale. Uh, well, well, Seattle, they're racing, right? Or no, sorry, not Seattle. Well, yeah, what yeah, am Glendale. I talking about? Glendale. I don't know. I don't know what I'm it's... not in Seattle. What am I? Yeah. I don't, I don't anyway. Know. You're concussed. I'm not, I'm not yeah. racing. So yeah. I you, got, you got three weeks <laughs> off. Uh, and, uh, yeah, we'll see you in Dallas. And uh, let's hope it's a more uneventful race for you. It ends up at the top step. That That's the way to go. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, thank you, man. <laughs> Thanks right. for the time. Good chat, guys. All right, see ya. That's uh, Cameron Mack and everybody brought you by the Cherubies USA. Look like a tube of tennis balls hanging there, a four-patch. <laughs> Marks is really getting these drops. Yeah. He's re really loving this. Uh, you said bring my A game, and that's what I do. Yep, that's I what like you do. I like thick cheese. Uh, I, I like that as well. That wasn't me. Uh, no, it wasn't. Uh, okay, uh, lots more to get into the show tonight. We still have some 250 East. Let's talk 250 East a little bit, talk to see as we're coming off McAdoo. Uh, but that's a good idea, right? Auction the pants off? Yeah, sure. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we gotta figure that out with yeah, Box or somebody or mm -hmm. do something like that. Uh, so okay, Forkner wins, Anstey second, uh, uh, Dax and Benick third. There was also hype for for Benick going into the into the series as well. Gets on the box in his first pro Supercross race. Um, Paul, I'll start with you. Like, look, uh, Hayden's got the wrist injury, and Cameron's gonna do better, and Vial's gonna do better. But it, what surprised you? Um. Benick surprised me, even yeah. though we had heard plenty of him going fast. To get a yep. podium in your first Supercross is a huge, huge accomplishment, yep. right? Um, so that was surprising. Um, I, don't, I don't know, man. I don't take a ton from the first race because of that first-turn pilot. But but what I did notice was, you know I was, I've been a believer of Forkner for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, I do think that he finally had some things go his way, not just in the heat, not just in the main event, but in the heat race. I personally didn't think he was riding that great when he was winning in yep. the heat race. I saw more than a few mistakes. But but he had Benick behind him, right? The guy in his first Supercross. He wasn't in any urgency to pass. Like So I think it was a, a blessing that he had that heat race with nobody behind him that expected to be in front of him to where he could kind of sort himself out. And then I think he rode the main event awesome. But I do think he kind of gained a lot of confidence in himself through the heat, and then it was justified in the main event. And now I do believe that the East Coast needs to be worried about this guy. Yeah. This is a guy that can snowball it quick. And, yeah, so. In um, years past, he would have been in that first turn crash. Maybe, yeah, right? he's had it go <laughs> against him for so many years now. I thought yeah. I think it was it was frontier justice finally that he, yeah. he escaped when it was a big mess behind him. Yeah. I thought that was nice for him. Yep. So Trevor, what'd you, what'd you take away from it? Surprises wise. Um, I like seeing Hymas start up front. I was, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm a fan of Hymas. And, yep. um, so that was cool. I, I like to see him coming out firing. He looks, I mean, he looked comfortable yep. up front. You heard, um, you heard what happened? Did yeah, you, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I did. Yep. So that's, I mean, I, I don't know the extent of it, but hopefully, right. um, yeah, a few weeks off and, and he'll be good to go. But, um, yeah, it's cool to see him run up front. Uh, Forkner, for me, I I mean I I'm always been a, a Fortner fan. I enjoy watching him ride. Um, I think where he's kind of stepped up or matured a little bit is how he rode in the main. So mm -hmm. that that track to me, just being that it was extremely rutted, it's a it's a very difficult track to do consistent laps on and yep. and consistently do those rhythm sections every yeah, single it was lap. Yeah, gnarly. Yep. So um, he in the past has been a guy th I feel like moved around quite a bit more on the bike, was a little bit more animated, um, overrode the bike a little bit. And in that main event, he was, 
I mean, like just body position wise and how he was riding that track was Mm -hmm. very calculated, taking his time, hitting his marks. Like he looked like a more mature rider to me. Um, And I think that's what you had to do on that track. I saw some other guys that, um, you know, are are guys that are are very animated on the bike or do well when you can move around on the track a lot and scrub things and and were struggling a little bit or not as consistent. So uh, that was something I was surprised on. I mean, to see him, you know, lead start to finish was cool. So I'm excited to see, you know. Do you think um, – you think yeah. where are you at with Anstey? I mean, Paul and I talked a little bit about it. Do you think, Trevor, he's for real? Like he's going to be podium guy and maybe I, win a race? I think he's for real. I mean, yeah. in qualifying, I was kind of waiting. Like there's been this Anstey hype, and I'm like, yeah. okay, I'm waiting to see a lap. I'm waiting to see a lap. And then he jumps to the top of the board, and yep. then he did a few laps that were in that, that yep. range. And, I mean, I – I, I think he I mean he's a veteran right like mm-hmm. he's I think if they have they've improved the bike he's obviously comfortable on the bike they have a bike that he can get out of the gate with and he's yeah. competitive on so I think yeah he he will race for more podiums throughout the series for sure I think like when you talk about Forkner going to his to grabbing this win not only does he grab the win not only does he avoid the first turn crash and, and he rides really well anyways the riding well has always been there right mm-hmm. but now you look at the lead he's got on Vial, McAdoo, and Deegan, yeah. mm-hmm. right? The, the points lead that he's got now. He's got room to play. He can yeah. be a little bit loose. He can maybe, you know, uh, uh, not be put too much pressure on him. It's, it's going to stick to the plan of keep getting on yeah. the box every time. Yeah, these yeah. dudes. 20 points minimum every right. time. These dudes to pass, to catch and pass them, they're going to need a disaster from Forkner. If he just stays out of trouble, relies on his talent, how does he stay out of the top five? He doesn't. There's no well, way. You yeah. never know. No. I mean, but, but yeah, yeah. no, you know it was I mean? a great round yeah. for him. Yeah. Everything's playing yeah. coming into him for sure. Clayton, what about you? Um, yeah, I agree with, with both these boys. The top three guys rode so good, yep. especially with the uh, track being technical. Very surprised with Daxton being his first ride. He was super smooth. Um, obviously, yeah. Anstey and Forkner. That's the first time I ever talked to him. Daxton uh-huh. seems like a nice kid. He's a good yeah. kid. I don't yeah. know him. Like, uh, uh-huh. I, I wish they would have had the camera on his dad because if you remember, his dad was the one that had that footage from Loretta's about when Dax was kind of graduating. I think Verb uh-huh. got it, and he was emotional. Like okay, I, I would have loved that. to seen his dad. Yeah at that Supercross with his kid getting third. I haven't had too many riders before I interview them say, I've never met you before. It's nice to meet you. I'm he like, said oh, that? Wow. He said that to me. Yeah. Wait till he gets so, to know you. Yeah, probably. Probably. <laughs> once I, once I um, talk shit on him, like on yeah. the internet, like with a cat on the yeah. keyboards. But nice, uh, respectful. Yeah. 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 And then and then he was really nice in the interviews, really yeah. well-spoken yeah. and everything. So. Um, can we talk about Cody Shock? Yeah. 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 That's I mean, gnarly. That's, that's his best that's finish great. ever. It's his right? best finish yeah. ever. Yeah, that's great. Like, I know there's a first turn pileup and stuff, but still, like... He rode good. I, yeah. Somebody's has to get fourth. Somebody. Yeah, yeah, somebody yeah. has yeah. to, right? Yeah. And, I mean, he's got a handful of good guys behind him. Like, you know, Pierce was ripping. Yeah. Um, you know, Jalik was coming up through. Like, he beat those guys. I mean, I know they crashed, but still, yeah. he rode good. Yeah, he, he did. He, and you know what? Phoenix kind of did him dirty. They uh, dropped him late, like mm. November, right? Uh, like, they kind of told me how to ride, and then at the last second they drop him and uh, mm-hmm. when all the rides are full. So, Club picks him up. I think he paid for some of his ride from what I heard. But any either yeah. way, like, dude. Yeah. He rode good. Yeah. I want to see how he does when there's not a first turn crash, yeah, right? And we have course. Hammaker and but, Cameron up there. But, but him and Park last year were like seven, eight, nine guys in yeah. a full field. Like, why can't he do that again? Which I, is uh, that's what I think he right. can. Yeah. Right. So I, yeah. I, I mean, yeah. It's just this field I think is a little harder than last year's field. Is yeah. my only sure. caveat. Yeah. He's really talented. He's a really good kid, and he was stoked after the race. He was yeah, unbelievably cool. happy with. So you seemed yeah. higher on Pierce Brown than maybe I've ever yeah. heard you, because like he's had speed for yeah, a but, few years, right? But we've he struggles to put it together. But you seemed like, uh, no, 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 this is another level of Yeah, speed. because I don't know if he's ever qualified quickest. And I didn't see, like, mistakes. He looked comfy. He looked comfy. I didn't watch him enough. He but. looked like it, he would set up a time on the board, and then he would get knocked down and then put up another time right away. Mm-hmm. There was not – he didn't look as sketchy as I thought as before. And then I watched him in the second half of the main because I didn't even know he was involved in that turn. Mm-hmm. First time he caught my eye was halfway through the main, and I'm like, oh. He was in the first turn pileup too. Yeah. And I he got know, fourth or fifth. I don't know if he was down or just get, got off his bike. Like, I don't know the extent of yeah. how bad it was, but he was caught in that so, turn. So he is the highest finishing guy out of the pileup. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, no, Jalik was involved. Didn't Jalik beat him? Jalik no. six. Oh, okay, yeah. Six. Okay, yeah. So he was the f- highest finishing yeah. guy. Yeah. Okay, that's so pretty impressive. It was more of like – and then so I watched him. The track was sketchy. I mean, deep ruts, you saw all the guys going yeah. everywhere, and he didn't really have any moments either. Like, yeah. for a guy that has moments on a perfectly smooth track, he mm-hmm. looked like a different guy. So I, I think he c- can win a race. Yeah. That'd be cool. Have you seen the TLD track this year, the test track? Uh, I, The Marietta track? Yeah. Uh, no. The Up old the TLD. Hill. Yeah. Oh, I don't Are think they that's still their track. That track. I don't think that's no. their track anymore. I, I want to say it's Cowie's track now. Um, I guess Star had this replica track for Detroit. 
Where was Dean riding? There was a track up there. I thought it was overrated. Really? I yeah. thought it was with yeah. those yeah. guys. I mean, you can't just do it Maybe perfect, right? I don't no, know which can't. one. Never mind. Different. Different. Mm-hmm. Uh, hey, by the way, uh, let's talk some more to the East with a gentleman on the phone call right now. Fly Racing, flyracing.com, of course. You've seen him on the TV show as well as the uh, pit reporter. It's Jason Thomas. What's up, JT? Not too much. What's happening? No, oh, big, big industry uh, get-together here tonight. Big <laughs> industry get together so i hear that yeah i see that uh fly racing fly racing.com get it at motorsport.com or your local dealer of course uh, max anstey fly racing zone um so paul paul came out tonight jt is a schmoda realist he let everybody I'll know think, i'm out of thank the- god you're <laughs> getting accused like, <laughs> like multiple times oh, a day oh yeah no jt you were by far the second the we're, second most guest we're person. both similarly angry <laughs> yeah yeah People. There were a lot of people, like even people I know fairly well, that were texting me. And I'm like, no, man. Like, yeah. well, for one, if it is, I wouldn't tell you. But secondly, no, it's not. Yeah. No, Paul <laughs> Paul revealed himself as the I Schmoder. came out of the closet yeah. as soon as we got started. The, Sh- the Schmoder realist. But he's also been the Max Anstey realist as well uh, in our group text and all that. And I tend to side oh, with you're Paul. you're just all the way out of the closet. You're just all the way <laughs> Yeah, out. yeah. Any, basically, like, yeah. basically, JT, you. anything that I've put in a text in the last month, Steve is bringing it all out. <laughs> no, you, you said earlier, you said earlier you true. were on the Max Anstey. You, you, well, yeah, I, I said it depends where we're putting his results, if I'm a realist or if, I, or if I'm a hater or if I believe the hype or whatever we're at. Whatever but, we're at, yeah. But, and I said I believe he wins a dry race. Well, th- yeah, so that's where I'm coming out, JT, <clears throat> with you talking about Max here a little bit. Like I feel like I don't know if Paul would have said that uh, a, a couple weeks ago, even though there was a lot of Anstey hype. And I'm with you, I think. I think he can mm. win a race now, and I think Brown can win a race those two guys opened my eyes as to this this coast. Uh, what do you What do you think, JT? Yeah, I'm. I am. Uh, I, I thought he would be really fast. Like Max is going to be good. Um, I'm not surprised to see him get second, especially when you look at the circumstances. For me, and I, I wrote about this. Um, Aaron Hansel of Racer X fame posed the question about Anstey, and, and I said not too much different than I think what Paul believes is speed's not the issue. A result won't be the issue, but can he sustain this? Will will this be the norm where he is each weekend in contention, putting up points, which then vaults you into championship contention? That, to yeah. me, is the yeah. question. Uh, whether he's going to be fast and, and do well at certain times is not the question. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. Because, I, th- I mean, even, didn't last year he have a DNF? Like he's had he's had that yeah, one yeah, a bunch of crashes last year. I feel like he's he got like a twenty second or something last year. And even through his GP career, he's had that one round where it's like way bad. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. dead last bad. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's you know, that's why I can't and I won't put him in the title talk, but he doesn't have so to be in the title talk. You think talk. that happens again though? Yes. And okay. and it might not be his fault even. But right. I mean yeah, it could happen, I think, and I think it will, there will be one Take race. the whole team to win a championship. Exactly. That's all I'm getting at. Yeah, I think Paul <clears> and I have been on that page for a while. Yeah. Nothing against the firepower. No, the guys no, no, are no ju- but just it's, not star Yamaha it's harder to compete for nine races perfectly against well, all these other uh, Max, well-funded teams. Max even brought that up when they interviewed him, and I think maybe it was JT or I don't know who it was, but he said, uh, you know, they've got a team of guys. We got four. Exactly. Yeah, he yeah, said yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so that's why if he can do what he did on Saturday night and then can find his way to win a race, that's a – I yeah. mean, you should be proud of that. Yeah. Like, that's awesome. Uh, JT, what about Pierce Brown? You think he can win? Were you impressed? Um, yes, I do think he has the speed to win, but I'm not as convinced as you are that this is going to be a completely different Pierce Brown. You know, it may be a better version of him, mm-hmm. but until I see him put it all together, I'm going to still ask the same question uh, just because I, I've seen the same same thing a lot. You know, his talent's not a question. You know, he, he did look faster than I've ever seen him, but I need to see him be able to put 15 minutes plus a lap together. Yeah, no, I, I guess so too. Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, there's still, like, look, uh, I had somebody tell me Vial didn't look very good coming in, and I thought he looked fine in practice. I, 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 I had, had heard good reports on Have him. You? Yeah. Yeah. Remember, we we spoke about this. Yeah. So I thought <clears throat> Vial looked pretty good, and we know McAdoo's solid. Uh, Deegan will. JT, you brought this up on a review pod. He's got three weeks more now to heal more. He's gonna be fine. You know, so he looked fine. Yeah, already. that's a huge deal. Yeah. yeah, that's a huge thing, right? If you're coming off an injury, which wasn't, it wasn't like he had a broken leg and couldn't walk for four months. You know, it was a wrist injury, which he probably was training heavily through, just not able to ride. Mm-hmm. Uh, three weeks is an eternity as far as getting back to where he was. Um, so I would expect to see 
him take a huge step forward. You know, he's already fast. Like, okay, yeah, his qualifying times that counted weren't very good, but there were times throughout the weekend where I was like, oh, he looks great, you know? Yeah, his charge uh, at the end so of the I heat would, was impressive. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah. I would expect to see a very, very improved version of him uh, when we get back to East Coast Racing. Would you think he takes, like, a week off? Two weeks? Like, no. No? He just keeps riding? Well, I don't know how sore he was. Yeah, that's right? what I mean. Like, yeah. Yeah, but, I, it, you know, this weekend did him a lot of good, even if it was a setback and he can't ride till the end of the week or something. Um, you know, there's so much muscle memory involved in this sport. So him getting out there, getting gate drops, being in the in the mix like that is going to speed up whatever process he's in immensely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it'll be interesting to see how he does. Um, I mean, without the first turn crash, I don't think he wins, but he probably gets a top five. Easily. You yeah. know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh no, no question. Yeah. No question. So, yeah. so then the title is right there. Yeah, I mean, you can't you – can't, think that he doesn't beat like Cody Shock in that race, right? When well, Cody deserves all the credit in the world, yeah, yeah. but Hayden Deegan is a national championship contender, you know? Yeah. No, absolutely. I agree. Uh, how big is this week weekend for Tomac? We all... I think it's huge. Yeah. I mean, it, it's so hard to... do. I, I saw rumors on the internet about Shock and... Not Cody Shock, but his Shock. <laughs> Cody Shock? Um, <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. It's Cody Shock's fault that Tomac rode poorly. No. Um but I don't really know what to make of that, you know, and until they put something out or, or say something publicly, I'm still going to wonder kind of what was going on there yep. because I was ready to, to kind of flip the switch there after race three at Anaheim two mm-hmm. and say like, he's back. Like we saw the Eli Tomac that we wanted to see, you know, and that's all I was kind of waiting on. And then we got this complete opposite version of him in Detroit. So now I'm kind of, you know, left with more questions and answers again. I don't, I don't know what to make of that. So yes, I, I do agree. Mm-hmm. Huge weekend. Um, not so much for the points, but more like mentally, where does he yeah. go with this championship? And I think he does rebound. Does anybody here think he doesn't? Like, I don't. I don't know. He's really? hard to predict. But I okay. sure hope he does. I think he does. I want to. What do you think? Tell me what was wrong. Uh, Arm just, pump, right? Bike setup. Bike setup. Not. I don't know. Yeah. Like if if it if it was a bike problem, like a legitimate. Bike no, there was problem? no bike problem. No, yeah. there wasn't. Okay, then I'm not convinced. So. Okay. I don't know why. Why wouldn't it happen again? I don't know. I mean, I guess the track can be hard pack, and maybe that's less arm pump inducing. Yeah. Steve, when you say rebound, do you think he's on the box, uh, or you think just like a top five and a good ride? Do you think top five and a good ride? Okay, that's oh, what see, I mean. I by think rebound. it needs yeah. to be top three to be rebound. Yeah, yeah, like we're 16 back on round six. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Got to got to get yeah. in there. And also, I I believe his history is pretty good in Glendale. Yeah, too, it is. Right? It is. So, like, oh, yeah. so he's won the last two years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our guy MX reference said this is the fewest amount of points that Roxon and Tomek have had after five rounds, um, excluding the races where they missed races. I I think so. Both I, of the veteran guys are having their worst season ever. I think Kenny Kenny's riding has been overlooked a bit yeah. because of the points he's earned thus far. That guy should have more points. He's ripping. Yeah. He was fast on Saturday night, especially like from exit to corner and out, or I'm sorry, like apex to corner and out. Mm-hmm. He was just passing people that yeah, he, he, he was, was going so fast. He was ninth after the first lap and he was in third in four more laps or something. Yeah. Yeah. So great. like, and I'd like to see him kind of get yep. a little closer in there too, because he's been riding great. So you're saying when I, you're saying that I'm saying that Tomac is saying that he's going to bounce back. And I'm saying top five, and you're like, that's not good enough. I think in Tomac said he's like, I need to get a trophy in Glendale. Okay. Like 100% that's what he's I kind of agree thinking. with that. Okay. I kind of agree with that. The for, for a guy of his yeah. stature yeah. to go get, like, fifth, I don't think that it's really enough, yeah. does it. Okay. Yeah, I don't think that does it. Okay. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, well, he's – Like, you look at what he's done. He's 50, won 51 races. A fifth is not – like. I don't think see how he could find any satisfaction with a fifth. Like, he's, yeah. he's too good, and, and he's just – his stats would tell you that that's not, you know, I don't think that defines success for him is probably the best way I can put right, it. Right, right. Uh, Jason Thomas on the show, Fly Racing, flyracing.com. Hey, JT, I ran into a fan uh, on the flight to Detroit in uh, in Denver, and he was asking me, who's going to win? And I told him, if you could tell me who's going to start, I'll tell you who's going to win. And then uh, this weekend it kind of played out that way, although Kenny rode really well. And Ricky was on earlier tonight, and I said, look, you could have started backwards and got third, and he kind of admitted that that was true. He said, no disrespect yeah. to the competition, but, yeah, I was just thinking my worst night on, was, would be a third. And I think he's right, and I think Paul and everybody here agreed with him. So we're turning into, you know, with the, with the greats and, the, and, and all, the, on all the tricks that everybody knows, we're turning into a bit of a start cross. And uh, 
I don't know if that's good. I don't know if that's a good thing. Uh, we'll see going forward, but that kind of holds true. Like, even Jet Lawrence, you know, is one when he got the starts and he hasn't when he's got not gotten them. So, yeah. I don't know. I think some guys can move forward. Yep. You know, I don't think you can start 17th and get there. Yeah. Yeah. But I've seen guys pass people and, and move forward, you know, with success. Yeah, but can um, you win? Can you win by getting a fifth I mean, start? With a fifth place start, I believe you can. I believe if Jets on and he starts fifth, I think he can win. Yes, I okay. do. All I right. do believe that. Do yep. you, and I think Cooper Webb, when he's on, could do that, it. He, um, that's that's but, who I wanted to mention. Like, is there a guy yeah. out there in that field that can beat Jet at the end of the race? Webb. Well, we haven't seen it yet. Right? Yeah, that's, that's what. That's what. Whole, yeah, I haven't seen it. But yeah. if someone can do it, I want to see Cooper stay within a couple seconds deep into the race to see if he can do it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I still want to see somebody come up when Jet's firing on all cylinders and come up and just pass him and show him that they can go faster than him. Because I haven't. I, I don't know that, that we're going to see that, though. I understand. I'm just not like, you know, everybody that wants to be champion in this class, like, it's really hard to go out and be champion without passing, without being able to pass one guy. Like, if yeah. nobody can pass this one guy, like, mm -hmm. that's really difficult to, to, <sighs> for him to not be champion. Yeah, and, and I've never kind of declared who I think is going to win, and I, I don't know who's going to win at this point either, but I do believe that the champion will have to go up and beat and pass Jet at some point. If nobody agree, goes and catch, that, catches yeah. him and beats him all year, yeah. he's your champion. Yeah, and I'm a Yeah, and, and I – sorry. Uh, I was just going to say, I, I think Jet, deep down, believes he's the best guy, and, and not by a little bit, you know? And yeah. You could say it's youthful exuberance or that he's overconfident or whatever, but – Look at the facts. Why would he not think that? Like, you tell me, if nobody's ever passed you, why you're not going to believe that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and I think that's why Cooper's attack at him in the very first heat race of the year mm -hmm. was exactly what you need to do. Right. You have to ruffle his feathers immediately. Yeah. If you let yeah, him ha take three laps somebody. to get in the front, you're never seeing him again. But some somebody has to change that narrative if they want to beat him. Like, nobody's yep. been able to do it. Like, yeah, 100%. The whole time when... Chase was in second at the beginning of the race. I'm like, Chase, if you want to beat this guy, and I don't care. I don't have a dog in the fight. It doesn't matter to me who wins these races, clearly. But I, I'm literally, you know, just watching going, Chase, if you ever want to beat this guy, like, you're right behind him. You've got to do something. Like, run it in on him. Do something. Because right now, he doesn't fear you. And that's yeah. my honest opinion. Like, Jet does not fear Chase. When he looks back there and sees Chase, why would he ever feel anything but comfort? Like, mm -hmm. he, he's been in that scenario a lot 25 times now or whatever yeah. and it's always gone his way yeah no i'm with you I, I don't i don't think there's anybody who can i would have said chase sexton could have had the raw speed to chase him down i think kenny's the but only person I, i've ever seen do it at chicago like kenny was on at that he was getting to the front i yeah. i think and, if kenny think gets about, up, like millville yeah think about millville we've seen chase do it but you've got to finish like yeah. you've got to yeah. like Whatever your finishing move is, like Mortal Kombat, like you've got to be able to do it. You yeah. can't just get there and then make a mistake or run out of steam or whatever. Yeah. Like you, because right now I think Jet get he get to him and then Jet's like, okay, I just have to withstand this onslaught for a minute and then I'll be good. Yeah. You know, and until you change that thought process, yeah. he's just going to continue to think that. I think Kenny is so prideful and such a gamer that if he can do it and get latch onto Jet. He could maybe do it. Uh huh. Like, he you could. know, yeah, Kenny he can could. figure it out. I left him out of the conversation earlier when I mentioned Webb and that yeah. when we were talking about this, but right. maybe. I don't know if I see Kenny doing it late, but. Right. Okay, I would, I would challenge you guys with this, and I don't, this isn't an opinion. It's more of just throwing this into the equation. When was the last time you saw Kenny do that to somebody where he just stalked them down and made a move? Yeah, you exactly, know, that's right? That's not his game. I, I would see, game. I would imagine Kenny does it from the front. Well, like, Chicago. Like, Chicago yeah, land. Yeah, but that was. Was he second or third from the get go, and he was just dealing with Jet? Like he didn't come. Yeah, like, I, that's well, Jet still. Passed him. Jet, Jet passed him. Oh, I didn't know that. I don't remember that. Yeah, then. Jet pa Jet passed him on the first lap, and then Kenny stayed Latched there, on. which is yeah. really important. Um, and, and that was a great race by Kenny. I'm not trying to detract from that at all. But that was I'm different saying, than what how he normally does it, though. Right. Yeah. Right. Kenny's game is whole shot and see ya. You yeah. know what I mean? Like yeah, that's yeah. that's how he wins. I thought he was. I thought San Diego was over when Kenny got in the lead. Full honesty. Me too. Yeah. I thought it was over. Me yeah. Too. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, I don't know that I've ever seen Kenny like throw it away like that. Yeah, yeah I would have bet a lot of money right yeah. there. Like, well, we, were, we were watching the race yeah. together, yeah. and I and I, I was like, yeah. this is over. Yeah. Yep. No, absolutely. He's Kenny's got been the fastest rider with the worst results so far. 
for sure. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we'll see what he can do from there. Fly Racing, flyracing.com. Jason Thomas on the line. Before we let you go, JT, uh, I always like to hear uh, a Butler Brothers story of Paul and you and your time together <laughs> oh, at Butler God. Brothers. Oh, what, God. Um, what stands out, Paul? <laughs> How <laughs> angry was JT at some of these races? Um, yeah, honestly, I didn't deal with it as much because JT was over there either with Dan or mostly with Frank yeah. during my time, and, right. and I was in a different class, so I didn't see it a lot. But I would always download with Frank after the race, and mm -hmm. it was that was enjoyable. Did you and Frank ever get into it? Never. Never. No. Always no, good. No. I got one time, good with Frank. Did we? When? One time, Bud's Creek over the pressure washer. We did? <laughs> oh, yeah. Don't remember. Yep. Yeah, my dad like got really mad. Like You got mad, and my dad got mad, and then I had to go tell my dad, like, you can't. You can't yell at Paul. Like, that's not going to work. <laughs> I don't remember. It's not how you yeah, communicate yeah. with him. No. Uh, like, like, Paul was just, no. Yeah, yeah. Don't yell at him. Yeah. Yeah. That ain't, that ain't going to work. Yeah. That's funny. Well, we had a, it was like a million degrees, and we had one pressure washer because the other one broke. Yeah. I, I don't know why I remember this so vividly, but yeah. Yeah, you are hitting me with yeah. lots of detail here. Yeah. I was going to uh, tell the rental car story. But I don't know if I've told oh. that in public before, <laughs> or is that just a te like you know we had a rental car. Yeah. We were in Texas somewhere, yeah, and we made a mistake and yeah, flattened the tire and ruined the wheel. Okay, ruined it to yeah. the point where you couldn't put another tire on this wheel. We hit something <laughs> really hard in the road, yeah. so we made a mistake. Yeah, yeah, made a mistake. Right. So we didn't know what to do. So we ended up driving around downtown Houston, wherever we at, and we happened to find the same type of car that we were driving, and we pulled the. <laughs> Jack out of the back, <laughs> jacked up this car, did a wheel swap, and we're on our way. <laughs> wow. Yeah, rough. You imagine coming out to your car and somebody had put a such a like it? such a little punk dipshit thing to do. Yeah. Oh yeah. man. Imagine if that guy's listening right now. But that's the <laughs> that's how terrified we were of like, oh my god, the cost. We're gonna get stuck with this. We're gonna have to pay for it. And you know, we're like, yeah. we're not making much. No. We're sleeping in the semi. Yeah. Right. Like we're young, so. Yeah. Were you guys really sleeping in the semi at the races? My first year, I slept in the semi every at, weekend at the track. Yeah, yeah. Wow, how was that? I mean, like in the lounge? It was kind of fun, <laughs> to be honest with you. Yeah, like, yeah. One of my best, one of my best memories was uh, Freestone, <laughs> and it was like I don't even know, 120 degrees or something on uh, on Friday, and Dan brought the bike into the room. <laughs> And then I remember. The entire bike in his underwear. Yeah, in his white <laughs> underwear in the yeah. AC. Yeah. In the in the hotel room. In the hotel room. Yeah, yeah. Pull, yeah. Just yeah. pulled it right in, right in front of the window. Right. And Dan, he sweats when it's sixty degrees out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, no shirt, just underwear, working on his bike. Working on the bike. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, I can't even. Yeah. <laughs> it was just not. Yeah, right. it wasn't more about how you did it. Just make sure you got yeah. it done. So you don't thing. have any like JT angry after the moto story because you were already in yeah, not really. I was yeah, in a yeah. different class right. and you just knew to leave Frank and JT to just themselves. Leave them alone. Yeah, let them let them do their <laughs> thing. So I do just remember one story when oh, I remember when Frank got so pissed. It was when our truck driver was driving JT's race bike out of the tunnel. I can't remember what oh, yeah, race this. Good. What race Tor was this? JT? I think it was Toronto. No, it was a really steep. Out out of the tunnel. I don't think it was Toronto. Houston was steep. No, it was like Pontiac a it was, was a steep. Detroit or a Indy Pontiac, or a right. something like that. Yeah. Anyway, he's riding it out of the tunnel and at the very top. I don't know what he did. Maybe he panicked or something. But the dude fucking jumps this thing out of the tunnel, <laughs> like <laughs> like you know the uh, out of the bottom of the stadium up to the road. Yeah. Lands in the in the wet road, grabs front brake, puts this thing into the curb, no. and then brings it back to the to the truck. Oh. And Frank's like, "What the fuck, man? My grip." My <laughs> lever, like he was bombed. <laughs> <laughs> truck yeah. driver's like, my bad. Truck driver's like, dude, I think I tore my ACL. Like yeah, he was yeah. hurting. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Cowboy boots. Didn't didn't really ride motorcycles, yeah, right? Yeah. I think he came from a farm. I don't know. Right. We had a lot of truck drivers. Yeah. This is a horse type guy, not right. a motorcycle type right, guy. Right. <laughs> Frank, yeah. not happy. No, Frank was. Pissed. I've only ever seen I've only ever seen that happen one other time where like a mechanic or uh, somebody. I mean, he like. He threw my bike down the road, right? Like, just it <laughs> scraped and bent to hell. Foot peg was bent. Like, it, it took a beating on the asphalt. Yeah. But you remember um, Alan Olson that worked for Yamaha and yeah. a bunch of yeah. guys, yeah. right? Craig Anderson, uh, we were in Sevilla or Arnhem. I think it was Arnhem uh, for World Supercross. And he did the same thing, looped over backwards, like trying to just, you know, burn the bike out and warm it up. Mm -hmm. Like, looped out and just threw the thing down the, the, the cement for, uh, you know, 50 yards <laughs> and just destroyed this motorcycle. There was there was another story. It was also a Texas race. But remember when they used to build those Toyota courses? 
yeah. for like Toyota trucks and yeah. spectators oh, yeah. okay. would come and they drive yeah. the course through the pits. Yep. I don't know if it was JT's infamous like mystery frame bike that they changed no, everything. No, no, this was we just had bad gas. Okay. The gas was bad. So they yeah. they had an issue, right? And they're working on the bike and I, I don't know if it was Dan that tested the bike or yeah, JT. It was, it was definitely No, I did it. I did it full gear and everything. Out on the Toyota track <laughs> with his bike. <laughs> full gear, just don't ask questions, Fel- just go out there and Fel- burn like, out area. Excuse me. Excuse yeah. me. <laughs> yeah, just to make sure well, the bike can run. The whole story goes we couldn't figure out what was wrong with the bike, right? Like, you'd never think your gas is bad. Like, I've never had that happen in my life. Um, so I made the night show. I didn't jump the triple. I went roll double and still made the night show. <laughs> but we're like, yeah, that's that's not going to work for the, for the race, right? Like, I'm not going to make the main doing that. So we finally figured out that it was the gas because my bike's shooting flames out the, out the <laughs> exhaust. Like, literally. And Frank's like, God damn gas. it! <laughs> this was Dan well, no, at this Dan, point. This Dan, was oh, Dan, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah. And we, and they finally figured out it's like running right, and we're like, okay, well, we gotta like, we gotta test this thing. And I'm like, well, I'll, I mean, I'll rip around the pits like nobody's business. And Dan's like, we're going to the Toyota. Pit bike. <laughs> <laughs> Dan, just making it so happen. I, yeah, yeah, imagine yeah. that. So I suit up and I'm doing hot laps over there on like, you know, I'm just basically barrel racing around these these, you know, yeah. pit bike track things. And then we went out there and. We got it done. No, oh, made shit. it happen. That's fun. And so they was closed down. The pits were closed at that point. It was like for the night show. Yeah, yeah. Pits yeah. are closed. Right. Like you know, there's nobody over there. But uh, I literally remember there's like, endless in the heat race because I, I still wasn't sure that my bike ran. Like we weren't sure what was wrong or right. right. And I just remember telling like Dan, like if I get hurt because my bike shuts off, like my mom's gonna be so pissed at you. I remember <laughs> telling him that very clearly. <laughs> we had Geneva Supercross yeah. one year. They had a. Yamaha TTR demos around some cones on the mm-hmm. cement in the pits, in indoor pits. And Patty, uh, JB's old mechanic, and myself and J- Brayton, and maybe Yulo, all grabbed TTRs and we were doing b- a barrel races and like full, like flat track. <laughs> and all the spectators are just watching, because it's Brayton, right? So they all know it's Brayton, so they just let us do it. And we're just, mm-hmm. and dude, my groin, my left groin from like holding your foot up, I could barely walk the next day. I was like, that was a stupid idea. God, it hurt like hell. But we were, yeah, we were having fun flat track in, in Geneva mm-hmm. one year. So uh, good times. Yeah, we could, we could probably have a whole podcast for Butler Brothers stories. Oh, we have too many stories. We could do a lot. <laughs> There's, yeah, we need to get Karsten in here because he has a lot of the logistical stories. Yeah, because he was booking our flights and the hotels and the cars. Right, and that's some of the most amazing ones, like yeah. some of the flight crazy stuff that we've <laughs> had to do. And yeah, uh, all right, JT, thanks, man, appreciate it. Fly Racing, flyracing.com. We'll see you this weekend in uh, Glendale, man. Thank you. Okay, guys. See, right, see you. That's Jason Thomas, everybody. I brought you by the folks at Fly Racing. <laughs> uh, Clayton, before we let get you let just let yeah. uh, Andy slide in here, everything good, one hundred percent. Yeah. 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 Enjoying it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I love it. it. It's awesome. It's um. It's a really fun brand to be a part of. How, um, how are you guys doing with the recent staff changes? Have things really taken off from the, from there? Really? Like, yeah. After yeah. Chuck left. Is no, that what you're saying? No, no. <laughs> you're getting that? Thinking of another couple staff changes. Oh, oh, just one oh, of those yeah. ones. Oh. Those ones. <laughs> just thinking that yeah. companies <laughs> sort of shooting up. Just in my opinion. Just my yeah. opinion only. Yeah. Not, I mean, not Clayton's opinion. It's because you're wearing our casual now. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it is. Well, I. That may or may not be not a coincidence. Yeah. So, um, yeah, no. you look better. You're dressing better yeah, now. Dressing better. I got my jacket on. Yeah. Exactly. I got, I, I, I'm looking good. I really like the mountain bike socks. Uh, yeah. Like not. I wear the socks for mountain biking. Love okay. them. Okay. Rentals are still all, my favorite. All their mountain bike stuff's good. Yeah. Yeah. Paul's my athlete. You you have a new <laughs> helmet out now. A couple of years now. Mountain yeah. bike helmet. Yeah. I think it's I got been a couple years. Gotta try it. Okay. Yeah, it's a new one. Uh, but no, things are good for you yeah. guys. Yeah. No, no, things are really good. Uh, our distributors are doing well. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's been a little bit of a wild ride after covid after the the hit or you know it goes so far up and then yep. kind of starts coming down but we've had good steady growth now for a while yeah um our distributors are doing well so um yeah, yeah things are things it's are such going a good. it's a really cool success story i mean trevor you've been in the industry longer than maybe all of us as far as working at maxima when you were like 14 or whatever right <laughs> um oh, yeah well, long time ago that's what i meant but you've yeah. been in the industry and then paul you know you, as a mechanic you've been in with rental for a long time the 100 yeah. percent story is like yeah. Talk about like uh, very coming accelerated in. growth. <laughs> Talk about coming yeah. in and just like to the top. Yeah. 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 It's it's pretty I've, impressive. That I've way. been there. It'll be eight years next week. Yeah. So or in a couple of days, I've been there eight years. So it's been a really fun yeah. thing to really see and really learn a lot of, you know, just seeing it take off. And yeah. now, 
you know, kind of being in charge and just kind of trying to hold on. <laughs> There's a lot of companies that came in the industry that are like, I'd like to do that. What yeah, they did, I mean, right? they jumped <laughs> into a category and boom, straight right. to the top in like I two, mean, three, four years. Yeah. You guys like have been that, around so. since 1969. Max has been around since the early 80s. <laughs> yeah, right? it's a like, slow burn. <laughs> yeah. It's hard to get there. Yeah. But yeah. 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 Uh, We've had some things go our way that's been really good. And yeah. then, you know, just awesome designs, good Should, product. And shouldn't yeah, have been a, lucky. Shouldn't have let AP go. Uh, I mean, I mean, yeah. yeah okay. You do got the jet we guy, though. Yeah, we got that jet kid. You got the jet Yeah, he's kid. pretty good. Is he locked in for a while? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he is. <laughs> yeah, for the next couple of years. Yeah. yeah here, here, man. But, here, here's a blank contract. Yeah. So you just fill it in and, and you know. Yeah, exactly. Um, no, yeah, have him locked down for a few more years. Yep. And then, um, you know, trying to really lock down all the guys we have now for, you know, we like our, our crew we're yep. at now with Cooper and yep. Frandis and all the star guys, obviously. And so. what's Janolfi's mood like? Is he okay? Yeah. Is he, is yeah, he good? he's been chill. Yeah, he's been a little stressed out, I Dude, think. I mean, back-to-back mud, mud races, races like and that like, stuff. <laughs> think about Genofi. Um, he just kind of cruised by, filled in for Knowles here and there, yeah. a lot of sales stuff, right? And then all of a sudden he's thrust into this pressure-filled goggle guy role. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and, like, what a season to start, you yeah. know, as well. Yeah. So he's been a little stressed out. And because with mud races, like, things just happen, right? Yeah. You can't – you know, it doesn't even have to be Dave's fault or, you know, any of the goggle no. guys' fault. Just yeah. stuff happens, Listen. right? Steve so. knows. Tell us your Wash Eagle story, Steve. Yeah, you don't got to tell me. Uh, I was a goggle guy for extra yeah. goggles, choice of champions yeah. everywhere. And um, <laughs> I like Brock Tickle. We're friends. To this day, we're still friends. Yeah. I want to fucking kill him. <laughs> He's the reason I'm not a goggle guy anymore. <laughs> like, he was extra goggles. We were fine. I built him goggles. I left him spares, you know, all of that stuff. We were good. And we had a, that, her, that hellacious M- Washugo mud race where Tonus. I think the only time I ever got on the box, he barely raced for Mitch, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. but he got on the box that one day. Oh. And like 85% of the field had no goggles. Just that It was just that muddy. There was yeah. nothing you could do. Well, Brock got hit in with mud, threw off his goggles, like, like 85% of the right. other guys. And then the next moto, he grabbed a pair of Scots from Knowles. Oh. Wow. And I'm like, hey, Brock. Yeah, he's like, man, this, this, this didn't work. I had to throw him off. Oh, you had to throw them off. Yeah. Like everyone else. Every, yeah. And that's the goggles fault. Like <laughs> that was it. I I did three more races with X brand and I quit being a goggle guy. Yeah. Because I was, tough. <laughs> I was fucking done with these guys. Yeah. I was, I was like, I love tickle. Still good guy. I was like, Brock, you're blaming that on the goggles. Like no one had goggles on. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's for tough. a fucking tickle. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's what you know you got to yeah, deal with. Yeah, that's that's what he's you know up against. Yeah. Uh, luckily, I think you know most of those guys are pretty level headed. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Or, or, or here's another one: a bunch of riders. Because I wasn't like in the mechanics area, right? I was like yeah. a journalist goggle guy. But I would build roll offs and and a few pairs of roll offs and like five goggles in a ziplock and say, "Hey, man, if here's I, your spares. Here's your uh, spares. If I'm not around, they're in your locker. Yeah. Like because I'm not always around, so you." These are in your locker. And when you go through these, I will replace them with another five. Or just please yep. let me know. They take like, those straight home. Gone. Gone. <laughs> and then yeah. uh, I had a guy tell me. I don't even remember who it was. I think it was like, uh, I don't even know who it was. Not Chiz. Strang. Chiz was great. Chiz, <laughs> Chiz was great. Who else does he name as a champion? Uh, Ricky Russell. Ricky Russell. Was it him? Russell. No. It was the motor Lauren? guy. Freddie, yeah. It wasn't. Fr- I don't know who it was. I can't remember now. <laughs> and and they're like Alessi. There's been too many of them. They, yeah, we did a lot. Did Alessi stuff. Is this when they complained about the dog hair in between the no tear offs? <laughs> so the guys go to me. He he wore another brand of goggle, and I'm like, what are yeah. you doing? I had no goggles. Okay, mm-hmm. what happened to the ones that I made you for the start of the day? Yeah. I don't know. Okay, what happened to the five in your locker? They're gone. Okay, well. Yep. I, I don't know, man. Like, this is the stuff you have to deal with. And that, yeah, so. and that's everything. I mean, that's gear as well, yeah, right? Yeah. I, I, that's an American problem, though, too. Yeah. You, oh, yeah. really? Yeah, it's not yeah. as bad in, in GPs. Like, no. they prep their own goggles. They take care of their own stuff. They're like adults. We yeah. have. We have. Yeah. We, we coddle them a bit too children. much over here. Yeah. The service so anyways, is a bit but too yeah, nice. That's, so, Janofi, I'm worried about him, but I'm glad. Yeah, you know, no, he's, he's fine. Okay. He's good. He stresses a little bit on the right. weekends, especially on these mud races, but he's done really good. Like, Jordan Smith thanked him on the podium. He had no goggle issues and yep. so i think that was like you know really cool for dave as well i like um 
I like Dave. He's a good guy for sure. Yeah, and, he's great. And, and Mark Blanchard, one of the co-owners, yes. is, is one of my favorite people in the industry. Mark goes back to the JT Racing days. Yeah, he's a, such a fan. He's like a, such a cool story. It, yeah, sick he's, designer. Yeah, yeah, he's super. Obviously, good in designing, but he's just a, a moto head. He's a big race fan. Yeah, he loves going to races. He's been to every single A1 since you know '84. Yeah. Um, you know, he just he loves just bench racing. Yeah. You know, it just who's going here next year, and, and he loves it. He loves going to the races. He still rides motorcycles yeah. to this day. We play fantasy. Like, he's into it. You yeah. know, we're, we're he's betting. He's cool. Yeah, right. it's, it's fun. He's a great guy. I did a good podcast with him years ago. I should re-release it because his story is so cool coming yeah. from France and just jumping yeah. in the industry, you know? So. Yeah, yeah. He told me stories like God, where he was at my age and stuff, and it's, it's funny. And him and Ludo are just filthy rich, too. <laughs> Filth. Good for them. Good they, for them. I'm not. Yeah. yeah. Dude, the, they started one. They flipped yeah. it. You know, uh, Ludo had the braking thing for a while. Now they've done 100. But those guys are. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, it, and it's well deserved. I mean, yeah. those guys, they're in the office every single day. Yeah. I mean, Ludo from 7 a.m. to 8.30 p.m. I'm getting yeah. text and emails. And yep. so they're very heavily involved and it's very well earned for both of them. Yeah, absolutely. Pulp 30 is the code to save at 100%, by the way. Uh, yeah. If you want to uh, save yourself some money on everything, on casual, yep. mountain bike stuff, goggles, all of it, Pulp 30 is the code to save. Uh, yep. We'll get you back in later, but for now, let's jump get Andy, jump in. And, uh, Andy from Guts Racing. Uh, factory chassis parts. Paul, you've used uh, uh, mounts before. You've changed mounts on four strokes. Yeah. It really help, makes a difference. Uh, factory chassis parts used uh, Team Rock River, Justin Starling, Phoenix Honda, uh, and more out there. So Dylan Ferrandis using this as well. Designed to improve traction, handling, cornering, and feel. Discount code pulpamex chassis pulpamex chassis to save with, with uh, the factory chassis parts, FCP. You want to change the mounts on your motorcycle, make it corner a little better, make it corner a little differently, stiffer, softer. Uh, factory chassis will s source that out for you and do it. Uh, so thank you to those guys for coming on board. And LiftedTrucksForSale.com. You had Tyler here last week. Your one-stop shop for premium brand-new custom trucks. The 8 o'clock hour brought to you by LiftedTrucksForSale.com. They retain your factory warranty, so that's really cool. Each vehicle in the search engine features premium components and easily financeable through your local dealership. Skip the hassles of DIY customization like rating for parts, poor ride quality, avoiding your warranty, and drive the vehicle you've always dreamed of today. Elevate your own journey at LiftedTrucksForSale.com. Thank you to those guys for coming on board and, uh, and Chris Betts as well. Really stoked, I'm sure. On, uh, on his truck that we uh, that we got him. LiftedTrucksForSale.com. Fuck my ass. Oh, wow. Uh, all right. Let's welcome in uh, a <laughs> longtime sponsor of the, sh of the show, whether it's uh, uh, the re-raceables, whether it's this show. Andy Gregg from Guts Racing. What's up, buddy? How are you? Yo, what's happening? Uh, pull your mic a little closer if you can. A little bit. There Thanks for go. coming by. You're, you're in town for the same show that these jerkies are in? Yeah. The AIM yeah. show? Yeah, the AIM show. Yeah. It should be good. And how is that thing for you? Uh, it's good for us. Yeah. Like, yeah, last year we had a good show, and I think this year is even going to be better. Do you have a booth? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you have oh, booth? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so you guys don't have booths. You're, you're just doing meetings. Yeah, yeah, I have a distributor who will have, like, a rental set up. But oh, okay. Same. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But you're, you're in the booth, booth life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we can make this quick because I know the crowd or the people at home are waiting for McKenna to get up in the seat. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I can <laughs> we can just a couple quick just, questions yeah. and then you, we no, can get listen, her to slide in. Sit in for All a right. while. You're fine. Guts Racing. Pop MX 24 is the code to say. 2024 is the code to say with Guts Racing. How's the code doing? All right. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yours yeah. crushes it. Okay. Yeah, I think it's some company online sold it so anybody that just types in guts codes oh just really gets it. oh yeah oh, is, that, is that how that works is that no there is companies that yeah, do that yeah yeah there yeah. is right I've, I've heard that then you got to switch the code every now and then yeah somehow they found one of our industry ones oh, and then yeah, one yeah. day i woke up and then i was like what 75 people in a row use the industry 50 code they're for industry people <laughs> oh shit and so yeah and then i googled it so myself 50 off, 50 yeah off. yep so I, oh. I i googled it and found this website that was like oh yeah put in your email address and we'll give you a 50 percent off code for guts racing oh so we had to like just start crushing you know all these codes and like re reset everything <laughs> yeah, up yeah. yeah oh shit that'd be bad news yeah that could be yeah um, <coughs> nice to meet you finally in person. Yeah, oh, yeah. we've yeah. spoke on the phone many Trevor? times. Sure. Yeah. Nice to meet yep. you. Nice to meet yep. Let me yeah. shake a hand yeah. too. I want to thank Andy for being the oh. number one supporter of the Raise It for USA golf golf tournament. Number, oh yeah, number one. Oh wow. The first guy that returned my phone call or wow. my email maybe and said I'm in, and it was motivating. And I want to say thank you. That was yeah. Cool. That, that that's you. Good yeah, job. that was us. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Uh, company guts racing, of course. Yeah. But I grew up, you know, watching and always like had this desire to see team usa always win yeah. like i just felt like that's just how life should be right it doesn't matter if there's olympics or whatever like team usa <laughs> has to win everything right not ice hockey not so, ice hockey. <laughs> <laughs> they did in what 84 or something like that 80 80 okay yeah, yeah. Oh, you're yeah. i was born i should know that yeah. but uh 
but yeah, when Paul reached out, I, I was like, I couldn't even type fast enough, I think. And then I even ty- I sent the email and called just to yeah, say like, hey, cool. like I want to be on board for this. Like yeah. we're small, like we can't yeah. like pay for the whole tournament, but let us be part of it somehow. Somehow. It w- and it was just when it was still kind of an idea. I was almost putting out feelers to like, can I even pull this off? Like, yeah. does, do people care like the way I care even? Yeah. And yeah, Andy was in, so it was cool. No, it's great. Yeah, <laughs> I've, I've, had, I've talked to our listeners who deal with you guys and yeah, I mean, you'll directly pick up the phone or talk to him, or you know what I mean. Like you're, you're there. So. How many Suron seats are we selling? Oh my gosh, dude! <laughs> Is that a real Love thing, Suron? Oh, are, dude, they're, they're, you have no idea. Really? Oh my, dude, they sell like a hundred thousand units last year. Yeah. Aren't they like four grand? Yeah, that's yes. why they sell so much. They're but that four seems grand. Like a lot of money for these kids. I see no. ripping around on these things. A Stark is what twelve? Well, yeah, but the, but I see twelve year olds on Surons on the streets down it's here. It's still cheaper than a two fifty F. Okay. Yeah, like we are that and the Talaria. Yeah. The RAR is like starting to get some. Yeah, they have a booth here. I think the RAR yep. and there's the Segway, right? All yep. e-bike. Yeah. The Segway E-moto uses the same ish. seat as the really? uh, yeah. Suron. As the Suron, yeah. So you're yeah. you're crushing it on that. Oh my gosh, dude. <laughs> And the best part is, is every kid wants to be a stunt rider, and the asphalt is not forgiving on a seat. Yeah. There you go. They literally will have it on, and they'll email McKenna and say, hey, um, I have, like, three minutes on this, and it's thrashed. And she goes, yeah, they tear, like, your grips. She'll say that, like, email back, like, yeah, you know, like, your grips are probably ruined, your handlebars are probably bent, and, yeah, yeah so is the seat. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That's life. Are you helping any of those, like, influencer kids that are on YouTube and Instagram with them, like that Pember? Tin kid, I think is. Um, nice, I don't right? have him, but I I just reached out. Just so when we first looked into the Suron bike, yeah, I just went to Instagram. I typed in Suron. This Baby D Blocks kid pops up. He's got like 1.4 million followers or uh-huh. something. You're nodding, Trevor. And, yeah, I know who it is. And so I just I just DM him. I'm like, why not? Like, yeah, yeah. That's what everybody does to For me sure. now. Absolutely. Like they DM all the time. Like, oh, can you help me with my order? Like, no. Like, go to our <laughs> sales team. <laughs> yeah. But so I just DM. Like, hey, don't know who you guys are, but I like what I see. Would you be interested? And they said, oh, yeah, well, actually another seat cover company, like oh. one of my competitors had already got in there, and he said he just felt like they were being kind of like pushy and whatever, and he said, I like how you reached out, like the words I used and everything. <laughs> yeah. And he goes, let's give it a shot. And ever since then now, like, and he's awesome. uh, he just signed a deal with um, oh. Razor, the little yeah, Razors, yeah, yeah. and I've been sending him seats for those, and because yeah, yeah, we do the Razor, and we do. What a world is right. Kids, yeah. kids need to pedal a bike. It's good for them. Yeah. Uh, those, well, day, those days are over. But you're, you it know, is. you're an those animal. You're an over. animal. I bought my kid an electric bike for Christmas. Yeah, but I mean, a new mountain bike's four grand for a kid. Yeah. I mean, so I Sur- on, four that's, grand. No, I mean, that's why that Suron so is is it's but, but, it's really fun to ride. Number one, it gets a great charge. It goes really fast. Okay, but and go ahead. On my road bike rides, I see kids ripping around with no helmets on. Oh no, no, right. that's that's a problem. So that's yeah. there. Th- there's going to be a, a, an issue coming. So I, at some honestly, point. that we we've spoken about this quite a lot at Renthal, but in England, they are a nuisance. Yeah, they hate them, yeah. and I think we're one kid away from yeah s- somebody getting killed. That regulation is going to really change that's because what yeah, I mean, yeah, they go those things go like forty five miles yeah. an hour. They pass me on my road bike, yeah. brrr, and they got no helmet on, and they're they're twelve years old. They look no, like. it's tough, but man, they are. If you want to talk about electric bike market, yeah, though that's the brand that's actually selling units. Guts Racing, <coughs> crushing it. It sounds like yeah, yeah. We sell <laughs> um, yeah. right now. We're without even like doing marketing just to those people. We're selling thirty to forty of those a day. It's not like, yeah. like without even pushing it. Tra- mm-hmm. Sell any oil for Surons? <laughs> no, no, we got chain loop. We got chain loop. <laughs> we got SC1. They take handlebars and grips and sprockets and chains. They got sports and shocks on them. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of seats, though, like what if? Do you have anything like if your balls come out? Do you have anything like? A, a, oh, it's we got something. Do you have in like works. A, a, a little sack in a there? Tongue a tongue patch. Yeah, tongue, that's what yeah. we need. Yeah. Do you have anything like velvet? <laughs> Just you a little velvet on the. Yeah, know? a little crushed velvet right in there. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be yeah. nice. Of two lips. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? That'd be nice. Yeah, right? I don't know. Like, <laughs> if I was riding and that happened, it wouldn't be hanging out. It'd be poking out. Yeah. So I don't know how that, like, that's not even cool. Have like, you seen the videos? No, I haven't Sh- seen them. Show them the video. I don't have the video. You have the video. No, I don't. I just sent it to you. No, I don't have it. Send it to the couch, Why and they'll watch that? the video, Why and they can you? tell me about it what later. Do you mean? Why are you being all weird? I'm not being weird. I don't have it. Oh, shit. Maybe Clayton has it. Yeah, Clayton has it. You, you were on a text. I didn't get it. Yes, you did. All right, here's the here's check this out. That, poor that, camera. That's yeah, poor camera. Oh my gosh, this is rad. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Here, yeah. I didn't Did think you were gonna say that. Show, <laughs> the, <laughs> yeah. show the girls. Yeah, it's 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 something else. Show the girls. <laughs> poor cam. <laughs> it's totally just zoomed in my hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just heard a holy from the couch over it, there. It was really it really happened. Well, the girls took me to a topless show last night, so uh-huh. we're good. Which one? Oh, cool. Uh, X Cowboys. 
Oh, at the where was uh, it? Harris. Harris. Yeah. 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 Um, was it good? Yeah. I mean, what, like, so my wife's a nurse, so they get um like discounted tickets. So we got all three of us for fifteen bucks. Yeah. Total. Wow. That's that was a, that's, that's cheaper than parking in Vegas. That's yeah. definitely cheaper than the show I was going to send you to the <laughs> you know the absinthe the other one. Oh, we've been yeah. the, so no, we went I'm last. You about the other yeah. I've done absinthe. Yeah. So we did that one, and um, now I'm regretting that I didn't just do that one again. We're going to their sister one, the Atomic. Atomic one, yeah. Yeah, the yeah. Atomic Saloon. Saloon. Yeah. Yep, so we're going to do that tomorrow night. That one's cool. It's a little more intimate, like you're really close to the performers. Like they are, they're getting shit on you. Like, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. We, I got front row yeah. on purpose. Oh, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. just wait. Yeah, you'll see. That's a cool show, though, That's too. That's cool. Yeah, it's, it's a sister one to the Absinthe guys. And then there's a new one coming called Disco. Yeah, I was reading about it. Yeah. Look good. Yeah, another, another thing. So We're going out after this, by the way. Oh, yeah, let's go. Yeah, all night. I got all the night. van. I Perfect. Got, I got the van, he says. Let's roll. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Paul Bebeck Show presented by Motorsport.com, Decal Works, and, of course, the uh, folks at uh, Fly Racing as well. Uh, Maxima USA, Pulp 20's Code of Safe. Trevor's in, in the studio here. Uh, thank you for all the support over the years for Maxima as well. Yeah. Uh, appreciate yeah. that. Likewise. Pro Filter going well? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, it's it's good business for us. Yeah. I mean, that, that ready-to-use filter is still kind of in its own little niche category. And yeah. I mean, you hit a price point at $12 for an air, air filter that's ready to go, yeah. throw it in the bike. So, yeah, um, yeah it's it's a... It's a fun brand. Yeah, so. it, it's it's got to be good to work for. Like I told you many times, it's such an iconic brand, Maxima, right? <coughs> oh, I mean, like it's, yeah, it's just pretty cool. The history and and everything behind it, and and it's always, you know, it's rewarding. I mean, it's it's there's a lot of pieces to Maxima. There's, I mean, a lot of work that goes into making Maxima function how it functions. But yeah. you're hard pressed to run into somebody that has you know something negative to yeah. say about the brand. You know, it's always positive. There's always a story. Someone's. Yep you know associated to the brand somehow along the way remembers a product the smell something, the pr- something yeah, you know yeah. so that's that's what i enjoy about it you know it's always a brand you can you can hold your head high working for and you know and you gotta cool. get me and i keep hearing about and I, i've used it before but i've never <laughs> ha- you've never sent it to me i've never had it it's suspension clean oh it's oh it's great i know it's I, i've used it back in the day but mm-hmm. I, I don't have any i mean it's yeah. it's one of the aerosols that's like quietly become a, a top seller. I mean, right, SC1's yeah. in, a, in yeah. a category of its own, right. but the more people, I mean, most people are moving away from using a conventional brake cleaner or contact cleaner to suspension clean for, for yeah. everything. I right. mean, the scent and, I mean, it's Sorry, so, it's, easier it's on so, right. yeah, yeah, it's so non-invasive to any type of surface. So, I mean, you could spray it on paint, matte, carbon, it doesn't yeah. streak it, but if you have any sort of metal or, or, or oil that's on yep. that surface, it's going to pull that away and, I mean, not damage anything, yeah. you know, along the way. So, it's a, it's a cool product. We sell that to just about every team uh, yeah. in some capacity yeah. of bulk, you know, <laughs> they, that they, they use in the shop. It, yeah, yeah, they put tape yeah, on it and yeah. bring it to the races yep. or whatever, right? Absolutely. Um, when, when you were developing that, <clears throat> I was at Pro Circuit at the time. Yep. I remember Bones coming back into the shop excited like a kid. He's like, hey, Paul, check this out. I can spray my fork tube down, and it won't take the Sharpie off. Yep. He was Literally. proud as hell of that. Yeah. <laughs> and that's and that's how it started. Like these you've got four or five guys that are back there and just turn and burn on suspension work. Yeah. And so that I mean, a, a brake cleaner is hard on your nose, oh, the everything. shop, yeah. everything. Yeah. So that stuff again, it's very, very mild on the nose, has a nice citrus smell to yeah. it. And again, it just it evaporates very quickly, so you have a nice dry surface to work with. So like everything yeah. that you're looking for when you're working for or looking for yep. a product to clean anything internal. Yeah. So um, yeah, it's a cool product. No, it's 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 great product. I gotta yep. I gotta get some what i gotta do yeah perhaps your greatest accomplishment though was like 927 day you got ronnie to call into the show yeah we did that was pretty amazing i told you it wasn't gonna happen (laughs) i told you it was gonna i know but ronnie doesn't do anything after five o'clock like i'm I'm like (laughs) there's no way dogger's calling in like he's he's got his own agenda after five whenever i've ever done anything with ronnie it has to be during work hours no we made it happen right so i that was maybe your biggest accomplishment i don't know what you bribed him with maybe uh, what you bribed (laughs) him with or how you got him to to call in but (laughs) <laughs> don't we worry made, about we it. We made it happen. <laughs> yeah. So. And he was great. And don't Dog- ask, don't tell. Right. Dog- you know? I mean, Dogger's, he's a legend, right? Yeah. So yeah, like it, you made it happen. Yeah, I've been, I mean, that's a, a cool part of, of kind of like my story. And I mean, we've talked about it before, yeah. but just, I mean, I've been around Ronnie since I was seven, eight years old. So like my conversations with him have always just been like friends, you yeah. know, like yeah. obviously I've, I've heard over the years the accomplishments and how good he, you know, he was and, yep. and then run into people today that w- have some crazy story or want to <laughs> know about this, yep. you know, specific thing. And so I've been, you know, lucky to be able to just sit down and have a conversation with him, yeah. go fishing with him, whatever. So, right. So no, it's, it's, cool. it's pretty cool for yep. sure. Uh, yep. and, and whether it's pro filter, whether it's Maxima pulp 20, it's code to save as always, uh, Paul Renthal, you are launching a couple of things. Yeah. One we, of them we can't talk about one of them we can. Um, yeah, I don't want to talk about that one that I was showing you specifically this earlier today. 
Not just yet. You showed me both things today. <clears throat> the bicycle one, don't yeah. talk about. And oh. the dirt bike one, let's not talk about. Oh, we yet can't talk either. about either one. No, I but I have another dirt bike one we can't talk about. Yeah, these. Nope. Oh. I got another one. So the last time you were in, you said we could talk about the bicycle thing, but we can't. Yeah, but that's okay. a... All right. You're about 10 days away from that one. Okay. All right. So we'll talk about that then. And yeah. the other thing is... The is other the thing road. is further yes. away. But down what we can talk okay. about is purple bars are coming back. Oh. Yes. Oh. That's, that's going to happen. By popular by, demand. By, uh, by uh, all limited, you loud people limited in or the just DMs, calling Renthal, selling purple bars on eBay for way too much money. Production yeah. or... Um, it, yeah. So it is... It's not necessarily limited, but it is not endless. So it's what I'll call organized <laughs> ordering. Okay, and it's and it's and it's that way because purple is a unique color for us to make. Yeah, like the entire anodized tank has to be cleaned and flushed, and so we want to do it all at once. So yeah. we opened up an ordering window between um, November and January. Took all the pre books. We're now making it all. Then we'll sea freight it here. Everything will be here sometime in April, oh. and then we'll simply wait and see see how it does see how it goes wow. and if it happens again and there's still people that want them we'll do another booking window in november to january and make right. another run but but yeah so it could be the last time we'll I, see you're making them in everything like uh the, more bends this time than last time so okay. five bends in each platform seven eights fat bar and twin wall yep. five of our most popular bends so the first time we did purple we only did three yeah um, so yeah, there'll be more purple out there, and now you have a purple bike. Yamaha has a purple yeah. bike, right? Cowie yeah. has Cowie's a retro got a bike. Retro bike yeah. um, I think John at W is lacing up more purple than he ever has. Yeah. Um, Justin Cooper's kit this weekend was purple, and I thought it was the sickest gear I've seen in a long time. His gear was badass this weekend, and yeah, I I think there's plenty of demand for purple I, still. I've told you this <coughs> out of all the contests we've run. I don't know if anything was more popular than damn That's purple insane. bars. Yeah, like so we'll the, do it. Tell your listeners again. Giveaway. <clears throat> sometime in April, we'll do it again. I'll have to plan another trip up here in April sometime. Yeah, so we'll do more bars and more purple. Yep, um, and we could talk about other that other thing, which people will be really excited for, I think. I'm not. <clears throat> you might not be, but... I'm not, uh, but I'll talk about the it. The market I'll, says I'll, otherwise, yeah. I'll promote it and I'll talk about it, but I'm I'm not excited. Yeah, that's fine. I okay. want your honest opinion. We yeah. know that when we get into advertising with Pulp <laughs> that you're going to say some things. We know that. <laughs> yeah, that's probably true. But the purple bars, yeah. I, I'm not down with purple bars on my bike either. I think it's they look good on your bike. too much purple. Too you much think? purple. I got purple wheels. I got purple graphics. I got a purple seat. Can't have too much purple. That's fair. I, I, I Trevor sees this. Sometimes in the cycling industry, you get these color whack jobs yeah, yeah. that go way too far. Right. And they go stem, hubs, bars, grips, pedals, cranks, and it's like, slow down, dude. This right. thing looks like aftermarket puked on it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, that's a thing. <clears throat> yeah. And so I have, I have hard anodized <clears throat> rear sprocket and bars. Yep. To, and my hubs are sort of that color. Yep. So that all ties together purple with the wheels. purple, purple wheels. And then Worst Connection sent me a purple filler cap and a purple master cylinder cover. Mm. So we put those on just to, just to, yeah. that'll be. Let's not go purple no. fork leg protectors, please. They don't make them. <laughs> they don't make them. But I love those things. I know you do. I don't know why. Yeah, you and Kiefer. They're anti so fork lug, bad. Anti fork I've never lug. seen anyone win a race with fork lugs ever. Fork, fork lug, lug protectors? protectors. Never. I don't think it's happened. Never. Yeah, you're fucked. I, I think you're right. I don't think. They're, I, don't, I don't think. I don't <laughs> think they I have think either. You're right. <laughs> right. I don't think they have either. Uh, uh, but but they do look sweet once they're on the bike. So. Okay. Okay. Uh, lots to talk about when it comes to Renthal, Maxima, or Guts, of course, all on the show. And there's codes to save uh, with uh, Guts and with uh, Maxima as well. So appreciate that. So you're here for the to, to, to kind of yeah, some Yeah, I'm you know. meeting with uh, the sales force of one of our distributors tomorrow. I have a few other meetings with other brands and industry kind of like colleagues. So it's yeah. just a good another good event to connect and collaborate. Um, like I said at the front of the sh of the show, it's I think our biggest non-affiliate or like independent show. Like I, th you know, the Parts Unlimited shows are pretty big. Um, so yeah. yeah, it's just, I think it's a lot of brands sometimes that we haven't heard of that want to try to get a piece of the U S market. So if you walk the Sir show, Ron? it'll be a lot of that. Sir Ron guys. Like, like Andy said, there'll be that <laughs> raw brand. I believe mm -hmm. they, they have a yep. booth. Um, but still the big OEs set up typically yep. and they do product launches and, um, there's always value yeah, in, the, in, in, in face to face connection. The new Tucker Rocky, right? The guys that bought Tucker are all in on this show. So that's interesting yeah. to see what, how that's going to go. That will be interesting. Yeah. They've kind of taken over all of Tucker's kind of traditional marketing spends. So they still are, they're sponsoring the industry party tomorrow night. They have a, a electric bike race tomorrow night yeah. They're Um, yeah, we'll see what their kind of presence looks like. Yep. So yeah. Uh, great, <coughs> great stuff. Uh, arena cross arena cross USA.com. So I don't, have you got following us at all? Bree swept last weekend, and now Peter's points lead is a little less. So mm. Bree was supposed to do Supercross 
Went to Arena Cross, started doing really well. He stayed there, right? Okay. Yeah. So uh, looking forward to doing that. Uh, Brees is on hot streak. It's winning the time qualifying heat races, uh, uh, all the, the one, 1v1 races and more. Uh, and it is cut the, cut the lead down for Kyle Peters. Peters has had some rough luck. He's been cleaned out a little bit as well. He's got to regroup and come out swinging in Reno this weekend, arenacrossusa.com. Brees is on a 450. Peters is on a 250. That was going to be my question. Yeah. Are they still all 250s? Or no. Uh, obviously, yeah, it's yeah. What it, run Just, whatever you yeah, brought. Run what brought. Oh, Either okay. size. So wow. there's a lot of debate on which bike works What's best better, in yeah. arenas, right? And KP's going for his <clears> fifth <throat> title, so that's that's a big big thing for them. Yeah. Arenacrossusa.com. Uh, myself and Denny Stevenson are doing the webcast Friday from Daytona on the arena cross. I gave you shit on Twitter about this. Did you? Yeah. What? Remember I said, oh, you're just going to fly home tomorrow morning? Oh, yeah. Because yeah, you no. shit on Daytona Supercross no, yeah, all the no, time. No, yeah, no, I do shit on Daytona Supercross. <laughs> Have you ever been there? Yeah, one time. Yeah, it sucks, That was right? enough, yep. Yeah, it sucks. Thank you. No. You been there? Mm -mm. It doesn't suck. It was fine. Get, well, get, I, I don't was, just was, agree. Like It was cool for him. us because Brayton won, <laughs> and that was a guts seat, and yeah. we were able to be there okay. before. But were you in row, row 14,000? Oh, no, I was down the in the pits. So was, I was just watching a big Jumbotron in the so, pits. Okay, so, yeah, you just watched a Jumbotron where you could just go home and watch a Jumbotron. Yeah, so right. now I've been to the yeah. Daytona 500 yeah. as a guest of Kyle Larson because uh -huh. we're buddies, okay. and it was just as boring. Yeah. Like I was at the Daytona 500 yeah. in his pit stall watching it on a TV. <laughs> I was like, I could just – we have a house in Daytona. I could have been over at the house a mile away. Yeah. They tell you when you're in the media, they say, they say, oh, you don't like, you can't stand anywhere. And they say, yeah, go to the media room and watch it on TV. That's what they want us to do. <laughs> go in a closed brick building and watch the race on TV. And you're like, wait, I came all the way here to watch it in the media room? Like, it's stupid. Well, yeah, Anyways. But, I so, mean, I feel like it's still, though, like, because of the sport, it was a bucket list thing. Like, even the NASCAR, yeah. they did, they did yeah, Tone of 500. No, I like, that. I went, but I'm never going to go back. Like, right. that was it. And I so, was there. I'm going to make my return to Daytona Supercross for the first time in, I think, three or four years. I've been I think it's been more than that. I've been promised some VIP treatment. Oh, they're so going to let you into the 500 Club. We'll see. No, I don't think so. That's the VIP treatment. Yeah, I think I've got something, I think I might have something a little better. What's better than 500 <laughs> Club? I, I, I'll, I'll let you know <laughs> if it comes together. Okay. Uh, but I am calling the Arena Cross Friday night with Denny Stevenson and a bunch of guests. Are you going to be there? I don't No. I don't think so. Okay. Well, if you were there, we're going to pull in people for the – for guests. Oh. So me and Debo, Arena Cross. Is legends. it like uh, last time they had Arena Cross in Daytona, it was like a full on sand track? Like black uh, sand? It's where the Arena where the Enduro Cross used to be. It's in that building. You ever been to that? I went to that I, a few I, years I want to say it's, a, but it's, I, it's downtown somewhere. Yes, it is downtown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, check it out, arenacrossusa.com. Me, myself, and Danny going at it uh, yeah. on the webcast. Should be great. I'm looking forward to talking to Danny, of course, and he's going to come in. Danny, we're going to call that race on Friday. We're going to go to Daytona Supercross on Saturday. If Danny's still alive, he will come in Monday uh, here oh, for the show. Wow. Oh, he'll so, still be at Razzles on Monday. That's what I'm thinking, too. <laughs> it, may, it may not work, but uh, Kyle Peters and Ryan Brees right now, that is the battle to watch right now. And uh, and I think a bunch of Supercross guys are going to show up on that Friday night oh, to yeah. race also. Take some money. Yeah, yeah some of the privateers, right? So That'll be good. 1,000% chance Nagy is there. You Chase know, that money. Yeah, for sure. So thanks to the Arena Cross USA guys for coming on the show as well. Get your tickets. Get more info there. Stay tuned for Friday webcast uh, as well. Um, all right. Uh, well, actually, we got Nash on one for Paul. Uh, mm. Nash, go ahead. Gentlemen, gentlemen. What's up, Nash? Great show. <laughs> Trevor, Paul, Andy, Greg, all great people. What about Clayton? They're awesome. Clayton's a good dude, too. Okay. Yeah, come on now. <laughs> all right. <laughs> okay. Everybody's cool. Listen, people that love the sport, love dirt bikes, and love having fun. Mm -hmm. Yes, they so do. So the, the thing that I want to dig into, and it's an open question, is did did anybody get a chance to speak with Lars about any type of things that they did different for the start? And, and Paul, I like rapping with you when you, you go into uh, what you would experience in, from Pro Circuit's point of view. Like, how do you guys break down a start when you're watching a rider, like the mechanical side of the start? And did you guys, any, did anybody in the, the room right now notice anything different between what Chet was doing in the first couple of races to what he's doing now? So it's kind of like a three-part question. We talked about this earlier. Um, and to me, it was finally the same condition that Jet has been kind of like excelling in and his bike's been set up for. So like, I saw his start slipping just when it was raining right and we talked about the technology he has mm -hmm. on his motorcycle and the system that he goes through and um so i just think that it was a con change in condition that it was back to what he is best at and what his bike is tuned best for and that's why he got <laughs> such a great start again 
Um, but typically, like <laughs> when, when you talk about analyzing start, yeah, we're just we're watching, we're seeing if there's wheel spin, we're seeing if the reaction time's late, um, what like if they lean or if they get a pop up or something and it puts them into the wheelie. Like you just look at a bunch of things. And I, I I listened to Forkner speak about it as well. I don't know if it was on your mm -hmm. podcast or what, Steve, but. He made a comment about his bike last year compared to this year, and he said last year it was almost too aggressive. And I think Kitchen said something about that about his Yamaha as well compared to his PC Cowie this year, that last mm. year it was just so aggressive that the it was tough to control the initial pop, like the initial let mm. your cl clutch out. So, um, yeah, I I would say, yeah, that's kind of what this, we, we nerd out on when it comes to starts. Hearing you say that, does Honda out of everyone, to the best of anyone's knowledge, do they have the most access to the most data? in terms of, you know, measuring that, that zero to 20 foot or zero to 10 foot jump out of the gate. Like you, and I, Paul, I, I picking up what you're throwing down. I saw him spin as we all did incredibly, uh, on those, especially they showed it this weekend when they reshared the start from San Fran, he, it was like, he had grease on his rear wheel or something. I'm like, dude, that was a mistake. Well, and, um, and we're making large assumptions that he even went down there and executed his same technique in the wet. That's a giant, mm -hmm. giant assumption that we could be totally wrong on, and mm -hmm. um, but I still think it's it's worth mentioning because it's still a, a again when you are when you're using a start map and using a tachometer and all these things you're doing it a certain way so when you can't do it your certain way and you have to do it a different way that's what, that also can contribute to a bad start, so. You know, but there's some guys out there. I think a lot of the older school guys, like, I wonder if Eli's using a start map. I bet he's not. I heard Phil talk about he does not mess with any start map stuff. Yep. He's full technique guy, and Phil's a fantastic starter. And that's, mm -hmm. I think, use, being able to use your exper experience to adjust for the condition that's behind the gate. Sometimes you can't give it as much gas as you, you can in other situations, things like that. Yeah, I I, I know it's something that fires Steve up, the, the point in which it's dumbed down tremendously you know like all these x factors get removed out of it but like you what you're saying paul is a guy that really knows the mechanics of a start and it's so complex and when a guy gets good at it it is really an art and it's yeah. awesome to see so. i mean i i do believe there's good starters and bad starters but i also am with steve that the start grades the start buttons the all these things you're taking away the value like the variables and you're 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 lessening that good starters uh, advantage and I do believe yeah that it's going to contribute to more first and crashes because you're making it easier for more people to get a better consistent start yeah I mean yeah. again like not only like you missed out like the, the, the RPM dashboard that tells you from get and mm -hmm. those guys right that tells you the gear you're in rear hole shot devices in some cases well, yeah. not many guys yeah. have them but they're out there front hole shot devices starting maps themselves blocks you can use blocks yeah. now no matter yeah, how yeah, tall yeah. Or, or short you are you can bring all your blocks mm -hmm. in you know, I mean, just think of all the things that you got to do before. You, you know, the next thing we're going to ask to put the grate on the plastic. That'll be the next thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we don't get yeah. a big hole hey, in front. Right, right. That'll be the next evolution. Yeah. Yo, I, I often thought and there's no way it could pull it off. But I was always thinking like all you guys that were mechanics and the, the, the sharp incentive guys that you are a way that you could get something on that piece of plastic to get a bite, it would be so obvious somebody would see the second you did it. No, not but necessarily. You, know you can have a rag pre-soaked with something. Like, you can mm -hmm. pull little tricks, yeah. But mm. you got to be careful or when you're fighting for a title. Like, everyone is yeah. looking at the rules, yeah. right? But, yeah, but like, I, or maybe when Steve was running the hot dog race and letting the dogs go, he could be, you know, putting a piece of sandpaper on somebody's sure. yeah. in the plastic. <laughs> that was you a know, great day. You never know. You that, know, I could see him doing that. That was I mean, top five just, moment of my life. You know, when I dropped the gate of the wiener dog race. <laughs> mm. There's a story of um, Larry Brooks, like, building little little knuckles oh, at the yeah. end of tabletops yeah. for MC to hop off of in practice. Yeah. Uh, he would build and yeah, try to walk. I, I don't know, Nash. <laughs> this was honestly going to be my race tech rant tonight. Like, my race tech rant was going to be, yeah, like, starts. When, starts. And yeah. when do we stop this? Yeah. Like, I'm all for it. Like, Me too. Uh, I, I, I kind of wish the greats were gone for that yeah. reason. Yeah. I think it would be safer and, and you're – Why yeah. are the greats there? Because it's just teams – are, it's just in a manner of uh, making it easier. Yes. That's why they're there. Because I think teams asked for them in Supercross because we had them outdoors. In my, or no, it was well, fli no, it was flipped. It was it the was other flipped. way around. It was the yeah. other way. Yeah. That's why they asked for them outdoors. Outdoors is be, is beside me why we've gone down that road. I mean, it's because it's the same condition know, as Supercross. Just, so now they can, can yeah. build one spec and yeah, why do, do it thirty one times why instead of test again and half and half. To, yeah. yeah, it's 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 all like so. What point? Like, what are we doing? At what point is it just too much? Like. 
we're becoming like there, if you follow F1, uh, you follow MotoGP, mm. which I don't, but I ask mm. my friends about it. You follow NASCAR, uh, and and you know more about that. Like what they they don't, even though it's an open series, there's plenty of rules, right? And whenever yeah. things get a little too gnarly, top speeds or advantages by other OEMs or whatever, they dial the rules back to 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 make it more of a playing mm -hmm. even playing field. We seem to be like fuck it. Like, just do whatever you want as long as it's the CCs and your stock frame. You know what I mean? We don't really, like, yeah. the, the sanctioning yeah. body has never looked and at anything electronic-wise. Do whatever you guys yeah, want. Yeah, I think that's hard, man. That's There's so many different, you know, like, I, I've heard spec ECU talk within our sport before, and I think it would be awful. I think it would, yeah. like, you can't, you just can't do it because well, the, you would have legally, to have, they're legally, open, yeah, yeah, if yeah. Some, something goes wrong and you injure somebody, that's ha they have to use a spec ECU, you yeah. have a giant lawsuit, right? Yeah, for sure. But, I mean, well, I do love the greats for the sake of loading the gate and the show, and, but, yeah, sometimes the efficiencies or changes that, to improve the show come at the cost of racing, and I don't yeah. love that so and much. I, yeah. And like I, like I said, <laughs> uh, again, I talked to the Feld guys about, hey, these, I said this, I've been saying this for years. It, it it's going to cause more first turn crashes. It really is. Uh, mm -hmm. They're going to keep everybody yeah. for all. Everybody's going to get the same jump. Everybody's going to come down. All of that shit. There's going to be less. I don't room think to even move. think you need data to see that. Well, like, they tell me there's no, no data to show that, and I'm uh, like, you could find. I mean, that's uh, tough, right? You have yeah. to have to find like the similar first turn with great and no great, and yeah. then and then you only get five starts but a night it or something make or six sense starts. That it, it's going to cause more crashes. I, I think mean, it's doesn't common it just sense. Make common sense. It's common sense. Yeah. So. Well, it, 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 an object can't occupy the same, you know, space at the same time. I mean, you thrust five people into the preferred spot, like you're saying, Steve, you're going to have a problem. Yeah, and, yeah. I mean, and, and and again, it's you're you love the sport. It's not. I don't think you're talking crazy talk. I think it's 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 lessening the component that makes the sport so raw. And like, and why did they put the greats in? Because it was too much work to groom the start and keep the start good. Do you know what I mean? It got taking it got, time, it or got, we copied MXGP. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, 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 I heard it was a gate. I heard it was a dirt other. maintenance issue, like just the, the sure. The, the, I mean, it's an issue, but it's like, do you want to fix an issue that removes so much of the, yeah. of like the, yeah. there's yeah. so yeah. many tricks yeah. and and, add, yeah. and advantages down there if you know what to do right. and like like that sucks. Like yep. you're just taking so many tools out of your. So when does it yeah. when does it trickle down from that? Because like you think about. The, amateur racing yeah game? so the sport wants to do things with futures and all these things and start you know we've got multiple rounds each year now yeah. and they want to recreate mm -hmm. at an amateur level you they know, got what, greats at mini o's what to experience so they do they do right? have greats at mini o's so yeah. you, th you think about your entire <coughs> life you're wired for a dirt start or in some tracks mm -hmm. there's still a concrete mm -hmm. start concrete, yeah. and mm -hmm. I, again like maybe to the general supercross racer he doesn't really have an opinion on if it's great or dirt he's not yeah. even paying attention to it he's only concerned about the first turn and if people are going to crash or not because he wants to see the carnage or mm -hmm. whatever comes of it but the people that i guess it follow it more closely or or mm -hmm. pay attention to that sort of thing like it's removed a piece of motocross and supercross that i can appreciate like yeah, yeah. that yeah. part yeah. of you and your mechanic down there and i know my mechanic knows exactly how i want this gate packed yeah and i know he's going to yeah. go down there and stomp the shit out of that thing and make sure yep. it's exactly it's how I want it. And we're going to set the tire exactly how we practice. Mm -hmm. And yep. I have a specific technique that I know gives me an advantage mm -hmm. over this guy. And the, you know what I mean? That's yeah. a big yeah. piece of everything, yeah. Yeah. you There's know, that, that, that happens in this sport. And, and that's been removed. So, like, I mean, yeah, you get, I mean, the rut after the gate. Okay, that's still a variable now, you know, mm -hmm. like, and, yeah. and that's a big part of selecting the gate. But, you know, it's, you're still, I think you get, I think the, the rut after the gate is not as big of a component now with the grate on the backside of the gate, you know? Oh, for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're getting a better drive. I, I, mean, it's sure I, don't, I think it's yeah. overlooked, yeah. you know what I mean? And, and I just I think it's taken a big piece away from, from yeah. starting. Race tech ramp. Yeah. Make, yeah. make starts non-grade again. I, 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 yeah. Why not? Yeah. I want to see one boot, one tennis shoe. I want all that stuff. Back. I love it, I mean, too. Yeah, yeah. Like you that can, was like, yeah, I broke a sweat down there because nobody wanted to take that shitty gate with the rock in it, but I remove the rock made the gate perfect and now it's a great gate look right. at the position right yeah. but nobody wanted to fuck with it because it was a lot of work and it was crooked as hell yeah, yeah. but you go in there and you fix paul, it what, <clears throat> paul what was the best thing you saw anybody try to pull off down there back in the day like uh i mean like, i've 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 anybody, i've obviously. watered my gate before with the rag around my neck 
Like I oh, went down no. there and I was it was super hot, so yeah. I had a really cold rag around yeah, my yeah. neck, and I just simply went like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And watered my gate and got some nice tacky dirt. <laughs> no, I've seen it. At, I've seen it at Loretta's. Like the dad will set the water bottle down, like in a hurry, rush and kick it over so it dumps yeah. into the gate. Like yeah. you've seen my it all. Oh, my yeah. favorite move. This oh, was yeah. this is the pro move. My favorite favorite one. If you have a good gate pick, you get to your gate mm -hmm. and you take all the shit in your gate, all the shit you don't want, and you put it in the gates next to you. Like all the rocks, yeah, all the yeah. dust, even yeah. the sit where your where your boots are, put it in the two gates next to you because, number one, it'll make the guys that have good gate picks bypass those gates, mm -hmm. not just because you're yeah. a good rider and yours mm -hmm. and they don't want to be next to you, but yeah. because like, yeah. holy shit, this one has yeah. a lot of work to do. Right. So you get mm -hmm. two shittier guys next to you mm. because you create more work for them to prep Why? their gate. Okay. Not bad. I, I did uh, that a lot. I did, Mind <laughs> games. I did the contact cleaner in a on a rag in a mm -hmm. Ziploc. A couple yep. times, a few times. On the plastic. Yeah, on the plastic. For the yeah. plastic, I did that a few times. I mean, I was so crazy that I would send Dean out with one tire in practice, switch it to a new tire for practice two because I believed in softening the moose. Oh, yeah. So we would run the Moto 1 tire was practice two, practice and two, yeah. Moto 2 tire got was it. practice one tire. Right, right, got it. Yeah, and yeah, Brian yeah. Fleck Makes loved sense. it because I would only use two tires were a day. You, uh, <laughs> well, were, was any of that thinking like the round knob, more rubber to the yeah. dirt? Yeah. Well, I thought it would. It's Never less mind. of a chance of it s spinning on the plastic if the edges broke a little right, bit. Right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. Yeah, Wyndham was big on that. Randy told me about that. Wyndham liked to run a more not a rounded edge. But yeah, something, but something without a sharp edge. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, outdoors, yeah. I be yeah. I believed in breaking the moose in outdoors. I thought it squatted more and had more plant if the moose was softer. Right. Uh, thanks, Nash. Yeah. Thanks for the call, man. Uh, hey, hey, well, first of all, thank you. Th thanks for everything everybody does. You got a great group of guys there. Thank you, everyone, for all that you do for everyone. Uh, uh, final question: Who is more intense, Brooks or Mitch, at the height of his power? Oh, Brooks. Mitch at full. Nah, Brooks. Yeah, Larry. Brooks was... all day. Yeah, he took people's wheels off, dude. Yeah, Brooks all day. <laughs> Mitch was just angry, I think. But yeah. I think intense intensity. Brooks has it. Yeah. And can Brooks still be bribed with Mountain Dew? Oh yeah, still drinking Mountain Dew like it's crazy. He told me he quit, and then okay, I walked yeah. into a lounge and there was a twelve pack. <laughs> I'm like, what happened to you quitting Mountain Dew? He's like, oh, I, I that was I, I quit. Stop. Mm -hmm. I, all right, I know what I'm bringing to Buds this summer. All right, cheers, boys. Uh, Go get them. Have fun. Thanks, thanks Nash. Nash. Appreciate See it. Thank Nash. you. Later, bro. Uh, thanks to Nash for calling in. That's my race tech rant was just the starts, and we got into it. Uh, stop it. Like, I just – I don't know. And I don't know how you monitor it. I don't have a lot of trust in the AMA to do this, right? Uh, the They're AMA trying. is improving. They're trying. They're getting Bone better is every there. year. Yeah. Uh, Wiggins, Dana, uh, Dana Wiggins is helping out. Dean Baker is helping out. They're bringing some guys from the NASCAR shop to yeah. help out. Yeah. They brought over some guys with a fucking gun to see the – thickness of aluminum nice you know to measure the thickness of aluminum frame so they're like checking stuff it's yeah. good so they're doing better but i don't know if i trust them totally to to monitor this and fix it but man just i think the easiest thing to do is just get rid of the grates never I, mind I, electronics i, I would that. love it yeah get that is the easiest thing yeah. and yeah. i don't think you can do the electronic thing that would be so messy and right giant book of rules but yeah. take the grates away too i'm yeah. i'm into it because yeah. yeah man i think i think it's good and i i, I loved it when we even had like, you know, remember going to Southwick, that concrete or yeah, asphalt, asphalt? That was the most yeah, unique yeah. stuff I've ever started on, right. right? And then and then Glen Helen was the slickest concrete the I've ever concrete been ever. on in my life, right? And then you'd go somewhere else, or Ponca City was like, you could drop the drop the clutch wide open, you wouldn't spin on their concrete. It was yeah. so old and, like, rough. Right, right. And I loved yeah. that about all the different conditions that you see. It makes mm -hmm. makes you better. You yeah. go to Mammoth, starting first gear. Yeah. Like easy. Yeah, because it was super yeah, slick, too. Slick. You had to get your well, wheel hot. At I'm not saying bring back concrete starts. Those, they suck. But <laughs> Yeah, no, that's yeah, fair. Yeah, and I'm sure right. tire companies right. hate it. But my point is yeah, yeah. the difference, difference in condition, it really just makes it yeah. feel like a, like a, this is a championship. Yeah. Yeah, and I agree. And that's one thing I like about MXGP, right? They go all over the world, and they go all over track conditions, and they'll have tracks as hard as this desk, and then they'll go to Lomo. Yeah, exactly. You know? I do like that, too. Right. I like the fact that it changes things up for sure. Race Tech Rant, Pulp MX24, code to save. Race Tech, great guys down there. The original Gold Valve started out in the 1980s and uh, still going now. <laughs> they got service centers all across America. Pulp MX24 is code to save. Race Tech. Race Tech Rant, make motocross and on great again. Let's do that. Let's kind of let's do that. And I'm not just saying it because of this start this weekend. I mean, look, that was a bad deal. But again, like I said earlier, the 450s got through it no problem. So it wasn't like it was a dangerous start. You know, yeah. it, it is sketchy, but it wasn't by nature dangerous. And I'm not saying the start grates caused the crash this weekend, but I just think in general, it makes sense to 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 be safer and not have the grates. Yeah. And no one will listen to me, and no one will care. Yeah. And MXGP won't change. No. And then no. we'll be at a disadvantage MX, when we send but, Team USA You know, over. when people say MXGP, I'm like, yeah, they got 21 guys on the line. 
you know? Yeah. Some races, they got 21 guys there. Like, they're not always – there's not 40 – well, I don't know if there's 40 <laughs> fast American dudes either, but it seems like MXGP doesn't have the depth that, that – their front – the top of the front is – At flyaway like, races, 100%. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, please check out Race Tech. Thank you to Racetech.com. Let's check out the motorsport.com tweet at talent segment coming up as well. Uh, I think we've covered just about everything in my notes. Um, did I miss anything as far as the Detroit Supercross? Do you guys mm, anything I don't else think catch so. your eye? Okay. I don't think so. Yeah. Andy, what, um, working with, uh, um, uh, Kenny Roxon, pretty nice. Yep. Nice, nice, uh, nice to have him on board, you guys. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. been there before too when yeah. he was at RCH. Right. So, but I mean, honestly, like for a guy that always has historically got on the podium on any brand, you know, and always, even when he wins, he's like, you know, we still got work, you know, improvement yeah. to do to the bike. He's yeah. always looking for it. The one thing we've never had to do is cater to him on the seat. Yeah. Like just, this is our first year working with Dylan and, you know, at the Phoenix deal, yeah. you know, and it was like a lot of like, we, oh, we need the ribs a half inch here. Now we need the, you know, like there was <laughs> yeah, a lot yeah, more yeah. like right. he was, you know, yeah. way more in tune with how he wanted his seat. So it's kind of funny to see how, like, Kenny, of all things, like, the seat is so big on the Suzuki, there's a lot of areas to point the finger at. Like, yeah. this thing needs to be so many millimeters taller yeah. or wider yeah, or yeah. this or right. that. And never once, he's never complained about the fabric, the placing of the ribs, nothing. Do we get any hump seats anymore? Do oh, they're we... so popular right now? Really? Well, the the speed bump, like the, the, the bump? bubba bump. Yeah. AP's on a hump now. Who is? AP. Oh, is he? Oh, Dylan, I okay. Dylan has one. Uh, yeah. Both Rockstar guys are running them. Yeah. So they're uh, back. Oh, yeah. They're coming back. Yep. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, Malcolm, he's going all out. His is 35 millimeters tall. And then um, let's see, Christian's is 23. So. Do you send them seats with humps in them already? Uh, no, but we manufacture the bump. Oh, like it's a so port foam. It. Like it's not like the everybody else. Like oh, we just use a crossbar pad. Yeah, no, we actually manufacture a bump. And then the oh, mechanic cool. glues it from the back of the seat. At where, yeah, where but on their covers, we sew in like where the bump's supposed oh, to be, yeah. so oh, the fabric wow. will perfectly Ooh, lay flat. Sick. So yeah. Is that something a customer can get done? Um, unfortunately, no, because oh. we'd have to have know where they need the bump because yeah. each rider has yep. their bump in a different spot. Right, right, you right. know. Okay, the bumps are back. But to like when we install them, like ours look like it's sewn in because we know like the technique. Yeah. You know, so what if a customer? I saw some product one time. I don't know where I saw it, but it's like a Velcro bump. You can move it. Oh what yeah. What if a customer what? goes and handles that? Yeah, and figures out, hey, I want my bump at this position. Then could they? Get yeah. It so for you? they'll like if they call into the shop or email, McKenna will tell them to leave an order comment of like where you want your bump placed. Yeah. And then we we will put it in that spot if they order a complete seat. Sick. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. But something new um, when you asked about guts earlier is we are coming out. We're debuting the seat. At the show, we did a poll on it, like a like a voting poll yeah, yeah. A, a couple of days ago yeah. on our Instagram, um, a seat cover where it's we use RF welding, so there's no sewing. Okay. So and it has like a pattern. So we're like voting on the pattern. Okay. That's something we're working on. We hope to have that to the customer like yeah. middle of the summer. Okay. But the advantage of it is is that there's less stitching. So we're eventually going to get where there's no stitching. So then it should be more waterproof. Yep. Sick. But the disadvantage is it is less grippy than a standard rib seat. And um, it's only a, you can only do a two tone color, like you can't customize yeah. it like with three different panels yeah, like yeah. you can now. Yeah, right. So that's where water enters is through the stitching. Okay, yeah, because yeah. I remember so many times outdoors, I'm like, don't wash your seat in between motos because yeah. your guy will come back with a black ass because it's full, you know, super yeah. super wet. Um, I don't know if you saw my Instagram, but I was getting a lot of heat about my oh, seat cover installation. It's not good. We we had like a panic attack when we seen it. We're like, <laughs> yeah, it's not good. Why didn't he just send it to us and have I us don't install know. it? I felt like that would be too much of an ask for you. And I'm a, used to be a factory mechanic, so I'll install my own seat. But it it was a little funky because of that Yamaha ridge yeah. that, that sits there. You have to pull it tight, and then there's that plastic ridge. You can barely get the staple in there, and then you have your black you have the black part that goes in the corner. And I yeah, it was yeah. not not great, Andy. Yeah, but Dark Side got his just fine. Uh, yeah, but there's no way he did that. <laughs> There's no way he did that. And we didn't install his either, but I mean, like, is it purple your seat cover? Yeah. And so is Dark Sides. He's copied him. Yeah, that's, that's all do he does. Do you do you like to hit your staples with the color your seat is before you put them in your staple gun? So if you have a black seat, you sharpie the top of your staples before you put them in the staple gun, so you pump black staples into your seat. No. Just this is what this is the I'm championship level. I'm just letting I'm you know what that? the championship level's at, Steve. Don't look at my seat cover right now. You'd be disgusted with it. Okay, I'm just it's letting not, you know. It's not good. So. Was that the greatest mechanic? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> that's that pretty much covers it. But so I drop. need to take it off and redo it or but stretch it one, out a little. That's bit. one thing yeah. that we yeah. we've really noticed that with the seat is that 
the I demand really for a complete seat. Like yeah. I would, like we don't have your current model yet. We're yeah. in the process of having our factories make the plastic base for us. Yep. And they should be soon. Like we should have. Well, they're in Chinese New Year right now, so yeah, I don't know. Maybe in two or three months, we'll okay. have the plastic bases. But I want to be able to sell a yeah. complete seat to the customer. Yeah. Where, I mean, that's the biggest hinder is why people don't replace their seat because they just don't. They're afraid to do it or don't want to do it or. They just ride it with the stock seat, even though it's uncomfortable or yeah. not tall enough, or it's too tall, or they don't they don't want to do any of that work. So if we have a complete seat option, then they yeah. know it's going to show up, you know, right. nice and wrinkle free. And well, it's so much like glue on grips versus lock on grips. Yeah, it's the yeah. same thing. Yeah, dude, I, I would ride glue on grips till you could see the handlebar like halfway down it because I just didn't want to do it. Now I just barely get any wear, and I I get new grips and just put them on, tighten them down, we're good to go. See what I mean? Sad. Mm. Well, I, I needed a I needed a lock on seat because <laughs> I did not do a good job on my seat and and I just I I thought I did what, oh yeah anyways anyways but it looks great thank you for that yeah um, no we we were nervous at first and then somebody I think it might have been my buddy Gary I think he was the one as I was like oh we got to call Steve I want him to take the post down like I was like sweating and some and somebody texted me in a group text and said dude Steve's bike looks terrible and then the other guy goes don't worry like read the read the comments like people are blasting him yeah. saying like those things are easy to install how'd you do that yeah, like yeah, 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 they yeah. were like sticking up for us and i was like yeah. Yeah, okay there's like, there's like okay. nice seat cover and i'm like yeah man i don't know i was just in a row <laughs> i did it in like 10 minutes <laughs> and it wasn't great so um also i ran it i didn't <laughs> cover your ears paul <laughs> oh boy i didn't take the stock cover off oh gosh that's one thing that <laughs> oh pisses my me off god <laughs> that's <laughs> so i just really wanted to get this thing done I'll say. So <laughs> I, I ran into So let's do it shitty. <laughs> well, <laughs> why half-ass when we can go I, all ass? I, uh, exactly. I, uh, I hit so I eat ass. I was hitting some staples with the you know the, the new staples hitting the old staples. Yeah, it was a whole thing, Paul. You mm. suck, Matthew. So anyway, so yeah, everybody, I want everybody to know that Guts Racing, uh, yeah, they, they make quality seat covers. Just don't look at my install on mine. Was I the greatest mechanic? No. Okay, that's enough of that. <laughs> yeah, he's we're, he's, we're hit, it. Yeah. he's yeah. hit it a few no, times. That's all, my, that's all the, whatever it does to make me look shitty. But the purple, the man, like that's hot like, right now. Purple's yeah, like, hot right oh, now. Oh, yeah. we are selling so much purple for all brands. Like yeah. it doesn't matter. Really? Yeah. Well, every, every I love it. Back out. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna help. We're gonna help each other. Keep uh, purple going. Yeah. All right. <laughs> like when you called about the sur the handlebars for the Suron. Yeah. Like out of nowhere, I get a phone call from Paul, and I oh, it must be the golf tournament or whatever. And you said like, yeah, it's what are you guys doing about baby. Yeah. Sirons. Uh, we got a call from uh, Rusty who's got a good good question and it gets the heat off of me. What's up, Rusty? Oh, thanks for taking my call, Steve. Yeah. Look, got a huge question that just drives me fucking banana sandwich, okay? Okay. Is, I'll be watching TV. We'll talk about bike setup. Oh, we made some changes here, there, blah, blah, blah. And I tell my buddy, I'm like, why in the fuck can't we just hear what they did, you know? <laughs> say, you went, say, say, say you went two clicks slower on your rear rebound and drop the forks two millimeters. Yeah, but they the don't know whatever. that. They don't necessarily know that. Like, they just tell the rider or the rider tells the team, hey, man, it's kind of kicking a little bit coming in that turn, and and then they, the, the team goes away and does the changes. So that not – I would say half the time the rider doesn't know. Yeah. So you're trying to say, oh, okay, that answers a lot of my questions. So, in other words, the riders half the time are dipshits, don't even know what they're doing to their Well, bike. they just explain a feeling. And then the smart people go off and try to fix the feeling. I, I would say it's more common yeah, in the two fifty class like that car. Yeah. that that they don't know what the changes made. They just relay a feeling. And I would say it's more in the four fifty class where they're like, "Hey, let's go down to the third line on the forks, or let's go to yeah. you know one hundred two sag instead of one hundred five or something." Sometimes the teams don't more want the riders, riders. To, to tell them because they don't want the rider to th th yeah. let them know. Yeah, yeah. The team knows what. Give to us do. your feeling. Yeah. Give us your feeling. Yes. And, 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 and yeah. some riders are so – they could say the same words and mean two yep. different things. Absolutely. So that's why it's bunch. super important to, like, make sure everyone's using the same terms. But I will say this, Rusty. You have a point, though. Like, uh, listen, I'm not a huge NASCAR guy, but I've watched enough – No, no, no not, neither am I. I'm just using it. No, 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 but I'm saying – like, they'll, they'll tell you on the broadcast, like, what they're doing to the car. That's what I'm saying. Like, verbatim. And, and, and right. each car ain't the same just like he's dirt biking. The same. Right. So it's not like you're giving it's away like any you're information yeah. to your competition you're, by saying I went a little lower in my sack. That's not what they think, though. If they come, if they, if they interview somebody and they're like, hey, we did this to the bike and it made a huge change, they think that that's going to be shown on TV and they'll see it at the other semi. And yeah, that's it, what they. That's how I they know, think, though. I know, but in NASCAR, they're like, hey, we went three court, three turns out on the 
whatever the fuck it the is. The track bar the track or whatever. Bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, exactly. but I'll tell you something about car They'll racing, tell though. tell you exactly what they did to it, whereas in mo- and, and it's just the same as in motocross. Yeah. Not each car is the same as each dirt bike ain't the right. same. So just because I went three clicks slower on my rear rebound don't mean that's going to make your bike any that's better true. if you do the up. same fucking thing. Rusty's <laughs> fucking fired up. <laughs> I love it, Rusty. I love it. Go yeah, go. I, did. I, go. Just don't, I just don't get why we can't get more... Nope. Uh, Info for, for, for hardcore fans that are like, man, I want to know yeah. what they did to the bike. Hey, hell, you don't even got to tell us the exact measurements, but say you dropped your forks a little bit. Okay, and so what about this? On the rear he, he, what about this? So I know from talking to some people that Tomax, Eli was not happy with his bike setup. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And his arms oh, yeah I'm, I'm up to date on okay. it all. I hear you. Okay. And and, uh, and uh, his arms pumped up, but we're not happy with his bike. Instead of getting anything out of the Tomac camp or Star or anybody else. This is mostly driven by Tomac. He's just okay to let all of us think he sucks. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like there's no explanation. Right. Like, he's okay with that. He's Eli Tomac. He doesn't care. I'm not saying he owes us explanation, but you know, the press release was the most vague thing ever. Can we? No, I'm can, with you. Can, it's horrible. Can we get a? Man, my bike didn't work very well tonight. That led into some arm pump, and I didn't have a good night. We'll be back at Glendale. We don't even get that. Like they're my happy. My forks were too stiff on the bottom half of the stroke. Well, you don't even got to say that. But anyways, you know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever got that from Eli? No. Uh, um, just, just exactly. Something. Yeah, not I, too I much. Yeah, that I, that's just is fans. you know. Yeah. But I'm saying. But I get. I mean, these I, riders. I get it. Eli's fine with all of his fans thinking he just sucks. And he's fine with it. <laughs> yeah, he is. He's fine with it. Like, yeah, whatever. because it's like yeah. the Chad Reed thing. He doesn't right. admit yeah. any fault yes. that way. Right. Right. Because there is no yeah, fault in his yeah, head. Yeah. Like, it was just like, hey, this is a weird yeah. thing. I'll fix it next weekend, yeah. and I'll be back right, on the podium right. next weekend. But go ahead, Andy. You were going to say about yeah, car well, racing. Yeah, and this could be the same. Paul can answer this for riders. But, like, in the auto racing world, there's I would say there's at least 50% of the time that the, the driver tells the crew there's something wrong with the car. The crew goes back, and they'll even on NASCAR, oh, they did – you know, two turns of track bar, whatever they didn't do it. It's all mental. Like yeah. we, uh, us, car, like in car racing, mm-hmm. that was the most mental sport I've yeah. ever been a, bar, a part of. It's called the Purcell. And so I would, I would be nights where I would tell my crew guys like, Hey, th- this is what's happening. And I don't want this shock on the car. We win the race. We're washing at the car wash. They, they would hand me a beer and say, you might want to go take that shock off. And I look and it's the one I said, do not put on the car. <laughs> and we won, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know? And so I don't know if Paul can speak on this for the, no, for the top dudes that like where, they're like, hey, you know, AC comes in. Hey, man, this is how the bike is, yada, yada. And the crew's like, yep, we got you, bro. And they're over there yeah, tinkering, called, but they're not doing anything. That's called the Purcell. But and, uh, they did that a few times with Christoph. Yeah, and Just, as long as the rider, as long as it's in your head, so good, that it's better, yeah. it's better. Yeah, it's better. Yeah. So, I, I've seen I've seen both riders. Like, Because, for instance, you couldn't do something like that to, the, to Tedesco. He would know. Or Timmy. Or Timmy. I don't know. I yeah. haven't worked with right, Timmy in that right. way. But, like, you couldn't do it or to Reed. Ivan. If you told him that, hey, we're going to go, you know, too stiffer, and you went too softer, he would know. Like, and But there's other riders where I've seen Bones turn it in twice and then turn it back twice and say, go try that. Well, and well, then they come me. back and say, that was it. It was so much better. Yeah. It just depends on the guy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, what blows me away is the MXGP guys. Now, they're really picky about their seats, and they literally will ask us for a 2 mil change on a seat height. And I'm like, wow. really? Just your fabric two is mil. 2 mil. That's gnarly. Like, yeah. W- how do you even feel that when you're riding? You're you're bouncing on your seat. Like, yeah, yeah. how do you yeah, even yeah. know that we actually really did two mil or not? Yeah. Like, yeah, you measured it. So to prove that and, we did it, I got a similar story. So like, when a handlebar comes off the bender, it's typically you know you're bending. You know, there's vari- there's variance, yeah, variance and yeah. that variance is sometimes one to two. Two, two millimeters. But when someone is comparing a bend to me and they said, "Well, this one's two millimeters taller," this one, when when it's anything below two, I kind of just don't listen to you. I kind of think it's the same. Like that's such a to 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 speak to your point. That is such a minute change that I almost don't know that people can. So T dags, full of shit. Two millimeters is full of shit. Yeah, <laughs> two millimeters is full of shit. I'm kidding. I'm not. I don't yeah. know. What he said. He's just T dags in his bars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> no. Uh, thanks, Rusty. Good points. Thanks for calling, man. I'm just saying, even a working slow guy like me notices two mil in the forks, but I hear you. Yeah, th- that's what on the forks, absolutely. Forks, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. different. All like right, Rusty. two mil Thanks fork height. Yeah. Thanks, Rusty. Appreciate it, Rusty. Fire it up. Love that. Love that. No, but like two mils on a seat. Yeah, yeah, it I, gets I'm like crazy. Like sometimes, like there are certain riders and certain teams that I'm like, no matter what we do, your seat, you're still gonna finish twelfth. 
Oh, like, I, I, I've said the same thing many <laughs> times. Like, I want to say that so yeah. bad. Like, yeah. bro. Yeah. Yeah, like, really? Yeah, no. Yeah. Like, uh, I had a rider hit me up for, like, he wants to try all these. Can I change 14, 14 this and 52 this and a long change so I can try all this? I'm, like, thinking to myself, like, dude, you're just going to get fucking eighth again. Like, a world supercross guy. Like, you're not in the hunt. Like, you don't need to waste all this product to chase this thing that's not going to make a difference. That's, yes, Whatever I have thought about to, that. Whatever happened to, it was before your time, but, like, 15, 56s and stuff. Like, oh, yeah, that dude, was before that was McGrath, my time. Right, Jared? Well, was Jared? that all about like anti squat yeah. talk or yeah, something? Yeah, it was all right? about the big chain circumference. Big chain, uh, squatting, pivot yeah, relationship. Pivot to the counter yeah, shaft yeah, yeah, relation. It was all, it was yeah. all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to get in on that because I was a privateer mechanic. So I'm like, well, McGrath's doing it, so I need it. Yeah. Lou Lopez, my buddy, I got it. Hey, but it's yeah. a real thing. It does work yeah. on some chassis. I do, do believe a bigger chain circumference yeah. works yeah. 100%. It was a thing for a while, for sure, right? Yeah. Uh, also, speaking of Dylan Ferrandis, I meant uh, he switched from Pirelli's to Dunlops. Oh, I saw that. So, yeah. That's um, that that's got to be tough for Pirelli. I'm sure they're yeah, paying that team, right? Yeah, can you imagine that yeah. behind the scenes? Uh, you guys have been there as a That's know, like, what do you stuff. do? Yeah, like, yeah. That's right. Luckily, I've been on the right side of that. Usually, it's yeah. like yeah. someone with another brand using our our product, but yeah. never the other way around. And yeah. I'm sure Trevor's kind of yeah. had the same situation. I know, that's got to be tough. Uh, I, I, I'll just say it. You guys helped with Roxas Clutch a little bit, right? You guys were doing some stuff with Roxas Clutch. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, but that's a case where, yeah, you you know, they were looking and searching. Yeah. I mean, right? over. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That's historically kind of what Maxim is known for. Like, yeah. I mean, we solve problems. Like, we're yeah. a technical company. Yeah. We have relationships with every major OEM at sub level, whether that's you know products that we're actually manufacturing for them or yeah. stuff that we're doing behind the scenes, you right. know, with the race teams. So, right. yeah, we have we have a lot of different pieces that go on i saw it firsthand when i was at pro circuit like we were developing oil for certain things we wanted to use in the engine and like maxima would help us and that's yeah. that's i think what makes maxima such a desirable brand to the top teams in the pits and i think rental the same way is we'll do literally whatever it takes to get the rider to the next level or make the machine yeah. better yeah. yeah no absolutely <coughs> uh mtx braking uh love these guys pulp mx is the introductory pulp deal right now at mtx braking paul you've used some of these they're still on I still got them on yeah. the rear or the front or whatever, but they yeah. are good. They took a bit to break in, but they've been on there for yeah. a long time you now. You said that to me. I didn't find the break in at all. but I mean, It could have been. I changed a rotor at the same time, so yeah. now I'm starting to think maybe it was a rotor. I think it's a rotor. Yeah. Uh, but thanks to the folks at MTX breaking <coughs> great mountain bike pads. Uh, they're based on the motorcycle background, and, of course, they're inspired by that as well. Make your motorbike, mo mountain bike brakes better, more power, better modulation while remaining dead silent. Available in over 800 power sports dealers. MTX, two compounds. Red is for like e-bikes and guys like Paul that like go downhill really quick. And then gold is uh, for your average trail rider out there. So mtxbraking.com. Code is PulpMX. Ethica as well. Love Ethica. PulpMX20 code to save with Ethica. Thanks to Foz and everybody at Ethica. We have PulpMX Ethicas available on the shop tab on PulpMX.com as well. Uh, love the guys at Ethica doing great things. Use the code PulpMX20 to save with those guys. And uh, motorsport.com. Tweet at talent segment. Let's do it. No, that's my mom. It's the motorsport.com tweets at talent segment. No. You get guts at motorsport, right? Okay. Guts Racing at Motorsport.com. Maxima, of course. Renthal is available all at Motorsport.com. Well, just because you guys are so custom. So sometimes I'm like, hey, you know, uh, he's not paying attention to me. But Motorsport.com. Go through the banner on PulpMX.com to save. Thank you to the guys at Motorsport for all that they do they do for us. Dedicated team of gearheads there to help us out. And, uh, yeah, great guys at Motorsport, the number one online retailer out there. Uh, try them out. Let me know. If you have any issues, contact me, and I'll, I'll make it make it better for you. These questions are submitted to the at Mech Show on Twitter. And Talon takes the best ones and asks us the best ones, Talon. Only the best ones. Only the best? Yeah. Mm. All right. Well, I have to delete a bunch of these then. Oh, boy. Uh, the voice of the drunken people for Paul. Could they have realistically changed Deegan's bars during a red flag? Um, if the handlebars were down there and they did it behind the gate, then yes, they could change it if during a red I flag. I think those guys bring bars in those carts. I don't think they do. They don't? I, I don't think so. I, I, okay. I, I never brought yeah. handlebars down there because that right. takes a while to change. I know, but I think they're you packing would need, everything you would Not those, though. Okay. That you, was, would, you would need a red flag to change it. Yeah. There's no other way. You can change it and still yeah. get points. Right. How quick can you – do you think you can get everything off and then install on a new set? Ooh, that's I, I've never practiced that, but uh, – Ten minutes? Yeah, I would say eight to ten minutes, possibly. Hey, one of the things I was going to ask you about too. You work, of course, you know Dino well. You won the national championship with him, championship with him all those years ago. He's pretty much just come out and said it's his last year. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we kind of knew it, we kind of figured it, but yeah. Even in interviews now, he's like, "Hey, it's my last year. I'm looking forward to this." Blah blah blah. Of course, he had the terrible Anaheim too, where he didn't make the main. But yeah, Dino, it's going to be done. It's gnarly. Yeah. 
Well, yeah. now you know how I felt in 09. Yeah. With the big 1-5. No, it's gnarly, but it's, but I mean, man, he's made a good living for a long time. He's pushed his body to the end. Like his yeah. knees are trash. Yeah. I still don't know really what his transition plan is. Like we haven't talked a ton about it, but. Um, he's cheap as fuck. So you know he's got a lot of money. Yeah. I think he's got yeah. a, enough in the bank right. for a while and he's still making really good money. Um, but, uh, yeah. but yeah, he's, yep. he's really savvy with social media. I think, um, he enjoys teaching kids. Do you think he'll come <coughs> be around the races at some role? I don't know yet. Okay. I don't know yet. Okay. Yeah. Dean Wilson warrior. <coughs> That's tough. I have another friend going through the transition of exiting the sport and your phone doesn't ring every day and right. And figuring out what to do yeah. life after racing. And it's yeah. difficult for yeah. those guys, especially the level kind of where they're at. Like, I think it was, you know, to you. Maybe to use you as a good example, you've transitioned awesome into your role, but I think it would be harder if you were a 450 factory guy to transition into the same kind of type of role you're yeah. in because it's still a job, yeah. right? And yeah. a lot of these guys, they don't want to work a normal job. It ain't easy yeah. to work a normal I, job. I did a really good <coughs> podcast with Talon Volan and Glover about adapting to the real world. I mean, they were great riders, right? Yeah. And, and, and yeah, like Talon was like, I didn't know how to use a computer. Yeah, exactly. I didn't know how to turn a computer on. Like I had to, <coughs> figure out excel and, and and you know and talent and talent is a busy yeah. and he's a worker man he's a grinder i really admire how talent yep. working for a chair beast. and then glover kind of floated around a little bit and then yeah he transitioned well too yeah, yeah. and like yeah, yeah, yeah they both are like you you really have to just work you have to like it's not easy you're mm-hmm. grinding not so, tough yeah yeah <coughs> um from co 600 works for fox you guys might know him not a familiar with oh him. i know i oh. know this is you know who he is. I know. Yeah. It's Connor. Yeah. Connor. Trevor, have you ever had a cowie shut off over a tabletop in Florida? <laughs> oh, what a dick move They always dick pick, they always that pick was. on me with, <laughs> with yeah. this one. He knows that answer. What happened? <coughs> just, yeah. Yeah. Just, just. Is that the last time you rode? No. I okay. rode since then. KX250, F? No, KX450. Oh. KX450. Yeah. Just, just wasn't going to ride. Decided to ride. Oh. Had fun all day and like last, I don't know, three or what four track? laps I would have done at um, <laughs> Renslin's trip. house. Oh, Renslin's Dreamland. Dreamland? Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> Jumps are big. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I was on a work trip too <laughs> and then was on a plane home with, on crutches oh, and cast. I think I remember that and, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah. You never learn. Don't ride other people's bikes. I know. I know. Never. Uh, Charlie Worthy, since Amart is already retired and Phil is nearing retirement, who is the next privateer that you will be partnering with? Me? Oh, like. Do I partner with Phil? Uh, we had seven do stews. Oh, like mm. the next personality, privateer oh. personality that you attach oh, yeah. attach to, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Cade. Uh, I don't know. I, uh, A Ray was in the mix for a little while too. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. Speaking of troll training, though, troll training dot com. Troll training. Work with Tra- Jason Anderson. Jason now. Anderson. Yeah. yeah. Doing well with that's cool. That. Uh, <laughs> whether you're a vet, a GNCC rider. Uh, um, a kid coming up, uh, check out trolltraining.com. They'll build a personalized pattern for you. They'll, you. They will learn from all their mistakes that John and Alex have done over the years. Trolltraining.com, official training program of Darkside. Renthal Rider. Renthal Rider. Jeremy Darkside? Martin. Or, uh, Alex Martin. Oh, I thought you meant Darkside. Oh, he is too. Is he? Yep. can't believe you give him anything. He's a nice guy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know who the next guy will be. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I kind of like, uh, yeah. I don't know. All I know is our listeners love Phil. They fucking love Phil on this show. They, yeah. When well, I don't you, when I don't have him on, they freak out. He's the only guy I know that can pose with a middle finger in every photo and not piss anybody off really. They love him. <laughs> <laughs> you have a solid like ten, fifteen years out of Evan, so you should be good. Oh boy. I'll Ooh. be done by then. I'm I'm getting ready for my exit plan. So. <laughs> right. Oh, uh Forkner's temper. Paul, from a handlebar manufacturer standpoint, what is the benefit and downside to handlebar sweep? You would think the classic elbows up mantra of motocross, you would want almost none. Um, I mean, <clears throat> it just depends. Like if you look in the cycling industry, the handlebars are way more straight than they are in motorcycling. Yeah, like mountain bike, Um, right? I mean, the straighter, the less sweep bars came from a BMX guy having tremendous success in Supercross, and that's McGrath. Like the the nine 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 was built for Jeremy McGrath. It's it was the bar that had the least amount of sweep in the range at the time because he wanted to get more forward over the over the you know the the motorcycle like he did on his bicycle mm-hmm. to go through the whoops and whatnot. So yeah, I think it, and it's just a trend, right? 
um, for a long time when Ricky was rolling his bars back, a lot of people were starting to roll their bars. Really? Do people do that? I don't I, not as to his extreme, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but I know I did it myself. Did I was you? like, yeah, Ricky's down there. Let me see what happens when I put him down there. Maybe I won't get arm pump or maybe like – a hundred percent people people tried. I, I've never <laughs> been a I put my crossbar in the middle mm-hmm. of the bolts and that's it. That's oh, where you, we're going. You mean in line with the yeah, forks? Yeah, yeah. Just in the middle and that's where we're setting it. Yeah. And we're going and we're doing that for twenty five years. To so, each their own. Um why don't mountain bikes have sweep? Like have we tried this? Is there something out there? Is there like is there a mountain bike bar? Like, has anybody thought about this? Making like a. Motor? I don't know. Sweep. I mean, I just know rise. I don't. I mean, yeah. Why don't they sweep come angles back a on mountain bit? bikes are really? Uh, there's a. Re- I've asked my oh. cycling guy this. Okay. This theory. There is a. There's reason. a. Ra- there's a. There's an answer. Okay. But I don't have it off the top of okay. my head. I wish. But I there's did. a reason why bars on mountain bikes have are no, straighter. Have no, yeah. have no sweep or very little. Sweep. Very little. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, from Dirt Shart for Trevor. Is there a possibility to get an SC1 product that you could apply to the shrouds and number number plates without losing grip? Mop and glow. Um, Mop and glow. I mean, the best thing to do is is to wipe it off after you apply it. So to not leave the extra residue of just coating the shroud, uh, let it set up, let it soak in a little bit, and then is wipe it, it clean. You'll still get that look, and it won't be yeah. as slippery but it'll as still greasy. Still be slippery. For it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, other options like would be like our bio wash or even like our matte finish cleaner. Those are going to be like quick detail products. They're not going to streak. They're not going to leave anything behind. Yeah. It'll clean the stuff up. You're not going to get the but shine. Get the shine, but it's dude. not going to be get, slippery. So they want the shine. Yeah, I, I get it. I get it. Find out what's in Mop and Glow. That yeah. shit shines. I and know it's what's in tacky. Mop and Glow. Let's put it in a yeah. product, and we'll. Yeah. We don't have that today, so. There you go. Yeah. Adding yeah. it to the line. <laughs> um, don't put SC1 on the rider's bike before they go off for practice in oh. uh, in um, Atlanta. Not good. I, I my dad got me one time. I don't yeah. think it was SC1. I think it was straight up WD40. WD40. Because he like, oh, it's so shiny. It looks nice and whole bike was so slippery the first lap just local practice track jump everything first lap you know everything pretty big tabletop and i jumped and my feet started rising up and i couldn't catch the bike like i kept <laughs> so i fucking landed like like this and scorpioned over no eight hey. shit because the bike was WD-40. so damn slippery yeah yeah i lost it on him after that i was like don't fucking ever spray nothing on these bikes no more <laughs> yeah. uh from mondy fokker real oh, story wow. In preseason training, what's the average hour count of Supercross training for the factory guys? And Paul, I cannot help but notice Jet is running a less wide bar. Any truth to this, or is it just the optics of his lever position? I I think it must be the optics because he's been on the same handlebar bend for almost three years now. Hunter switched to the same bend that Jet used at high point last year, I believe. And yeah. they're both on the 839, which is the they stock run, bend that comes on the Honda. They run their levers in all the far. Yes, yes they do. It's, uh, they one finger it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I rode their bikes. And, okay, and take the floor is yours. No, I'm, th- <laughs> I, the optics of that must be that they, they run their levers in super far, and and it's you know the the fingers hit the outside of the levers, and they apparently they did that because back in the day Darren Lawrence. They kept breaking levers when they fall down. When they fall down, yeah. So they were like, "Stop doing that!" So we'll move the levers in, so your bar hits first. Yeah. And the kids grew to to adapt it. It's really weird to watch it because when you watch your bar with all the electronics and all the kill switches in and levers all the way in like that, it's funky. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think you had to make a secret bar for them. No. Oh. No. You didn't. No. Okay. No. They uh, use an eight thirty nine. Same one that yeah, comes stock the, on the Honda. The, the, the thing. With the what thing? The, the rubber in on there. I don't know what okay. you're talking right, about. No, moving on. <laughs> Uh, and then just go back to the first question. Oh. Just what's an average like off season training week? How many hours? Oh, I don't oh. know. I remember one year I went to Timmy's in Florida. He was doing three twenties a day. How three, many days a week? Three days a week. Three twenties, three yes. days a week. Oof. Yes. Putting motos. He in. was. He this looked is really like good. Late too. December. Or something. Yeah, yeah. This yeah. is mid December, late yeah. December. He looked really good that year, and he yeah. broke his wrist right away. Damn it. So I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what the time many. Be. A lot. I think they go by laps a lot of times. Do they? As yeah. far as how many laps it's they put usually, in yeah, the like week, you know, seventy-five hours. to per day yeah. or whatever. It's a yeah. lap count. Usually. Yeah. Uh, hold on. Let me find good, a good stuff. Well, you told me to get rid of the bad ones, so really great. From Put Slow Ride 858, please. Trevor, how many Maxima products to get uh, get a lot of love, but I feel like K2 is underappreciated, or maybe it's just overshadowed by 927? 
Uh, is that just my perception, or is it not as loved as it should be? No, I'll tell you the the, un, the underappreciated Maxima product, Super M. Super M. That's a. I mean, I that's grew a up with Super product. M. That's what my dad bought. It was all it was all in the shelves of every Canadian dealer. Yep. Growing up, you guys still had 927 back then, I yeah. think. Yeah. But Super M, man. Um. Go, yeah, going back to the question. Okay. So, well, right. 927 um, I does overshadow most of the two-stroke products. What sells more, K2 or Super M? Uh, it's pretty close, to is be it? honest okay. with you. Where And Caster's going to outsell both of them. Okay. Um, really, I mean, K2 is a great oil, full synthetic, low ash. I mean, it's an, yeah. it's an awesome product. And really how we would describe, I guess, picking between the two is, you know, K2's, it's it's going to burn very clean. It's going to be a product that you could ride the woods in, or you could, you know, race a, a super mini or 125, 250. I mean, at a high level. Where Caster, we typically are going to recommend to somebody that's riding higher in the RPMs. Like Caster performs really well um, under heat. Like you almost want to beat that oil up for it to perform really well. But where if you rode, let's say, go w ride the woods and you're lugging the bike around in second and third gear, you're going to have some of that build up, possible ring rides. sticks, you know, yeah. stuff like that. So it's really just preference to what the rider wants to accomplish. But what's the difference between K2 and Super M? Um, semi synthetic and a full synthetic, oh, okay. really. Yeah. yeah so that's so different. It. Yeah, okay. different on base oil and stuff like that. I mean, right. Super M's priced to be a very competitive in in a two stroke oil, and, and again, yeah. you could I mean, you could do everything with it. I so. grew up with Super M. Yeah, and a lot of people still yeah. love Super M. Right, I mean, so you use it as an injector. I mean, there's got, a lot got of got me four Manitoba titles. Super M did. <laughs> there we go. Yep. You Sus know, put that on the website. Yeah. <laughs> Suspension clean is underrated too. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. We talked about that. Uh, Smorsky two eighty one. Who's been more invisible, Barsha or Hunter? Barsha's weird. I told Ollie I was a little worried. He told me not to be worried. Yeah. Ollie Stone. Mm. Um. Uh, I would say Hunter because Barsha got on a podium, yeah. right? Yeah. And Barsha's always exciting. So I've watched him. Yeah. And I guess we haven't even really seen Hunter get a start yet. Not really. Hunter and Dylan at Anaheim 2, all three mains just going at it. Just they yeah. were together the whole time. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. I, I, I would say Hunter. Is more invisible? Yes, than Barsha. Yeah, I guess I would too, yeah. Uh, from Stony Meadow, as a former mechanic, is there a gate pick for where the mechanics stand? It seems like there are some spots in the lineup that would be easier for the rider to see the pit board. Oh uh, well, didn't you the, notice the, when uh, you when you were Butler Brothers, and I was shitty privateer mechanic, mm -hmm. the big dogs stayed near the end, and you didn't go to the big dog area because you kind of didn't have the rider to go in the big dog area. I'd go, I'd go to wherever my guy could see the board. I don't give a fuck who's standing there. Really? Yeah, and I would just stick my board out when the guy came there. The shitty move is when you park yourself on yeah. the ledge. Yeah, you don't move. Like, yeah. especially if you're in the preferred area. Like, yep. get the fuck out of the way. It's a if, rotation. Yes, it's yes. a rotation. Yeah. So there's obviously going to be a preferred spot. Yep. Board your guy and then leave. Okay. So the guy who's, yeah, that's, yep. I think, the way to, to go. I agree it. on that, but, but when I was a shit. I don't give a shit who's taking up the good spot you Everybody, don't no everybody's oh. the same down there i don't give a shit oh no i'm the skips down there and Berlute and all that i ain't going down there fuck that i'm, I'm putting just my board for, right in there when I'm, my guy in 20th comes i'm by. working for birdwell <laughs> <laughs> i'm working for birdwell so i'm just like hey <laughs> hope you see it you know yeah i do Was that the greatest mechanic no i do remember like <laughs> as you got better as a mechanic and moved up in the ranks you stopped writing motivational messages like more I, info yeah data. Just, just yeah just lap times and laps or whatever right but like as a privateer guy, you'd be like, push harder now, fourth turn double. You know, you're yeah. like, and you're just like, no, like nobody cares. Yeah. As you got more into it, you're like, you know what, this rider just fuck it. He doesn't <laughs> care what I think. Just write the lap time and the laps. You know. So just, yeah, it depends. What How about, I think it's situational. It depends. Yeah, I, I think sometimes I motivational think, stuff. Were you works. ever? Yes. Were you ever a mechanic at nationals where you could just walk out in the middle of nowhere? Yeah. Were you? Yeah. Yeah, kind of like my like, first few years. Yeah, you cool. just, dude, you all kind of congregated cool. around like a turn or two. And then you would just walk in the middle walk of the track. Out there. Just yep. do do do. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. And then guys would go on each side of you sometimes. It's, no, I never got yeah, that. I had that. But. I, had that a few times. <laughs> I never had but, that. But yeah, you could just walk out. There's no mechanics area. It was just like this general thing. Yeah. And just walk out on the track, pit board the guy, and rock back. It's great. A lot of things years ago yeah. were great. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, from our hedge of code, he has uh, future headlines. Okay. McAdoo makes big comeback in third leg. Or Deegan flips point offset. That's ridiculous. I don't like either one of those. I don't even know what they mean. 
I'm not just I'm not a fan of future headlines anyway, so I'm just not gonna answer. Really? Yeah, it's stupid. Oh, okay. What's up, JT? <laughs> I've moved on from the McAdoo thing at this point. Yeah, I kind of you oh. could sense that he's sick of tired. Sick of talking. Too bad. Him. He was coming on. <laughs> I told him. He was kind of just like, can we talk about the I race? I literally got three questions about McAdoo's situation for my three questions, and that's about when I was. That's, that's um, a Moser. Dude. That's not us. Yeah, that's I know. That's I Moser. I w- if I knew who he was, I'd get a hold of him. Right. Okay. That's true. Yeah. Well, Roto will be in next week, and we'll look forward to Roto's questions. Okay. Uh, Van Ram 538, has anyone from the C practice ever made the night show? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. They got good guys to see time, see time sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes there's yeah. 40 guys out there and yeah. everyone makes a night show. Right, yeah. Uh, we don't have Clayton on anymore, but oh, well, Scott, right there. He can yell at you. Scott with one T uh, for everyone. Any particular reason why a lot of riders are switching from 100% to Oakley seems to be a lot more Oakley straps in the pits this season. Oh, Clayton's, Clayton, Clayton's happy he doesn't have a, a headset right yeah. now. Clayton's not here. Look, I think 100% had some cutbacks. I really think they had some cutbacks when it comes to sponsoring riders. I mean, they used to sponsor a shit ton of guys, and they maybe cut back a little bit. All right, Clayton? Can I say that? All the bonuses know. they paid Jet last year. Right, right. No. Okay. Greed. What do you say? Greed. Greed from agents. Okay. Ah, uh, yeah, there you go. Maybe there's yeah. that, too. It's honest. It's okay. X brand will pick everyone up. It's fine. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Choice of champions. Oh, we almost had RJ. X Brand came close with RJ. Rick Johnson? No. <laughs> Hampshire. Oh. Rick James. Yeah. <laughs> Rick James. There you go. <laughs> All right. Next question. Eggs and Bacon 69. Why are Stuart, Craig, Barsha on old frames while AP and Sexton are succeeding on the new frame? Because uh, they picked it. Are you sure? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. No, they had choices. Okay. Yeah. You sh- for real? Yeah. 100 percent factual. Well, one of the riders told me that. Which one? So unless he lied to me, you could probably figure out which one. Mm. Okay. Seems weird. Okay. Mm. Carry on. Uh, well, we had a few future headlines and some oh, more God. McAdoo ones, but I think we're all over those. Uh, yeah. Atwood, 1994. I realize the guests get to pick all the co- Okay, cool. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know that. But I'm cool. So angry. We'll, we'll move on. <laughs> Uh, all jokes about you being old and being in the sport too long aside, how was it to see Ferry at his first Supercross race? Had Ooh. to be a cool moment for you. No, wasn't cool. Hit you with it. Yeah. He hit you with it. <laughs> wasn't cool. It, it's a little depressing. Absolutely. Um, I said on this show many times that I was done with time Evan Ferry turns pro. I've said that. I know you have. And there I was in I Detroit. Know. Well, so I mean, Evan's a good kid. Uh, it, it is a bit surreal to see Timmy's just, kid racing. Let's let's move the goalposts. If Evan's kid is out there <laughs> and you are still in the sport, then yeah. we have a problem. If Evan's kid is out there and I'm still going to Detroit, Detroit Supercross, uh, it's fine. Yeah, yeah, we got a good problem. job, Paul. Thank okay. you. Yep. <laughs> All right, last one for me, Steve. Do you know what gut seats stand for? Yeah, Greg's. Ultimate. No. Fuck. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, Greg's I Ultra Trick Seats. Ultra Trick Seats. seats. Yep. That's it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's no, it. I, I, I was close. I, yep. I had the general drift. Yeah. Yeah. Got you know how many people don't call oh, me Greg? Call so oh, you Greg. Oh, it's oh, so yeah, annoying. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Greg. I'm like, hmm. Still? Like, to this? Oh, yeah, yeah. Still going on? Oh, geez. Um, all right. Uh, best interview tonight. RC, Westfall, McAdoo, JT. JT. That's best interview? Yep. Okay. Trevor? Ricky second. Okay. Trevor? Scuba. I mean, we talk fishing. You don't get it. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Move on. Clayton, best interview tonight? Ricky. Ricky. All right. That, Ricky. I'm going Ricky, too. Ricky, yeah, Marks, Ricky was Marks, good. what about you? I'll go Ricky. Okay. All right. There we go. You like that? That's fine. Okay. We right. missed the interviews. We're at the little Italian restaurant over here. Well, which one? What was the... Um, Bootlegger. Dude, it oh. was fire. Yeah, Bootlegger's great. Dude. That's like an original restaurant from the 70s. That place really? was fire. It's been there fire. forever. What'd you have? Uh, some chicken. What did I have? Marsala. Chicken marsala. I love marsala. It's my go-to yeah. if it's good. Yeah, yeah. Bootlegger's cool. There's all those old pictures on the wall and everything else sitting at the bar. Yeah. Yeah, we, we ate at the bar because it was going to be like a yeah, the yeah. wait was too long. So, yeah. okay, we'll yeah. sit at the bar. No, it's great. Another place to try is Golden Steer. It's the oldest steakhouse in Vegas. I do want to try it's that. Right I want to get the, the cock. Yeah, the cock's great. Yeah. Uh, right by this, uh, it's kind of in a scummy area. It's by the stratosphere. It's in a strip mall, and you probably would never stop there. You know, you'd see the sign, you're like, I'm out. It's literally next door to, you know, um, Goodfellas? Mm-hmm. Wait, Casino, the movie Casino? You know how Joe Pesci had a 
jewelry shop that he was kind of hiding is is that it was next door to the Golden Steer, the oh. real jewelry shop. It's not there anymore, but it was Good movie. next door. Good movie. Anyways, that's the old part of Vegas is Golden Steer, best steakhouse in Vegas. Gargle Phenomenal. Cop. What are you doing? Uh, how many days are you in, Paul? I go home Wednesday. Wednesday you, night? You, or yeah, like you want to do night. dinner Wednesday night? This, we can go there? Oh, I don't know if I want to do <laughs> dinner. I was going to be home by Wednesday you night. Can't, but. You can't get a reservation. It takes a month. Oh, gee. Are you serious? Yeah, it takes about a month, month and a half. Can we do that um, next time we come up here? Yeah. Let's, let's go eat there. Yeah, I mean, generally, though, we do shows on Monday, so when would we, when would we go? Mm, Sunday night. Oh, okay. All right. Um, it's great. The best steakhouse here, though. Try it. You can go in. You can walk in. Sometimes you can sit at the high tops. So they have – but normally there's a line at the door at 4 Well, yeah, o'clock. and with the football in town, it's probably going to be crazy come yes. Wednesday. Oh, yeah, yes. I forgot yeah, there's that football game. But mm. Golden Steer and Bootlegger are literally two of the best restaurants in town. So you did a good job on that. Um, all right, that's best interview. Uh, thank you to the sponsors, Pulp Mech Show sponsors. Use the codes to save. I uh, really appreciate that. Um, and Andy, thank you. Thanks for coming. Yeah. In. Guts Racing, you've been with us for, dude, long time. Quite a while, yeah. Yeah, yeah. really appreciative of everything you do for us. Uh, great company, great guys. Uh, so if you need a seat for basically anything, if you need a Suron seat. Uh, yeah, Suron <laughs> seat, that's where it's Suron at. Suron seats. Uh, anything for your motocross bike, of course, as well. And uh, and please check it out. Use the code to save. Pulp MX 2024 is the code to save. Trevor, thank you. Maxima USA, thanks for coming in again. Heck yeah. Didn't, get a, didn't get a mountain bike ride in, but you chose to golf with my friend Tits instead. So Yeah. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I miss Tits. Should have rode by us. Gol- golf over, over mountain biking? Um, yeah. Yeah, weather depending. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's give something away before oh, we go. Oh, I forgot. I'm yeah. sorry. That's okay. Yes, let's do that. Let's give something away. Go. Uh, new phone cannon and biofoam. BioWash. Yeah, brand new. With the foam. So similar to BioWash, oh. but to concentrate. It's okay. red in color. Okay. Um, yeah, and then the attachment, foam cannon. Wow. Snap it, quick connect right to the power washer. Any, any quarter-inch quick any, connect. Any, yeah. Any, yeah, any power washer? Exactly. Okay. Up to 4,000 PSI. Okay. Um, yeah, super cool. Let's give one away. So, um, Let's do the fourth caller right now. Okay. And make Talon work. Perfect. Fourth keep caller him, right now. Keep him here a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. Maximo yeah. USA foam cannon. Yep, foam cannon. Okay. Yep. I better it. call Thank really you. quick. Yeah. Watch bets win. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, but thanks for coming in. Yeah. As always, yeah. thank you. Appreciate thank it. You. Maxima yeah. USA. Paul, thank you. Appreciate it. Renthal.com. Some new products coming. Keep an eye on that. Purple bars in April. April. Well. I'll have to come back up in April because the other one's really exciting and I want to be able to talk about yeah. it. So we'll have to. Yeah, absolutely. And stay tuned to my social media for the other one in yep. about 10 days or so. Yes. Something like that. Yes. Uh, really appreciate everything. And it was good seeing uh, Reese. And Tom. Dave. Tom. Tom. And Dave. Dave is... Wait. Kaizmo? Kaizmo's Dave. No, yeah. I thought the other guy's name was Dave. No, his other guy's name is Tom. Kaizmo is Kaizmo. Yes. I don't call him Dave. Oh, okay. So I got Tom. Tom and Reese. Sorry, Tom. Appreciate it. Tom, Tom was a fan of the show. And I, yes, now I look like he an was. Asshole. They both listen right. on their way into the factory every right. day. So now I look like an asshole for uh, not knowing Tom's name. Maybe a little but, bit. Okay. <laughs> but good seeing Reese, Tom, and Kaizmo uh, at Anaheim. Always yep. good to catch up with those guys. So yep. Renthal.com, thank you for the support that we have. Uh, we got our winner. We got our winner, everybody. Stop calling. Uh, Marks, thank you. Appreciate it. Good job. Wow. Good job, even. Yeah. Mm. I was on my game tonight, wasn't I? <laughs> wow. So you're yeah. just like him, Marks. I think the, I think the drops <laughs> were on point. You know. You've, really, crea- you've created this. Really yes. brought it tonight. Yes. It's You're welcome. Sad. You're welcome. Um. Clayton, thanks, buddy. 100%.com. Please check it out. Pulp 30. Thank you for coming in. Appreciate it. x Brown goggles. Check them out. Uh, Talon. (laughs) Thanks, Talon. Appreciate it. Good job. You're talking to Nash. That's Talon. Uh, Next week, we got uh, Derek Rankin and Alex Ray in studio and JT all coming in. JT's coming for the Super Bowl and staying for the show. Imagine that. Yeah. So, heavy night of tickets. Does he have tickets to the Super Bowl? No, I don't think so. Mm. I don't know. Jeez. Uh, What? Is he going to the game? I, I don't know, man. Watching it at a. Do you think he tells me anything of this stuff? We just start arguing about it. You're right. I won't yeah. bring it up. Uh, all right, everybody. So next, that'll be next week's show uh, for Andy Gregg, Trevor Reese, Paul Parabinos, Clayton Morello, Travis Talon. Thanks, Swiss Gore. Thanks, Marks. Thanks, Roto. Uh, thanks, Pookie. See everybody next week. Did you see that guy's balls? There's something I want to get off my chest. And it's about that summer when you went away to community college. I got an offer to do. Playgirl magazine, and I did it. I did a full spread for Playgirl magazine. I, I mean spread, man. I pulled my butt apart and stuff, and I was totally nude, and it was weird. I, I mean, you probably didn't hear about it because I went under the name of Mike Honcho, but 
And I just wanted you to know that. If you could hear me, if it got into your brain somehow, that I spread my butt cheeks as Mike Honcho. Complete me out.